In 30 minutes, broadcasting's finest duo will hit the airwaves. And prepare for the incomparable Opie and Anthony Show. Only a show this big could have a pre-show this good. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony Pre-Show with Sam Roberts. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the ONA pre-show. Tuesday, minutes before the Opie and Anthony show begins, we are counting down here on the Opie and Anthony channel. Live, 866-WOW-1-WOW is the phone number, 866-969-1969. Call up now and be a part of the Opie and Anthony pre-show as only you can. Uh, Big, big show planned for today, big show yesterday. As always, we'll be talking about everything that went down yesterday, and some of what we might be able to expect, might be able to expect to see today. So uh, call in if you want to talk about it, 866-WOW-1-WOW, and start your mornings here. Mars is in the studio right now getting everything ready. It should be a fun show. Uh, yesterday was a fun show coming off a big live tweeting day. It was a, an Oscar day. Apparently now, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, but It was one of the most viewed Oscars in a long time, which is weird. It seems like as TV is getting watched less because there's more, you know, YouTube and and everything else entertainment wise, these live events like the Super Bowl and the Oscars and shows like that are getting watched more and more because this was one of the most watched Oscar ceremonies in years. And it was boring and predictable. I think it's the live tweeting. Everybody's so into live tweeting now that everybody has to be watching it. Um, we talked about live tweeting. We got into it a little bit yesterday. Let's go to let's start today's pre-show, E Rock, with track two. Um, she had a couple good laughs off the pizza thing, though. Asking Harvey Weinstein for money, right? Telling the girl her stock just went up. Can I get out some money? Yeah, she had some yeah. decent laughs trying to get money from people. Yeah, yeah she did okay. I mean, you know. This, at the beginning was good. This is why it's so stupid to live tweet these things. And then you yeah. come in to do this is way more important than live tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There's like ten percent of the your followers actually see your tweets. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. If yeah. that. <laughs> no, it's kind of fun though. It is kind of fun. I like to, reading them. It's kind of fun to be a dick. But then you realize yeah. everyone out there is just trying to be a dick. Just trying to be a everyone dick. Everyone is just trying to be a dick now. <laughs> That's the whole thing with live tweeting events. Is to be a complete fucking asshole. <laughs> well, you, but you try for the laugh. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you know, okay. Here comes Travolta. All oh, right. Oh, boy. Get a wig, wig joke. Uh, something. Something's yeah. on his head. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? He's, uh, he likes men. What is that? <laughs> it was so funny that they were bringing all that up yesterday because it's true. They would never, and I don't think any of us would ever sit there and prep for the radio show by taking notes. While the Oscars was on, you know, and that's what I guess you should be doing, right? If you have a radio show and you're sitting there taking notes on what your observations are. So you have a little refresher the next morning and you can really get into it. You can really wait until the next morning to sink your teeth into whatever the live community event was that was on TV. But they get all their shit out live tweeting. So they're 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 tweeting the whole thing and then they get to work the next day and it, it goes. Yeah, I mean, it was OK. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> ignoring all the jokes they had while the whole thing was going. But they were right in their assessment that the whole tweeting thing, the nice tweets never stick. Like, there are those people. We were we read some tweets from Jenny Hutt. I think Nicole from the Morning Mashup was doing it. There are those people that when they're live tweeting something, they're tweeting about how much they appreciate something or they're tweeting about how much they like something. Or they're sucking up. Or they're, they're sucking up. That's exactly right. E-Rock just yelled, they're sucking up. That's what I think Jenny Hutt was doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because she wants a spot in the industry, and she thinks that, oh, well, at least she hasn't insulted us. That never works. Nice guys finish last, Jenny Hutt. Uh, that's something Donald Trump knows very well. I, to, I feel like as much of an idiot as Donald Trump is, he was making my Oscar-watching experience all the better. Uh, we talked about him a little bit on o a yesterday. We were reading his tweets because basically he was just running down the show and saying how much everything sucked. The key 
to Donald Trump's tweets. And I was reading all his tweets. I didn't even pick up on this while the Oscars was on. I didn't pick up on this until the next day when we talked about it yesterday. And I don't think any of us on the show did. Uh, was one of the people that Donald Trump retweeted while he was retweeting all the compliments about him. That's all he was doing. He was just taking shots at how bad the Oscars was and then retweeting how great he was. But listen to the caliber of people that were tweeting how good the Donald was. Someone is saying that uh, Donald Trump actually uh, retweeted Bobo last night. There's no way that happened. Oh, God. <laughs> well, there might be because... Hold on. Uh, Ryan, there's no way that happened. It is. Look at it as, uh, when he started praising Holy everyone shit. when the show was over. He, he <laughs> put the second tweet on it like there's some other person than, than Bobo. Wait, he Sam just found it. it. Wait, where is it? <laughs> he retweeted <laughs> Bobo's retweet. Bobo tweeted... Um, Goes go. He just started goes to goes Donald to. Trump best tweet tweets of the night Oscars and it's Bobo. <laughs> they did oh retweet God! Bobo. But I mean, I'm not Who's surprised. killing it with the followers, man. Bobo's, Bobo's up, up to 132,000 followers. What the fuck? <laughs> it's all fake. I think somebody's <laughs> buying Bobo a lot of followers. Bobo's got the <laughs> fake I think their followers. goal is to have Bobo have more followers than us. Yeah, and then that son of a bitch will will, will really believe that. I don't know. Bobo is becoming a Twitter celebrity. Of course, you know Bobo from the show. He's becoming this massive Twitter celebrity where he has people like Donald Trump retweeting him. But he's got something like 130,000 followers. I None of us know how it happened. None of us. Obviously, somebody is purchasing followers for our pal Bobo. But none of us know who it is. None of us know why it is. None of us know how much they're paying because nobody's bought followers before around this show that I know of. At least nobody will admit it. I'd love to do an investigation to find out if anybody has. But looking at our numbers, I think it's pretty obvious. Our numbers are all pretty, you know, where they should be. Nobody's bought followers before, so we don't know what the process is. But somebody is creating an internet celebrity out of Bobo. And I couldn't, I couldn't appreciate it more. You know, we had that caller call in and inform us that Donald Trump had retweeted Bobo. By the way, if you want to call the pre-show, 866-WOW-1-WOW, 866-969-1969. That caller called up and informed us that Donald Trump had retweeted Bobo. That's a good caller. Of course, we have our share of bad callers, too. It happened yesterday. I, I can't believe this keeps happening. I cannot believe that people are still falling for it, but it, it just makes me happy every time. Let's go to track 10, Eric. Just slow down, because I think you're talking and your phone's dropping out. Yes. Okay, okay Jimmy, Jimmy, right. Thank you. I'll, I'll slow it down. Yes, okay. yes. Sorry about that. I, don't, I want to make sorry, you No I problem. Um, front page of the paper. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, looking, look, looking like he's never seen We heard you! <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> don't say you know you did. <laughs> no one would fall. Would oh my God! Gladly fall for that. You didn't know. Oh. No, you don't graciously <laughs> no. bow out and then no. be like, "By the way, no. I'm still here. I'm right. still here." He did that guy. He acts like he's gonna hang up the phone. Oh, I'm sure you guys heard me. Oh, wait, I'm still here. And he picks him back up and he falls for it again. Yes, if you call in the Opie and Anthony show and your joke may not be that great, there is a huge chance that if we're asking you to repeat it, or if they are asking you to repeat it, it's been hurt. I'm sure people are still going to fall for it. A lot of stuff going on today. Uh, yesterday, we had good guest guests. Brian Green was in, physicist, and Cesar Milan, the dog whisperer. Um, we, I, there's a stuff to get into today. Rob Ford, speaking of guests, is not going to be on the Opie and Anthony show, but he was on Jimmy Kimmel last night. I wish he was going to be on the Opie and Anthony show. And Jimmy Kimmel, God damn, did he do his job well. As a matter of fact... Lou in Jersey, we were just talking about Rob Ford on Jimmy Kimmel. Ah, uh, yes, the politician that keeps on giving. The what? I tell you, the politician that keeps on giving. That man he, delivers more one-liners. Yeah, and it's a, I couldn't believe Jimmy Kimmel started his interview last night. No one will get into the whole thing with why are you here? He is such a camera whore that he just lines up and will do anything. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel, my favorite part about Rob Ford on Jimmy Kimmel last night was Jimmy Kimmel stood Rob Ford in front of a video screen and just watched all of Rob Ford's videos with him and asked for commentary on exactly why and what was going on. 
And it was absolutely classic. And I, I'll tell you, there ain't too many politicians in America that get the applause. I mean, I know it's a circus act, but you know what? I think that Opie and Anthony would take uh, Rob Ford over to Blasio. Oh, my God. Hey, yeah, yeah. I mean, Rob Ford, I, I think ever, all of us wish that Rob Ford was mayor of New York. You know how much fun that would be? Oh, it would be a riot. Oh. It would be unbelievable. Thank you, Lou. Thanks, man. Lou would probably take Rob Ford over Chris Christie. For God's sakes. But of course, yeah, we'll talk about Jimmy Kimmel on Rob Ford. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. That's what it should be. It should be Rob Ford's show with Jimmy Kimmel as a guest. Uh, we made it. We made TMZ again yesterday. Jim Ross. We were talking about JR yesterday's pre-show. JR from the WWE was in on Friday. He told a story of, uh, of Vince McMahon sharding. And it made TMZ. So congratulations to the Opie and Anthony show once again on TMZ. And tons of news stories. Arby's. Arby's just keeps attaching themselves to that Pharrell hat. Arby's bought the Pharrell hat. Pharrell, uh, did you hear about that? No. Pharrell auctioned his Arby's hat. And Ar Arby's is the one that bought it. I don't know where they're going to put it. I don't know if there's some kind of uh, 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 center store for them to display it, but it belongs in a Hall of Fame somewhere. Hard Rock Johnny was probably pissed that he didn't get his hands on it. But Arby's has it now. Uh, we were just, we heard Jim yell his patented we heard you at a caller yesterday. Jim had some uh, awesome stories yesterday. First of all, I love the uh, Jim embarrasses himself. We started yesterday's show, and we mentioned it at the end of the pre-show. I wished that we had been on the air for it, but Jim spilled an entire cup of coffee all over himself and his papers and his desk, everything. It was filled to the tippy-tippy top, and clumsy Jim just knocked it over. Apparently, uh, he's been on a roll as far as knocking things over. A caller called in and informed us. This is like the revenge of the callers. He's like, no, there's going to be no we heard you from me. I'm going to tell everybody that you did a silly thing while you were performing over the weekend. Let's go to uh, track six. Hey, uh, Jimmy, I saw you on uh, Friday. It was fantastic. Thank you. And I'm glad to see that you're going the way of Michael J. Fox because you're a great performer, but yet you can't control your extremities, apparently. What do you mean? Well, let's see. You just spilled coffee this morning in the studio, oh, yeah. and yeah. on Friday you dropped the mic in the middle of a child molestation joke. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> it was a mic with a cord, and I was standing on it, and I didn't realize it. I went to move my arm, and the mic fell out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> like a clod. <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. Yeah, you, I couldn't have done a more rank amateur move. <laughs> did the audience notice? Uh, boy, it was a dull thud in front of a thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> best part of seeing comedy you never know when somebody's going to completely humiliate themselves now jim is a professional so i'm sure he picked things up and went right along but still that moment is priceless priceless always go see jim live because you never know when he's going to drop something the other jim story that was just funny the jim story that i thought was really interesting were of course of course we were talking about uh threesomes on the show and whenever anything sexual comes up Jim has some story that defies what everybody else is talking about. And we all go, what? Like, how did we never hear this before? We were talking about threesomes. Let's go to track nine. I yeah, guess. I've had a couple with people like So they don't fans. really know you? No. No, I'm just watching like a porno movie. No. I've had a couple with fans, but the last time I did that, it was like a couple times with the same couple. I think we were off the air. But like, that's how long ago that was. And the girl convinced me to shave my pubes. They were all straight and Asian looking. It's like, you want to shave them. And then from then on, I was shaving my pubic hair. <laughs> straight and Asian looking, huh? But I was hitting on this girl after a gig. Um, and she was leading me on like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was getting real vibes off her. And she's like, well, I'm in the hotel with my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, fuck. I kept trying to get her back to my room. Yeah. And she convinced me like, well, you can watch us. And I was like, I guess that was my only option. So oh, I and I watched, oh. but then she fucking sat on my dick and rode my dick. No bag, no nothing. And he just watched because he was drunk. Oh, And he was all right with that? Yeah, God. he was cool with it. It was hot. So oh, fuck is going on? So weird. Yeah. That is so odd. I would want to talk to Jim about that scenario all day. That's one of those scenarios that, like, nothing even close to that has been in my life. And I feel like Jim just has story after story with these things. He's written two books. He's on the radio every day, and that still has managed to never get out. I don't understand it. Let's go to Dave in California. Dave, welcome to the Opie and Anthony hey, pre-show. How you doing? Hey, 
I just wanted to say, man, the Caesar Milan interview was awesome. Mm-hmm. I was it was so unexpected. I was just like, oh, the dog whisperer, or whatever. But that the Ted Lynch, and then there was one other one this week that was just so unexpectedly good. And even Jim Ross. I mean, yeah, he was long winded, and you know, you guys couldn't cut him off, but it was great. <laughs> yeah, it's, we've been on a roll. Thank you, uh, Dave, for calling in the middle of the night. Uh, we were we've been on a roll of having low expectations for guests, and I think that's just because the show is so pessimistic. But having low expectations for guests and then having these guests come in and blow it out of the water. Uh, Caesar Milan, O&A boy, this was another one. Especially Opie, before he came in, was like, why are we having the dog whisperer on? I don't know how this is going to go. I don't have good expectations for this. And then immediately, he's super honest. He just comes in and he's honest and he's fascinating and, and he's got everything going on. Let's, let's, let's play track. 14. This is when Caesar first came in, right? And you think, you know, Caesar Milan has gone through a divorce. He attempted suicide, and there's stuff that you would assume he's not going to want to talk about. Like, you think he's just going to want to go on and talk about poodles. But Caesar Milan has no problem. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Eric, you have terrible on the board this morning. Eric keeps hitting buttons. <laughs> Um, anyway, Caesar Milan, uh, he was talking about his suicide attempt. Let's go to track 14. And you I really attempted felt... suicide? Is that true? Yes, I did. What, how? Yes, I did. Well, I took all the pills that I could you find went, wow, around. And, you uh, went, wow, you were serious. Because we talk about it on the show. No, no, no. We was... don't think the, the, <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't say this. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. I when didn't people think... slip their wrists, we don't think they're as serious no, as going I, I, all I, in with pills. No, I didn't think. I didn't, oh, man. No, I, did, I did it. I just uh, took all, all of them. Everything you can find in the house. Everything I can find in the house. And, and how were you saved? Well, uh, the only thing I can th- tell you, you know, is I wasn't meant to die. Yeah. Wow. Because the doctor said you could kill five people with this. So, wow. you know, you are not meant to die. And, and, and uh, Who found it. you or did you realize my kids, it? My kids, my oh kids. My yeah, God. so it's a shocking thing. But, uh, you okay. know. Yeah. What were you, when you, right before, cause we've all thought of it at times. Absolutely. Like right, right before you were doing it, what were you thinking? Like, oh, no, they're going to find me? Or did you kind of block out all rational I don't think stuff? at that time you think about anybody else. Huh. You know, I, I don't think that, in my case, I'm telling you my experience, my feeling at that moment is I wasn't wanted, I wasn't needed. And mm. to me, it's all about the pack. So when the pack rejects you, uh, you pretty much don't have anything, even though there is some, you know, success, material success. But to me, it was the pack. And so the pack said, we, we no longer need you. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. like high school, you know, when, when kids are mean to other kids and there's a lot of suicide in, in the high school world because kids isolate kids. Sure. You know, it's, so that's that feeling of, of not feel, feel needed, wanted, or loved. Can I, I got I'm sorry, and we can move on to other stuff, okay. certainly, but when, that- when you realized you were alive, were you, mad, were you mad at that point or were you relieved, like, oh my God, I, I so didn't want to do that? I woke up in a psychiatric uh, uh, holdup for 72 hours. And um, at that time, I said, well, I didn't die. Let's go. You know? uh, it's time to move forward. Oh, good for Yeah, you. so that's it. You know, if I didn't die, that's for, I was for a reason. I'm a very, you know, um, religious guy. And, uh, and so at that time, it was my wake-up call and, mm-hmm. and go back to uh, what I know best. Surviving a suicide attempt has got to be so fucking embarrassing. Like, <laughs> having to come back from that and being like, yeah, it's probably being a little overdramatic. Yeah, I guess I didn't have to go that far. I'm sorry. Can I just continue living now? And then you have to go and talk to people about it. But Caesar Milan was very forthright about it. I was, I was impressed. That, and that was early in the interview. It's not like we had established any sort of comfort or anything with him. I had to yell at Eric before. He's got a little nervous fingers on the board today. All you have to do, do is be better than Sal. You don't have to be great. You just have to be better than Sal. So no pressure. Don't even worry about it. Uh, we also talked to uh, Caesar about dogs, of course. And uh, and house training dogs. This is a funny clip. Let's go to track fifteen. What about a housebreaking uh, dog like that? Some people have uh, difficulty doing that. Housebreaking means a structure, means discipline. So when a dog does is not um, doing uh, the whole housebreaking thing, it's because a human is not consistent with mm. the rules. It, feeding should be a rule. Like what time? Because after the dog eats five minutes to thirty minutes, that's when they have the bowel movement. So now that you know, that's the biological r- right. R- is, it is nothing outside. But that. there are people that just dump a bunch of food and leave it there. It's like and, a cat, right? Or, right, or like right. a bird. Yeah. Mm. Is that a free feeding doesn't allow you to have structure? Right. You know. So most of the time, people don't know or they're lazy. 
you know? And yeah. so they don't want to create a structure. So in order for you to have a housebreaking, a perfect housebreaking behavior from a dog, you need two weeks of investment. After that, the dog knows the routine because you're creating a pattern. Uh huh. You know so he'll I mean? know like, all right, uh, he's, they're going to take me out. So I can go. Or they're going to tell time. me where to use the bathroom. Right, right. You know, some people use newspapers, some people yeah. use you know, wee wee pads, whatever it is. It's just you're just showing a pattern. Remember, when you get a dog, he doesn't know where he lives. So it's, an, it's a moment of adjustment. He gets nervous, he gets fearful, he gets unsure, mm -hmm. he's disoriented. So when the dog, when the brain is in that state, they're going to use the bathroom more often. Right. Because, you know, the nerves create easy uh, bowel movement. That's what Jimmy did right. the first time he came out of my house. That's just right. Just in the bathroom <laughs> all yes, the time. I just ran in a circle like, and I made like it on a the rabbit. kitchen floor. <laughs> <laughs> Cesar Milan makes having dogs seem like so much work and pressure. It's like kids. It doesn't seem that tough. Also, in the last clip we played, it was really weird when Cesar Milan started talking about, like, it's all about the pack and running with the pack. And I didn't think, dude, you're not a dog. Like, enough about the dogs already. But... I will tell you, maybe it's because I have the mind of a child, but the only reason I wanted to play that clip was because all day yesterday I was laughing at Caesar Milan saying bowel movement in his accent. Bowel movement. <laughs> rock, rock and rip in pencil. Rock and rip. What are we doing, wrestling names? You're on the pre-show. Hey, what's up, Sam? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I got two words for you, man. Vaginal knitting. Have we? I, I think I've, we've watched vaginal knitting before, oh, have right? You? I I think so. Is it fake? I think it might no, be fake. I don't know, man. But it's I, the one of the most WTF videos I've ever seen. Keep it? rocking, Rip. All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Uh, Nathan in Texas, welcome to the pre-show. Hey, good morning, guys. Morning. I just wanted to say I caught that clip with the um, the physicist yesterday, and I was, you know, I thought the 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 whole show, it's all laughing and jokes and bullshit. But I was highly surprised about how, how in-depth they went with that physicist and just how great that whole part was. It really was, and it's always good. Thanks, uh, thanks, Nathan. It's always good when we get somebody like a physicist in here that can break it down the way Brian Greene did. Brian Greene kind of simplified that. I mean, a little bit. I still got lost throughout most of the interview. But, I mean, we were talking about tearing the fabric of space and time and to be able to translate that on a you know dick and fart joke radio show and have at least some of the audience figure out what you're talking about is quite a talent and brian green he did a great job of that let's play track 11 and when you talk about tearing the fabric of space time what does that mean yeah so this is work that i was fortunate to be involved with a number of years ago where you see in einstein's theory of general relativity it's called which is this theory of of the force of gravity einstein taught us that space can curve it can warp you can think of sort of space as almost like a, a rubber sheet going back to that two-dimensional version yes, yeah. that's not as satisfying right. but, but let's just use it because we can wrap our minds around it so you know you imagine you have a uh, a big bowling ball on a rubber sheet, it kind of curves the sheet. Similarly, mm -hmm. the sun curves the space around it. But here's the thing, in Einstein's approach, space can bend, it can warp, but it can't rip. In Einstein's equations, if space were to rip, the equations break down, the universe grinds to a halt, that's not something that we expect could happen. We reanalyzed that issue of the tearing of space in this more refined set of equations that come from string theory, and we found that in this refined approach, space can tear. It can rip apart and reconnect in a way that doesn't cause the universe to grind to a halt. The math just smoothly sails through this tear in the fabric of space. No catastrophe at all. So it was a kind of surprising result. Nobody anticipated that this would be the new repertoire of potential behaviors when you go beyond Einstein's approach. See, I think everybody here was like, yeah, okay, the sun, okay, I get it. Shaping the... Uh, bleh, bleh. I lost you. <laughs> like, everybody just kind of glazed over within 30 seconds of that. But I, it's like the most interesting stuff in the world. It's what everything is made of. I don't know what we'll get into today. 866-WOW-1-WOW if you want to call it pre-show. we got about six minutes left before the Opie and Anthony show begins. Uh, Scarlett Johansson is apparently, all these articles are saying she's pregnant, uh, which is a shame. I'm sure we'll talk about it on today's show, but maybe for this week's podcast, we revisit the day of September 13th. 14th. Was it 14th? I think so. Well, we'll look it up. Um, that'll be on the podcast, of course. We'll be out tomorrow morning. Uh, today, a lot to get into still. And, you know, 
Larry, who's called this show many times, uh, has always preached the word of God. He's the homophobic Sam Roberts superfan. Uh, I thought of him <laughs> when Brian Green was on talking about God yesterday. Because I think I'm glad Owen A brought this up. Because that's what I think is one of the most interesting things to talk to these physicists who make it their life to figure out the world and how we're here and why we're here and what we're doing and how it became and blah, 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 where they're at in terms of God. Uh, and we got into that uh, with Brian Green. Let's go to track 12. <laughs> where are you at with God and uh, other life out there? Well, you know, for God, my view is that there may well be a God, right? I have no evidence to convince me that there is. All of my understanding of physics suggests that that's all that we need and to understand at least the nature of the physical universe, but that doesn't prove there isn't a God out there. So my view is if what we are doing as physicists is, say, working out God's laws in some secret way, I'm thrilled to be part of that journey. That's a pretty deep thing to do. Yeah. And if there is no God, as I suspect there isn't, and all we're doing is working out the laws of physics that brought the universe into existence and govern its evolution, if that's what we're doing, I'm happy to be part of that journey. So from a day-to-day -day perspective, it doesn't really affect what I do. He got more into it uh, with evidence of God uh, later on in the interview. Let's play that track. I, I I just kind of feel that you know that some some hairy guy sitting up in space somewhere granting wishes doesn't make sense to me. But right, I, if he can kind of grasp it through physics, that that kind of makes a whole lot of sense to me. Yep, yeah, you know, I agree. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. But on the other hand, quantum mechanics didn't make a whole lot of sense to some of the greatest geniuses of the twentieth yeah. century, and it turned well, out to be right. So the the thing is, the only ideas that I'm willing to buy into are ideas that have a strong mathematical basis, which ultimately are confirmed by experiment or observation. That's the gold standard. And all these other things that we talk about with mm. God, and I don't even know how to, what it means in any, in any deep, rigorous sense. Right, I have an right. intuitive right. feel for what people yeah. mean, but you know, it's hard to, to test that kind of an idea. Right. There's no way to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> now, on the other hand, if the, if the sky was to open, if the sky was to open, and the, the big man up there said, I'm here, I am God. I wonder, would I be convinced then? Part of me says, well, I guess I would. Part of me feels like maybe I checked myself into Bellevue at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what exactly I'm looking for when I say, where's the evidence? Right. And that's the debate. I mean, and that's what the Bill Nye creationism debate that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago boiled down to. The whole thing ends up being, you know, the guys who study physics... They go, okay, well, how do we get there? Those guys go, well, it's a, how do we get here? Those guys say it's a mystery. The guys who are religious, how do we get here? Well, God put us here by magic, and it's in a book, the Bible. And it's like there is no, there's no way you could prove one way or the other. Real quick, it grossed me out so much. But we were talking about Jim's stories. Before you run out of time and have to start the actual Opie and Anthony show, God forbid, uh, we were talking about, Jim was talking about being at comedy clubs and dirty mics just grossed me out so much. This is track three, Eric. Can we spray what? this microphone? Does your mic Ew, stink? Oh, it stinks. It ain't from me. I fucking said five words into it. Before I talked, I said, I know oh I said. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> did Mars used, used to spray these? Mars did well, used to. Comment. Mars is. Stop spraying these? Kaiser so say. <laughs> That's hilarious. There you go. <laughs> fucking oh, oh, my whatever. God. Who was using that microphone? No. Now I got the heebie jeebies. Why don't you use that one? Because I probably just a bit. Oh, man. Thanks. All right. Don't Calm it. down. Thanks. Try Stop. that. Stop. You're spilling it. <laughs> now you got us all paranoid. By the way, I want to... Uh, I want to get one of my own of these. I oh, just yeah? Use my own fucking... Just bring it in mic. every day. Yes. Your little mic uh, windscreen. Yeah. Disgusting. Oh, Somebody that's else's better. mouth right on it. It is right on it all the time. Well, how <sighs> German fence infested. It's, it's a perfect little home for germs. Comedy it's club spongy. mics. I never. I tried never to smell. You get one whiff of them, and it's just all dried. It could ruin your day, right? Takes the funny right out You're of the night. I should dude. say. There's pieces of food in the mesh. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's ready to vomit. It's fucking terrible. It's man. so bad. You ever see like a little piece of carrot or meat in the fucking mesh? <laughs> <laughs> you would think they would have came up with a better design for that. Hey, yeah. It catches all little food particles. You gotta talk into it. That is so disgusting. Anyway, 
Huge Ovi and Anthony show coming up today. Of course, we made it to TMZ. Jimmy Kimmel had Rob Ford on his show. There's a fake chef that was going on local news shows, even though he didn't know how to cook. Too funny. A news reporter getting smashed by snow. I'm sure you've all seen the viral video. Uh, everything going on in the Ukraine. Scarlett Johansson is pregnant, according to these articles. Uh, Arby's bought that stupid hat. And there's Kiss News. So Jim's going to be happy. Find out about all that and more when the Opie and Anthony show begins, which happens right now. From the murky banks banks of terrestrial radio, a new hope begins to rise. Opie and Anthony are radio shock jocks known for setting up outrageous stunts. People sure are listening. Two Long Island natives who together would one day change the world as broadcasting's greatest duo. After 20 years, these children of the 80s have arrived. Their hugely popular radio show is not just in New York anymore. Opie and Anthony show. The hottest show there is. 
through 55 gallon drums and wiffle ball bats. Oh, you push it in until you're comfortable. From mayors to mayor. It was an April Fool's hoax by two radio disc jockeys. With bottle rockets and bra bombings. <laughs> and wieners and pigs. Opie and Anthony got their hands on the photo and tweeted it. Two men that have taken a box of cocks further than any. Well, these people will definitely stop. Guaranteed. Oh, Lift okay, up this the cocks. <laughs> <laughs> They've met friends along the way. I have a raging heart on right now. Can I please put my dick in your donuts? And through fines, scandals, suspensions, cancellations, and terminations, it's the one show that remains unscathed. Striking fear into the hearts of management everywhere comes a radio show that after 20 years remains above all else real. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Well, low volume, right? What's wrong? I feel okay. What's no, wrong? I'm cranked all the way up and it sounds like shit. Oh, really? Let's get on this, Mars. Let's up. go. I need a chop, chop. Eight to quarter. You got bad volume in your headphones. What if I do this? It's odd. Don't do that. Well, that should be way over this there. One. Why? Why? I don't know. Oh, now I gotta crank it all the way. Yeah. What happens? I don't know. I don't know what happens. Very odd, though. Eh, what are you gonna right, do? Go. That's better. It's not our problem. We'll just continue to rot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just sit here and rot. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hi, people. <laughs> How are the people? Oh, Jesus. People? You gotta call some people? <laughs> I would love to talk about the weather, but everyone else is talking about the weather. Is that what's going on? How much it sucks. Fucking ridiculous. At least it's a little lighter out when you when I come in. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, but uh, got fuck, that sun man. coming up over the horizon a little bit. That's just lighting up that sky a bit, saying, "Hello, the sun's coming." Supposed to be what forty five, I guess. Today, oh, the no, the average is what it's supposed to be now. Oh, really? This time of year. Oh, well, we're, 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 it was it was it was eleven degrees when I left my house. Oh my god, eleven? <laughs> eleven? Was it really? Oh, it's just I <laughs> hate it. <laughs> yeah, but you're only uh, don't you open up your pool at April first? That's what that's like my goal every year is to open it April first. It's not eleven. Mars. It was 11 it's degrees. 12. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. 12. Climbing. Well, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, fucking brutal. Yeah, what are you going to do? Ah. What are you going to do? I went to bed last night like a big boy. I got done, did a comedy seller set, was home by 9.40 and in bed. Nice. And uh, looked wow. at the clock. It was 11.18 as I lay there wide awake. No. Tossing. I was exhausted. But I just lay there like a nervous animal. Are you drinking coffee late? Not at all, dude. I fucking don't drink coffee after I leave here. Is I'm done the, with coffee by 9.30 in the morning. Is that was trying trying my to, thing? No. Rest with your, your thoughts? Is it trying to rest with your mind racing it's all the time? It's that or I put the apnea mask on, I'm finally getting relaxed, and I feel like a little nose hair going... <laughs> 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 that can't be good. It's torture. That can't be relaxing. It's torture. <laughs> 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 I even put my phone in the other room. I left my phone in the living room. I plugged it in. I'm like, no phone stuff. Like, you know, yeah. just, I'm not going to look at my computer when I get back. Yeah. Get everything right. Aw. And it didn't force? work. Why would it? Jeez, man, what's up with that? I don't know. That's got to be a nightmare. It my, stinks. My bad sleep was all about coffee and no. eating too late, and I figured all that out. Maybe eating finally. too late. I, you know what? That could be it. I, I ate right before I came back. I ate like a little... The eating will just fire up that system, man, because now yes. your whole body has to do something with that food. It's working. Yeah, maybe. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's breaking it down and pushing yeah. this over here. Let me push some of this over here. Oh. Here, let's push the waist down, yeah, downwards. We're, we're working. Muscles are working. Muscles in there. are working. And uh, you're pumping acids. and Yeah, you're firing up that metabolism. Oh, that that, that can't be good. No. Little, little Beavis drops his cat toys on my face at night. Yeah. He wants to that play. what you call his balls? Yes. His, his <laughs> little cat toys. 
Or really? a long gun. <laughs> yeah, he wants to play fetch in the middle of the uh, night. How about you lock him out of your bedroom, then? No, he's a good guy. He just hangs out. He, he might get a little rambunctious, but... Uh, yeah. He wakes you up you by know. putting stuff on your face. Yeah, he, he picks up his little little cat toys and then drops them directly on my face. Nice. It's adorable. He's trying to wake you up. It's noon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's basically saying enough already. Enough. Get up. Get the fuck up and feed oh, me. He's got a headache again. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, dad, dad gets tired a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> dad, dad. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> LeBron scored 61 last night. I know we're not big NBA guys here, but LeBron. That's a, a record, I guess, for him. It's, uh, yeah. Season record, well, I guess his all-time record. He's Not wearing bad. his little fucking uh, mask there. His scary mask, yeah, he broke his nose. What happened? They told him to not wear the black one? Did they really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the NBA kind of requested. It wasn't like an order, but Why? they're like, hey, because it was like Ugh. intimidating or something. What the fuck? It's like a costume almost if you wear it black. It's like, it's like a Lone Ranger thing. Was it, was it scaring the gay one? Uh, I don't know. It was scaring the gay guy. <laughs> Here's if that guy's oh. gay. Oh, so he had to go with the clear mask. Yeah. That's even yeah. creepier because that looks like you're wearing someone's skin. Yeah, it's like some carbon fiber shit. They oh, I didn't on. know they told him to take the black yeah. one off. The black one was badass. I know. I guess that's why. Just looked Joe, like who complained? Face. I don't know if anyone even complained because it was kind of just a request. What's the article say? <laughs> What, NBA players can't handle black masks now? I guess. Sounds racist to me, That's but... That's kind of stupid. Yeah. Uh, I guess the Nets signed Jason Collins to another 10-day contract or something. 10 days, huh? Well, they got to keep signing How much him. does the uh, Down Syndrome kid, how long is he? Uh, is he still on a team? I think so, yeah. I think... Yeah? They, well, they can't, like... You They're know, they matching can't. his deal. Yeah, they got to re-sign him every <laughs> time, too, or you look like an asshole. No, he got re he got signed to another team, remember? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He moved on to another team. He's on oh. Globetrotters now. Oh, right. Globetrotters, joking. really? Globetrotters really? signed him. Oh, boy. Well, why couldn't the Globetrotters, you know, sign another, another one of those? Oh, you know, another one of those. Well, he's good, though, this kid. Is he, he good? Actually, he actually can uh, make shots. Yeah, good for him. So I guess uh, you can't just, you know, I go was, to some special school and grab a kid and sign him up. I was I was great from the three-point line. I didn't get contract with the Harlem Globetrotters. No. Man. I should, I should have been a little funny, I guess. Maybe you should have, yeah. If I was a little funny. Or a little darker. Yeah, that too. Have you ever had a white guy? Helped. No, I think the Harlem Globetrotters, uh, as a goof, uh, put a, a, a white guy on there for a little while. Yeah? I think so. <clears throat> They're all about diversity, right? Everyone is. Diversity Everyone is diversity. Uh, is not good when it's forced on everyone. <laughs> Did you see on the Oscars Jesus. that small group of young people that were like the, 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 they were oh, like yeah, the yeah, Oscars yeah. thing that brought them out of the stage? You yeah. couldn't have gotten a more stereotypical diverse group. It's like, we need something that looks diverse. Yeah. They had like some Arab girl, an Asian guy, the mm. black guy, the, the, the geeky white kid. They collected them all. Guy with a hair lip. They had it's a hair crazy. lip guy. Oh, yeah. I think he was the Asian guy, too. Yeah. Double threat. Ellen got flack, too. They called her transphobic. Ellen did? Because of her, this is how, this is Ugh. where we are, because of her joke about Liza Minnelli. What? Oh, Why shut up. Why would that up. be transphobic? Well, you know, because you're looking at a woman and you're saying it's wrong in a way that she looks masculine. I guess I didn't, I couldn't. I, I didn't hear the explanation. And probably, Holy mackerel. But it's just... If you can't just even talk about it, like, if you just talk about the transgendered, there, there's these groups that'll get upset, well, no matter what your content. It was a great line. Amazing line. Funny as fuck. It, it's called comedy. Probably one of the edgiest lines I've heard on the Oscars. <laughs> it was yeah. it was funny. Right. And ballsy. Yes. Yeah. Well, so where's that article? Now I gotta see I don't this. know. Remember where I saw that, um, to be honest with you. Second most watched Oscars, by the way. 43 million. That's pretty good. I think Billy Crystal has the record in, uh, at 44 back in 2004, oh, I think. I wonder what he did on that one. And, and Open to show up. Scooty la ba -dooby da And if anyone cares, that pizza delivery guy made a $1,000. Yeah, who oh, made yeah? $1,000 tip. What's that guy's name? Edgar. <laughs> Have some pizza. I'm going to deliver pies. <laughs> None for you. 
Uh, thousand bucks. Yeah, man. They all tipped in. They see they got like nice. six hundred. Ellen threw like four hundred for him. Oh, righteous bucks. Yeah, I'm trying to find the the, the Ellen the. I don't know if we have it in here or if I just saw it. Watch the Oscars okay. eating some food while I was perusing, and um, Chelsea Handler's uh, getting. Some yeah, of course. She's I know. a little She's bit of a jam up too over nothing. I wonder how she'll handle it because what's like, her jam up? She was just making uh, twelve years of slave jokes and you're trying to push her book, which is called yeah. a Uganda. Be kidding me. Uganda. Be <laughs> She's like an African me. themed book. Right. That's and she was pretty funny. Yeah, and she was tying it in with. Uh, yeah. Where was she doing all this? I just was tweeting it. Like she was live tweeting for who was she doing it for? Huffington Post. The Huffington Post. She was one of the people that they got. And it said, uh, no, it was nothing. It's like, oh, 12 Years a Slave won. Uh, go to Africa or buy Uganda Be Kidding Me. What the fuck is that? And then she tweeted some Angelina Jolie ad adoption. Yeah, yeah. Um, Who didn't tweet one of those? Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, that was the go-to one. That was easy, right? Yeah. I'm trying to see uh, that there were... Okay. Take it away. What? Express their outrage. Yeah, yeah that's oh, she Several would, uh, of her jokes were racially charged, starting charged. with her response to Lupita's uh, win for Best Supporting Actress. Yeah. Angelina Jolie just filed adoption papers. That's that's just a funny line that a exactly. lot of people came up with, yeah, by the way. Absolutely. There were a lot sure. of those. I had him adopting the uh, boat movie guy, though. Well, oh, yes. <laughs> I want to see the boat movie. I want to see the boat movie. She also jumped on the opportunity to promote her upcoming book, You Gotta Be Kidding Me. Uganda, be kidding me, which is out Tuesday, and did so again when 12 Years a Slave won for Best Picture. Congratulations, 12 Years a Slave. Go to Africa Africa, or buy Uganda, be kidding me. How bad is that? It's not. Like, what is that? How is that bad? This is just lazy. It's fucking ridiculous. Whoever wrote this. Dude, it's just Whoever not looking started for this, it, 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 It's just lazy. Uh, I doubt she'll, uh, you know... She'll, uh, she's in a pretty good place. She doesn't need to There's apologize. There's nothing here. There's nothing there. There's no. absolutely nothing here. Who cares? She's on our show tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Right? Oh. We'll I watched 12 Years of, I watched 12 Years a Slave yesterday. Finally, like, for the first time, like, all the way through. A little I late. I, had, I know. A little late to the party. But uh, it was good. Yeah. It was a good fucking movie. Yeah. Fucking, uh... Wow. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Yeah, fucking heavy, man. Oh! But it's like, I did, like, there's one, one good white guy, Brad Pitt. That right. was it. Uh, down south, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like one. All the rest. I don't think, I, I, I mean, my history might be a little off, but oh, I no. can't imagine oh, no. that every white person uh, in the south put that much energy into hating black people. I just can't imagine. It's looked exhausting. Uh, first of all, your history might be a little off. <laughs> Your favorite song is Party, like it's seventeen ninety nine. No, I like that one master song as he was singing that little ditty as they're working. Oh, I, I remember oh, the song, oh, but I remember geez, it was bad. Oh yeah, that that guy who it was he, run, run. Oh right, right. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was brutal. I like yeah, that yeah, movie. Yeah. They didn't. They, usually, they focus on the the good white guy in Hollywood, mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah, in yeah. Amistad, and, and they always focus uh -huh. on the good white people. But this one didn't. And that one guy that just fucked him over. Took his money and then went back to the guy who was supposed to mail the letter for him. Oh my God! And he yeah. goes back to the guy and tells him he's got to lie to the master. Oh man! I was that shocked. Was pretty good. I was shocked at that. Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think black people saw that movie? Holy fuck! I was thinking what it would be like to sit in a movie theater full of black people when that movie was on, and then right. the lights come up and you're just like, <laughs> "Hi, hi, everyone! <laughs> here, I'm just gonna give out money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reparations right here. Here you come go. Here. Don't kill me. I got plenty for everyone. Oh my god! <laughs> You'd have to make the I'm disgusted two face. Yeah, I can't Why? believe it. Never. We're Why? talking to foreign accents. If I wasn't more like that Brad Pitt character, I'd be upset. <laughs> Please don't. You gotta sneak out. With five minutes oh, left of the film, do you ever I just assume you know how it ends? <laughs> oh, no, they 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 saw that movie. Oh, oh no. boy, oh boy, <laughs> oh yeah, boy, that's some brutal man. When uh, that fucking, when that Lapita girl is getting uh, whipped, how fucking awesome oh, was she though? That fucking effect they had, where the blood is just whoosh, like f splashing off her back. She was good, yeah. They and were his, all good. His cunt but, wife. Didn't you want to tr strangle uh, his fucking cunt wife? Oh, yeah.
Oh, oh was she a bad one? Paul Giamatti was murderable. He was I mean, his performance was great. It, he was very murderable. Short, like yeah. he had, a, he didn't have a big part, but it was really like he was so bad. <laughs> oh, how does he shit. walk around after doing I that? I know because people got to look at him like, wait, wait, wait. Um, you're, you're in not, craft services. Yeah. Just hey, how yeah. you doing? You're not that good of an actor. <laughs> Where's that coming from, sir? Uh, yeah, I always think that. You know. Yeah. She looked hot tied up on that tree, though. Lupita? That fucking ass. I think you missed the point of the film. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you missed the overall message of oh, the film. Yeah. Well, I was just in the context of the actress. They, I, that's a good point, uh, yeah. She's the tied acting. to the tree. Yeah. She's totally nude from the back. Sure. She had a nice ass on She's her. She's very, very sexy girl, though. I don't think that was meant to be jerk-off fodder. <laughs> <laughs> For guys on Long Island, <laughs> meant to be your masturbation fuel. Oh, yeah, that was. Great. And, and the guy who played uh, the slave master who was fucking her. Was, what, I keep forgetting. Say what's his name? Fast. His, how do you say his name? Fast Bender was amazing. Yeah, he was great, he was he was great really too. Good. Yeah, as this tortured guy, like he, he he's a fucking slave owner, but he yeah he, yeah. he, like, he likes this girl and yeah. oh, that was great. He's brutal too. It's just uh, I think it completely deserved best picture. Yeah. based on all the other movies that were uh, You've nominated. Seen most of them too, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't most, see I didn't, I didn't see her. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see. Her. What was her about? Her. Good. Was uh, that the? Isn't that the Joaquin Phoenix movie? Mm -hmm. Was yeah. that the Spike Jones joint? Yeah. <laughs> what was What was her about? It was about a guy who falls in love with uh, his. Boring. <laughs> I don't need what to know for real, Sam. You got a boring. <laughs> I didn't make the movie. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't need to know for real. <laughs> Her, her. And Gravity getting all those accolades. For technical, I, I agree. It's amazing. But, uh... Well, directing, that's... It won for directing. That's weird. Right? That's stupid. It's weird to give a director that... I don't know. Like, Look at all the scenes in American Hustle. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's so involved. That You need a really good director for all those scenes and that they pulled off. CGIing. Uh, so much of the movie is CGI to have a director, and you got to depend on your 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 special effects people. Right. right. So They're what is huge. he doing in the end? Uh, uh, winning an Oscar. Yeah, but I mean, American Hustle is so many different costumes and mm. and sets, and you yeah, know, yeah. so many players coming and going, and have real to, live camera moves, all that. Yeah, I, I think know. that was a bad move. Weird. Oh. I think yeah, I, and I thought the movie was genuinely dull. It was the story itself was you know all right, she's going here, she's going there, she's trying to get home. Uh, bah. Let's not do this. Yeah, what? Well, we do Oscar it. To, we do it with everything. It was a really good movie. It was, but we it beat the shit out of everything. But it, I, I, you got to see no, it in like the I theater. Said, I thought Twelve Years a Slave was really good. I saw it in theater. I saw it. IMAX I thought Gravity fucking... was great to look at. The story was exactly. simple, of course, but but it's like going on a fucking ride. It's yeah. like then you might as well just be on a ride because that's what it was. It looked great, three mm. D IMAX. It was fucking uh, incredible. But story wise and stuff, bah, who gives a fuck? I think it was the Avatar thing. They felt like they didn't really need a, they a, didn't need it. a big story. It looks great. Because right. if it looks amazing like it did. Yeah. I don't know. Puttering George Clooney, puttering around the fucking cosmos. <laughs> right, right. It was like George Jetson. <laughs> There was yeah. one moment in uh, like I looked at who directed Twelve Years a Slave. With the guy's name is uh, Steve McQueen, right? Mm -hmm. Where yeah. the fucking con like the Black guy Steve McQueen, Black Steve McQueen, where the guy who's I forget who she went, I forget his real name. He does something fucked up and he's being punished, and they have him like with a noose around his neck. Oh my god! And he's god. standing on his How tippy toes went. in the mud. Yeah. Yes. And and he has to balance because if he slips, he's gonna hang himself. And he's fucking. How long did they? The, the fact they kept the camera on it, this guy. Mm. It showed him being there all day, right. and it was uncomfortably long. The like, kids are playing out in the field while, while he's just hanging there. That's, like, they wouldn't let you out of it. It no. was really, that's a direct, that was a director's decision. That's directing. Right? That, was, that was amazing. That's amazing directing. Right, because it, it, you want to show how long that is. Right. You're like, just get out of this already. Yeah, it was uncomfortable yeah. to watch. <laughs> yeah. It was long and tedious, and you got yeah. uncomfortable, and it was like, I guess that was the intention of it. For yeah, yeah. Me. Yeah, I really, I really believe they blew it with the directing Oscar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what are you gonna do? I liked it though. Good, uh, good story. Good, yep. Great acting. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Good for you. Nice. Um, oh, Scott Shannon thanked us again. Oh, Scott. We didn't. We didn't have this at the end of the show Arr. yesterday. Or we did, but we were busy with uh, 
Caesar Milan. I hope there's no uh, Caesar Milan underhanded uh, or backhanded compliments in this because uh, that'll be war. Oh yeah, we're listening closely. <laughs> yeah, that's how he handles how he kisses our ass. <laughs> Oh, boy. We listen to every word. <laughs> so the Scott and Todd thing, those two uh, split up. Todd's doing his uh, show. Scott's doing his show. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of one lousy, not lousy in a bad way, one lousy 15-minute phone call, yeah. we're all Team Scott. Who wouldn't be? I wrote him yesterday saying I, I've never seen anyone turn the opinion of an yeah. audience around in 15 minutes like, like he did on Friday. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah. We were all ready to just listen to his new show and beat the crap oh, out of him. Oh yeah, he was next on the list. And now I don't, <laughs> I don't have the desire to no. do that. <laughs> Wish him nothing but the best. There's rumors that uh, one of the Jerky Boys wants on our show to discuss some things. Probably Johnny. He's written oh, me Johnny. and thanked me of, for the way we. Of course, it's Johnny. But I'm hearing rumors he might be ready to come on and uh, that'd be do great. A little talking about I'd it. Love to have Johnny on because it looks like he's been aware of the whole uh, Todd thing for many years. Yeah, yeah. Pounds, baby, pounds. So, just doing jerky boys bad, that's not good. Yeah. That can't help your brand. No. Uh, so, here's Scott Shannon on his first day at CBS FM here in New York City. And checking in this morning is an old friend of uh, Joe's and mine. Her name is Naomi D. Clemente. Uh, oh, my goodness. I didn't realize how funny you are without the other guy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You're really funny. Uh, yeah, that's what we. <laughs> that's that's, that was, that's exactly what we said right. Friday. Invigorated, right? Recharged. Yeah. I uh, gave him a little advice too. I, oh, I told geez. him to stay loose. I said, stay loose and just just go for it. Let me tell you something, kid. <laughs> Why am I giving him advice? But I I had to because I'm like, don't go back to like that crappy regular radio BS. Yeah. Just keep it loose, and I, I said you have nothing to lose. Just go and have fun. Hey, look, it's that nigger kid. Yeah, what's up, Eric? What I didn't realize uh, yesterday, too, is after his intro, his first song was an uh, old song by the OJ's, Backstabber. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. Shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a little telling. Mm -hmm. I put on some Backstabber. Is there a song called Miserable Son of a Bitch Fuckwad? <laughs> I'll he, play that. He knew that, that Todd wanted to do the show by himself all that time. It's like, what the fuck was going on behind the scenes there, Oof. man? I would love to know. Oof. Ah. Uh, because we noticed it. Like, it was uh, obvious on, on, on air. Yeah. Yeah, Todd said... Uh, I'm oh, sorry, Scott Has said... Has Todd addressed this at all? No. Nah, why would he? No. Fucking Didn't heck. even thank him on his first show. Nah, why or, would he? No. If you're reinventing, uh, you know, regular radio oh. like Todd's got to... Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you just let it all out? You got to let, let it all out. You would think, but no. That'll get the people to talk it. No, uh, yes. You get some headlines if you start talking about uh, what happened. Right. Well, it's gonna be, I'm sorry, it's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a fun, like, for, for Soccer Mom's show. Why would you address something unpleasant? Yesterday on his show, he said he knew uh, back in December that this was happening, and he didn't leave till February 7th, I think it was. So he knew for, for well, like, months. That's probably a contract thing. Yeah, they yeah. just didn't... Uh, he had no compete? I mean, he didn't have a no compete, no, I guess. He's still doing business with them, so I think that's why they let it out. He has his true oldies network with Cumulus. Oh, really? Yeah, that he has partial ownership in it. So I think they came to an agreement and just let him go. Maybe he decided to go, too. Maybe he could have re-signed for the same thing, but mm -hmm. he's like, fuck maybe. this, it's not fun anymore. You I know, don't know. Maybe. I think it was a old, hey, take a hike. Yeah, Maybe. No, mm -hmm. man. No, nah, he, he was in touch with CBS a while ago. Oh. Uh, yeah, that doesn't just pop up quickly like it did. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. He knows how to take care of himself. You know how long it takes to hammer out a contract yeah, no, and he, stuff? Come on. He, he, he's been in the business forever. He knows how to take care of himself. So he, right. You know, the signs were on the, on the... The writing was on the wall. I work to vibe. Hey, hey. And he probably started making some phone calls, and then they figured, all right, we could, we could do all this in February, late February. Yeah. The money this guy has made over the oh. years... When he left New York to go to L.A., mm. he had a contract with Westwood One. Yeah. It's $5 million a year. And this is 89. Oh, my right? God. <laughs> Jesus. When he Damn. came back to New York, he still had $5 million a year with his new agreement with uh, ABC at PLJ. So if he started wow. in 91 at $5 million, and that station has just been top billing ever since, there's no way he's made less than that. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, good for him. Five million a year. Well, he had this yeah. to say at the, at, at the end of his first show. I gotta say hi to Debbie Cole. She's a new listener. Denise Robertson from Palisades Park. She made the switch. Okay. And Jer- Jerry Mayer heard about us from Opie and Anthony. He's trying to. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's going to be around no, it's, long. No, no. He says he's going to give us this week. <clears throat> he's trying us out this week. And by the way, I got to say thanks to the uh, friends of O and A for uh, recruiting new listeners for our show. Like I said, I don't know how long we're going to be able to hold on to it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but for a while. <laughs> I don't know how long. Yeah, you never know. Our oh, listeners. Yeah, he does. Hey, on a daily basis, we don't know how long of we're going to hold on to them. Of course. Them. Exactly. Bastards. <laughs> yes. We don't know where we lost most of them. <laughs> yeah. If we have one minute of shitty radio, they're going to let us know about it. So, uh, Well, I mean, he does a very different type of show. Oh, obviously. But if I need a, if I need an oldie or two, I'll I'll, I'll check it out. Go, go on over there, an oldie. Bit. And I bet he'll do more honest radio and more genuine yeah. talk radio than fucking his old. Well, you hear his voice yeah. there. What, what? I know it's so different. It's not like I couldn't understand what he was saying on the other show because it, it's like they had his mic down and he was just in the background. Right. I don't know. I don't he didn't know have any is, real oomph to it. While the young superstar oh, yeah. took over. While the young superstar oh, led yeah. the charge. <laughs> 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 he stinks. Fucking awful. <laughs> it really bothers right. me. He's everything I hate about regular radio. He stinks. Oh. Todd. Yeah, we gotta go in there. You're not talking. You're talking too much over there, jerk face. It's not like the jerky boys. I say jerk face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't say you're gonna reinvent regular radio and then do the exact same show you were doing a mere two weeks prior. Yeah. <laughs> this big fucking grandiose uh, uh, intro and open like right. he's gonna do something cutting edge and brand new. And then he does the same. And then nothing. How was Rob same. Ford on Jimmy Kimmel? I didn't. Was it fun? It. it was so good. He's it, the greatest. Was it really good? It was really good. I Jimmy didn't Kimmel. See it first. Like he just asked. He just asked him about all the humiliating stuff. He, right. he did nothing to like make him feel <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> no. My the best segment was he just stood him up in front of a video screen and watched all the Rob Ford videos and then said, "What, what was that?" Nice. <laughs> like, what were you doing? Why? Who were you talking to? Give me a little taste of this. He looks like Goldfinger. I got all this uh, DVR. I, ha- I haven't been able to see it yet. I want to go through some of these videos. If you don't mind, don't mind Mayor Ford, stand right there. And um, you can take us through these things because I hope maybe we can answer some questions here. All right, let's roll the first one. <laughs> answer some questions. Don't fall apart, brother. He dies right behind you. I'm talking to Okay. Brother, you've never seen me. Now, somebody who is clearly not your friend videotaped you without your knowledge here. Who are you talking about in that video? You don't know. Exactly. You have no idea. You have that many enemies that you don't know which one this was? All right, let's go to the next video. Oh, the bump of the This is the famous State Queen video. You're doing a Jamaican accent here. It's called Patois. It's called Patois. Do you do other accents, or is that the only one? Now, you were, you, in this video, what was going on? Just went out uh, with a friend, a few friends of mine. Oh, he's... And have, <laughs> some some private Jama- setting, private friends, and there's no secret, I have a lot of Jamaican friends, and uh, that's how we speak, in a private setting. If someone wants to date me, they can date me. Have you been to Jamaica? No. I would love to take you there for spring break sometime. <laughs> Montego Bay. All right, next video. The this football. is the famed football video. <laughs> <laughs> right his ass. Why is he running at you? Is he tackling you? Because this video ends right here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what he's doing. Okay. I would like to see you be a part of the NFL combine, I have to say. Next video. We have your brother, Doug. See, uh, Councillor Ainsley, you got your own issues. Councillor Ford, and then here's you. Councillor Ford, please direct the question to the chair to the staff. And (laughs) Uh, now, is that the middle finger? No, he's He's making references like Uh, he's driving and then drinking. Right, right. Drinking and driving. Is this? First of all, I want you on my team in charades, but. 
Were you classically trained in pantomime, or was that off the cuff? You know, these counts just come across like they're holier than now, and uh, a lot of them have more angles than a dog's hind legs. So uh, these people, you know, they're just talking about, you know, drinking and all that. And uh, the person I was referring to was just pulled over the other night for drinking and driving. I so see. I'm not naming names, but He's so uh, nice. I got you. All right, next video. This is a little embarrassed, though. The was still going on. The mayor is going to attack no, that, somebody. <laughs> that lady, you apologize to her afterwards. Uh, <laughs> is it that once you get up to a certain speed, there's no stopping? Or... <laughs> you get very excited. <laughs> All right, what else do we have here? This is, now, this is my favorite. I have to see, this is my favorite of all the videos. This is a Christmas parade, and this is you passing out candy canes and literally dumping them on the children as, as, if, as if you were feeding birds. That's what I do. Just give them a couple each next time, you know? And then one more, I believe we have. Now this is a, this is great because after all that's gone on in in the city hall, you are still enjoying yourself enough to just dance reggae style. Again, another reason for our trip to Jamaica together. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> and then there's the guy. <laughs> you really he really get into it. Mind. And everybody's happy. This seems so very Canadian to me. Like, actually, no, it's, you know, it's, that's um, our trip to Austin, Texas. And in Austin, Texas, <laughs> they always have a break and they have a band come in and play. You were in this Austin is, there? No. I, oh, that's where we got it from. Oh, so I see. said, <laughs> um, let's have a band come in and play. And they were playing Bob Marley. And like I said, I, I like Bob Marley. So council got up and danced and we had a good time. So, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah, that was great. It broke the tension. Everyone enjoyed. All right. Oh my God. He looks. He's wearing a black suit and a, a, a just a, a beat like a red red tie. Right. Yeah. And he, you can tell he's a little embarrassed his by the face. Is, yes. His definitely. face is red from embarrassment, embarrassment yeah. and probably yeah. maybe a little something else. During the interview part, Jimmy Kimmel acknowledged how much Rob Ford was sweating and then patted him down with a. With a yeah, he wiped his forehead. forehead. He yeah. leaned over and blotted his sweat. <laughs> Takes balls for Rob Ford to do that. Yep. Yeah. I wonder why he's doing it. Like, what is he, what is he, uh... He has nothing to lose. He's, he's nothing to lose. Make him more likable, I guess. Oh, maybe, yeah. And he's just yeah. enjoying the fact that he's a celebrity now. Yeah, he, he loves, loves being a celebrity. On TV. That's it. I'd love to interview him. Oh, yeah. He loves being a celebrity. You think they flew him out? I bet you they flew him out. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Certain. Yeah, they kind of got the money to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We could, well, from Toronto, we can get him here. I'm on a train. God, these <laughs> feels like these late night shows have just just gotten so much better. Not to no. take away from uh, Leno right. or Letterman or anything, but it's, I don't know. People are really watching these clips. It's yeah, it's kind of a new era. It's mm -hmm. also because they're embracing this new stuff. Like the tip, yeah. it's, it sounds we keep saying it, but they're embracing it. And they're not fighting it and sticking to the right. old school. Mm -hmm. They're kind of going with these new. Uh, Every day, though, one of these guys has a really good clip that's pretty much going viral. They have viral every videos single day. every day. Every day. Every day. Like Jimmy Kimmel, I mean, Jimmy Fallon had the chick on who John Travolta mispronounced her name and did the uh, oh, really? classroom musical performance deal that he does. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't What's worry. that? It's where he gets like a very popular artist with a catchy song and gets them and the roots to perform the song with kids' instruments. With, like, little, like, in elementary school, you'd use that little xylophone yeah. thing. Right. And another, yeah, another really smart bit. All right, just play part of it. Wow. And it's always catchy songs. This is Let It Go, right? Snowbirds white on the mountain tonight Got a footprint to the sea I can't <laughs> the Delta Zim, the queen. fuck? Yeah. The wind is howling like this swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in, heaven knows we tried. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Casio. <laughs> Triangle. Triangle was a staple. Mm -hmm. well, what a clever way to get just to yeah, do it he, differently. Yeah. He did this with Robin Thicke, Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah. And 
instead of just having her come out and mm. sing it. Sick of singing this already? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is not even the. Did you? He, he did. The, what was the first one? He did the one that was actually better than this. The first. What was the first one he did? Uh. <laughs> that's pretty good. We'll get over it. We'll get over it. Pitch in the fit. Do you like that? Do you like that line? Pitch in the fit. I like pitching in the fit. fit. <laughs> that's terrible. Grandma. <laughs> you know, Frozen. Frozen became the 18th movie to uh, make a billion dollars worldwide. What are some of those other movies in there, you think? Uh, Avatar? Lion King. Gotta go Avatar, gotta go Lion King. Gotta go maybe Titanic. Gotta Titan. go... Uh, hmm. It's more the recent ones, right? Probably kids' movies, too, more. Oh, and the uh, gotta, 3D movies. Gotta go maybe... Uh, I want to... Uh, really? Just let me see the list. Avatar's number one. Because uh, the 3D movies are more expensive. Oh, I take it's two. Good point. What's number two? Is number Ava two Avatar made two thousand seven hundred and eighty-two dollars worldwide. That's huge. Two thousand seven hundred and eighty-two. That's, that's wow. wrong. That's Whoa. massive. That's huge money. Then you got Titanic. Uh, Marvel's the the Avengers. Dude, really, James Cameron is number yeah, one and two on one. the list. Right. That's wow. A pretty amazing. Jesus. Then you got the Harry Potter. All right. Iron Man 3, The Transformers, Lord of the Rings, Skyfall. They're all 3D movies. Which one was Skyfall? The James the most Bond recent movie. Bond with oh, right, Adele right, right. singing. You know what? I didn't see that one yet. Jesus. The Dark Knight. You got the pirates in there, the Caribbean. The Dark Knight hit a billion dollars? Yeah. Wow. Toy Story 3 is on that list. Damn. And you got uh, another Pirates in there. You got Jurassic Park, Star Wars, Episode One, The Phantom Menace, Oof. Alice in Wonderland. I guess so. 2010? That was the 3D one. I got wow. not that many people went to. You got a Hobbit movie up there. You got The Dark Knight again. The other Dark Knight. Yeah, you got Dark Knight and then Dark Knight Rises. And then finally, uh, Frozen has officially made that list with The Lion King just knocking on the door. Oh, I see. Just knocking on the door to make that list. Knock, knock, knock. Mm. Gotcha. Nice. Not bad. But but Frozen already in, in what? Uh, 18th place. And What's, the DVDs aren't even out yet. Every every well, parent do that, yeah. every parent has to pick that one up. Yep. So they're gonna move up that list. This is just box office. Oh, okay. They don't do uh, the DVDs and all that. No. Gotcha. But mm. I don't even think it's out in Japan or China yet. Why? What are they waiting for? Well, they do right. things differently. What's wrong with those people? Yeah. They're still trying to translate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's gotta be a bitch. Uh, we got people disagreeing on our movie choices oh, here. Shit. Let's say hi to Danny in D.C. Danny. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Hello. Sure, welcome aboard. Uh, thanks. Hey, I just want to let you know, uh, I really think that Alfonso Cuaron did deserve the Oscar for Best Director, and here's why. Uh, uh, for Gravity, for the people that don't know the players, because mm. I didn't even know right. that was his name, to be honest with you. That's right. Uh, yes, if you look at all the categories that they took home, uh, Oscars for, to, you know, visual effects, and sound design, sound editing, uh, it was really Alfonso Cuaron's vision that brought all these guys together, and that made this movie pop. Yeah, well, I could say, look, oh, I want to make a movie about, you know, underwater, and uh, we're going to do this, and uh, it needs to be all CGI. Go. Yeah, that's a terrible <laughs> argument. Well, well you, not necessarily. You, you, uh, can't, I mean, you can't just uh, win Best Director because you have a vision. Yeah. you got to look at, at, at how, uh, you know, the scenes in the movie. Well, absolutely. Uh, but, if, I mean, if you listen to all their speeches... They talk about, uh, I mean, how he put them in the right place, but, I mean, it, it was him that he had to bring it all together, right? These all people are experts in their own field, but, I mean, they don't know how to make a movie, right? I mean, he, he uh, it's the, the I best. I don't know. So that, like, sort of like, you know, the reason that Steve Jobs is so highly regarded, you know? He, he didn't invent the iPhone. But he put all the right yeah. in the right place, and it was his vision that brought all, all the correct now That's Isn't that more of a, like, a producer, though? Yeah, I I just Where you don't put all the parts together. As far as your good old school directing goes, um, I want to see act, actual directing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after you get all the special effects and all that figured out, then what is he really doing? Yeah, he still has to direct, and he did a very good job. Yes, of course. 
But uh, but I mean, Twelve Years a Slave, and you got uh, Amer- I'm, I mean, American Hustle. The scenes in that movie. It's got computer guys fucking making camera moves. Uh, they didn't even use the real Earth. No, that wasn't Earth. That was some CGI Earth. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to tell if, well, you know, if you didn't know what visual effects But were. that goes to Ant's point. That was a computer guy. Some a special effects guy. Some poor unknown geek sitting there fucking right. working. Anyway, thanks, guys. All right, sir. All right. Yeah. And then uh, finally we go to Snowy in Michigan. I, I think I know oh. Snowy. He calls every once in a while. Or is it a girl? I, I forget. Uh-oh. Snowy, what's up? <laughs> yeah, how you doing? I just recognize the name. Sorry. What's up, buddy? Uh, you got the snowman. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, snowman. Um, I had to ask Ann. He said that one girl was hot tied to a tree. Was she hotter before or after they whipped her? Oh, that's... Oh, you better answer correctly See, that's here. That's terrible. I wasn't uh, putting it in the context of the whipping at all. It was just, you know, a naked chick tied to a tree from the back. I was just noticing her ass. Oh, okay. That's Sorry. all. This one is good. That's all. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, man. Punch it out. There Love you the show. Go. He needed to know of that. you do. <laughs> Why don't we take a break? Yeah, right. Where's our food? Where is our grub? Here no it comes down here. the hall right now. Oh, ah, good. I see him. It's walking. It's being walked down the hall. The Swiss cheese perverts at it again. No way. Yep. I thought he was in jail. We got the story, and, the and fa- we have the exclusive story. And uh, we might be late to this because you know of the internet. So a lot of people have seen this by now, but the fake chef on uh, local TV. Yeah, yeah he's just, great. We got to. I gotta, heard about it, but I didn't see the clip. Oh, it's hilarious. He, he makes them. Anytime you make the fucking news look like a the, the assholes they are. <laughs> they're, they're just a bunch of idiots. The local news. They just yeah. assume everything in front of them is has is, to be real. And it's so <laughs> obvious. This guy is just. <laughs> playing them just fucking with them <laughs> we got two videos well we got the montage but then you I, I didn't see the one where it's the whole segment yeah I like the whole segment better there's also another video that's related the yo-yo guy you see I, we haven't played that on the oh, show yeah, but it's I've several seen that. years old yeah I saw that a while ago what was the yo-yo guy again he pretended he was a yo-yo expert and he went on the news and, and how bad he, was his yo-yo it was terrible <laughs> horrible and how did the news handle it they handled it like like there was not like he was still an expert like oh. he ended the segment as if he was still. Even though, yeah. where do you do this? Even that, even though that's old, we should play a little of that after the break too. It's so good. All right. Who's that old guy over there? Uncle Paul, Uncle Paul, with the creepy old guy stare. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Paul, now he's coming over here, slowly limping down the hall. It's too late now, cause here comes Uncle Paul. Show you how to make a big boy love you. On today's episode, Uncle Paul reminisces about his favorite photograph. Yeah, that's Teddy. That's Teddy and his little brother. The one on the other side's the girl. She's kind of tomboyish. She likes to play basketball, have her socks taken off. Coochie coo, you tickle him in a tub. Oh, Uncle Paul, my feet are dirty. You wash them, get them in a tub, clean their feet good. Take your shorts off. Let me kiss your toes. Mm. Oh, yeah, they all had to stay in my bed because they all had bed bugs in their cribs. They come in here so there's no bed bugs. And then them goddamn parents are accusing me, saying, how come he ain't walking right? I don't know. I didn't do nothing. Bunch of lies. Those damn Dana tests. They said my Dana was on the boy's hiney. I don't know what that means. Who's that old guy over there? Uncle Paul. And now, another bedtime story with Jim Brewer. Lars gives a call. God, this is like 98, something like that, 99 maybe. And he goes, um, dude, what are you doing this? I said, I'm playing down the village. fucking hang out. I'm going to meet up with some friends. It's going to be great. On the way over, we're in a cab. We cabbed it, and some kid from NYU left his knapsack with all his books and notebooks. And So, you know what? I'll be a nice guy. How cool is be? Guy from Santa Live is going to send him back his books. And Well, this is a thorn in uh, Lars's ass. From the minute I get it. From the minute I get it, he's like, dude, what are you doing with the fucking nap? Get rid of the fuck. It's ridiculous. 
like a bag walking around with this fucking knapsack. So I'm 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 walking around with this thing. I said I'm gonna give it back. Why does the knapsack bother you? It's fucking stupid. Fuck that guy. He's, he's irresponsible. Fuck him. It'll teach him a lesson. He tears the knapsack off my back. I said, what are you doing? And he tosses it across the street, hits some chick in the leg, and it opens up and the bags go all over. And he's walking down the village going like this. There's your fucking knapsack, huh? Are we hanging fucking knapsack, huh? Huh? I'm like, Lars, what are you doing? Chill out. And he keeps getting my face. Are we hanging or what? I went, I don't know if I can live up to this. I talk a great game, but I don't know if I can live up to this status. <laughs> Stay tuned for more bedtime stories with Jim Brewer. Opie and Anthony are back on Sirius XM. If I knew where it was, I would take you there. Oh, I know there's no reason, Travis. I like it. Good morning, everyone. Opie Anthony, Jim Norton. Oh, yeah. On your radio dial. On your radio dial. Radio dial. Like that 90s. You like that grunge? Who doesn't, right? Like the grunge. I'm kind of trapped there. I kind of got trapped right there in the 90s. You did, huh? Yeah. That shit is old now. <laughs> oh, fucking classic rock now. That shit is old. Jesus H. Christ. That's like listening to the 70s when we were in the 90s. I know. Or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm talking it about. It is, right? Yeah, 70s, 90s. Now, now, now. <clears throat> All right, we're done with the Oscars. We don't need to talk about the Oscars anymore. This yes. woman in Japan is 116 fucking years oh, old. She looks like a sucker fish. <laughs> no, 116. Her kids, her two kids are in their 90s. Man. And her husband, she got married in 19... Uh, she was born in 1898. Got married like 1916 or something, or 1918. Wow. Her husband died in 1931. Man. Wow. That's her? Yeah. That's not bad for 116. She's like a man. Yeah. And she said, like, a good night's sleep every night. She gets eight hours, and that oh, fucking boy. depresses me. That's why I'm thinking of it. Oh, Jimmy. Long, I think it'd be cool to be 116 as long as you could still dream. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And your what, dreams, tomorrow? you must be rocking so, still. Oh. Still doing stuff. I think so. What does she do? Does she, like, have tea She's every construction day? construction worker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really weird. She smokes yeah. cigarettes. <laughs> she takes it in the ass. <laughs> I guess she. Uh, What's yeah, her she, big thing? Because they always have to talk about their their daily life and what they do. Yeah. on a daily basis. Well, she sleeps a lot. That's pretty much it. Eight hours. Eight night, hours isn't a lot. Eight hours. Well, yeah. I guess for old people, eight hours is a lot. What's her thing? They have to talk about her thing. Like and she gets, every uh, day she still. I, yeah. She, she insists that her oh, favorite God. meat is sushi. Oh boy. Particularly yeah. mackerel. Oh, she looks God, like a, and now she looks brutal. like a mackerel. Right. <laughs> Look at her face. She right. looks like a fucking mackerel. On vinegar steamed rice. She only eats it once a month, though. Oh, she only has it once a month. Uh, God, but if you're one six, if you're 116, you eat that shit every day. Why are you waiting chicken. once a month to have one right. of your favorite meals? 116, man. She's seen a few things. Oh my God. Would you? I mean, you know. Oh my God. She remembers the First World War. Yeah. What do you think's worse? <laughs> Her, uh, for JJ. <laughs> Oof. Oh. <laughs> or, or. <laughs> oh, the back door? Or. Oh, which? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think which one. Oh. Oh, the smell? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Now that makes sense. Okay. Wow. See, my shit's too inside. It sucks. Because <laughs> you don't want to be mean. No. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? You what do you mean? What do you mean? Nothing. It, it, it comes out eventually. Relax. All well, comes out in the water. What else about this? Uh, yeah, what's no, the, the problem? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest authenticated person ever was Jean blah, 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 blah of France who died at the age of 122. Wow. Died at the age of 103. We're gonna get. A, we're gonna have a lot of hundred year olds now. So yeah. Oh yeah. 
with the medical technology. I've been in and out of a few homes uh, lately, and, and you see them, man. They're way oh, up there. They're in their 90s. Yeah. Still doing all right, too. Walking the hallways. Crazy. They're only there because they're, you know, their their families finally said enough. Get uh, families had it. Yeah, because you can tell they're they're still all right, but you can only be around them for so long. And, and finally, go really, <laughs> yeah, really, we're putting you over here for a while. Enough of you, <laughs> where yes. you'll be among other people your age. It'll be yeah. good. <laughs> oh yeah, play some pinochle. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the bingo. In those bingo, places. yeah, a lot, still? Of, a lot of bingo. Hey, let's uh, look at the TV chef. Oh, yeah. That pranked everybody. Is this uh, relatively new? Uh, it I, happened over Christmas. But and what uh, what local TV news channel fell for this? Uh, he went to five different morning shows in Wisconsin and Illinois. How did he get uh, booked? Well, apparently it's the same people. <clears throat> what do you mean? Look at our local news. Yeah. I, I would assume it would be very easy to get yourself booked on a local TV news show. Yeah, I'm trying to figure show. out like, how you go about it. You got to have a good scam, and he had a good scam in this case. And he said he had this book, and he made a fake uh, cover for the book. Because in one of the videos, it's hilarious because he had a book signing that he was promoting yeah. at Barnes and Noble, <laughs> and he said, "Well, I got to cancel the, the book signing because the books didn't come books in. Books didn't come in yet, <laughs> right?" Uh, I want to cancel the book signing. So what does he put out like a press release thing and send it to the? Sure, he probably has somebody call, or he probably calls because he's not famous, so he could call right. and saying, "Hey, my client," even though he's the same guy. I mean, it's pretty good to be able to get that far, right? It's him and this other guy who are also behind the yo-yo guy from a couple years ago. Yeah, they created the found footage festival. So this is all trying just to promote their found footage festival. Mm, what's that? It's just like a it's a film fest full of. That's so much alliteration. Found footage. Yes. It's like where they first started playing the uh, the Winnebago Man. Oh, okay. Like where they find tapes that have been circulating oh, everywhere, okay. and they make a whole film festival. Where of it. is this? Um, Winnebago Man. I, uh, if you have never seen that, that is, the, that is really fucking really good. Accoutrement. All right, let's uh, look at the uh, TV chef that was pranking the local news. Do you want to look at the montage or the full segment? Um, I like the full segment just because you get all right, how full segment, it and is. then we'll fill in the blanks because I, I I saw the montage one. Okay, well, I got some thoughts on the montage one. Oh, good. Or or my favorite parts of it. it. Yeah. All right, here we go. Something in the kitchen. Well, I'm not cooking. You're lucky because I'm actually not cooking. But tis the season <laughs> for get-togethers, and more often than not, that. It translates into leftovers. So this morning, you're in luck. Chef Chef Keith Gerke is here, author of Leftovers Right, Making a Winner of Last Night's Dinner. Pretty good title, That's right? That's a great book title. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, pause. Uh, leftovers are my... I swear to you, I would be suspicious already. Right away. Why aren't they right? suspicious? He's got a chef like hat an on. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Leftovers right. But I think he's purposely <laughs> trying to look like an idiot. Oh yeah. He's not oh, like yeah. he's not trying to blend in too much. No. He wants it perfectly obvious that, that he's, he's goofing. He's goofing on. Yeah, he wants it to be completely absurd. Right. Thing, my my mother, Mama Gurky, grew up making creative, fun leftovers, and uh, you know, nine times out of ten, you're throwing leftovers away, or yeah. I feed them to my yeah. dog. I got yeah. dog, little dog champion oh. fan, Fable Little Star, and right. she loves right. them. She's a you Fable know what? Little she doesn't star. deserve them. Your family deserves the leftovers. So. But sometimes it can be like, oh, the same turkey over and over. Exactly. So, so you're getting creative here. Let's get started here. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> mashed potatoes, boring, right? Right. How about a mashed potato ice cream cone? What that, do you think about that? That's fun. All right. So you just basically that's this fun. is. It's simple. You could have your daughter do this or whoever. Uh, you put a little scoop of gravy. It can be room temperature because your hand kind of warms it up. It's like a, a drumstick almost, you know, like one of those frozen things. And you just put in some of this. But the fun part comes with the toppings. So I have to go ahead and put some. These are your sprinkles. I think of this as like a like Sunday. Like corn sprinkles? Yeah, okay. so put on some okay. corn sprinkles. Corn sprinkles. Come on. Your cranberry cherry on top. Oh, She's putting fun. corn. But to get the kids involved, too, we talk about getting them involved. Caught in the this is an easy way to do it. She's just line and sinker. She's just buying this. Why would you buy this? Because she's in it. She doesn't know. Like, she's right. been told this is the segment, oh, and now man. she's in it. <laughs> she's holding an ice cream cone with mashed potatoes and in gravy it. in it. And warm. And your hand, warm he's at room gravy. temperature because your hand will warm your it up. Hand will warm it up. <laughs> room temperature gravy. And then she's trying to find the hook on it. Right. Oh, it is good. 
good because when you could get the kids involved, the kids, the kids involved. involved, that she's putting her what on top? Her corn, cran- her corn cranberry, and her cranberry for her, cherry. Her corn sprinkles and her cranberry, uh, cranberry cherry. You know cherry. That looks good. Awful no. is that? How and awful! Just, and you put he, he has like a, one of those little cones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you put the gravy in first. So it's just now you eat the mashed potatoes, then you just have an ice cream cone. You're not full getting of warm to the gravy. gravy. Yeah. Yeah. No. Just a drink. <laughs> not even warm gravy, room what, temperature. Yeah, when, uh, you put the, into the, when you put the gravy on top. Right. Yeah. No, you have to start with the gravy. You're soaking into warm the up. cone. Right. All right, let's continue. This is great. How fun. But to get the kids involved, too, we talk about getting them involved so often in the kitchen, and this is an easy way to do so it. So important. And, you know, so one important. thing, I, I let's talk turkey. I okay. mean, we, we're talking Thanksgiving, we're talking turkey. How cute that is. And I think a lot of people, they don't <laughs> like turkey, because what I hear over and over is when they, when they you know, microwave it, and when it has the smell, it kind of it's like, you know, you take off the lid, and it's like, who farted, or what, you know, and it's like, <laughs> oh, it, what it is, I found, there's bacteria that forms like a flatulent smell, or kind of like a bathroom <laughs> smell, but it's fine, oh it's perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> He's just... And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Who eats turkey that smells like shit? Smells oh, yeah. like flatulence. There's a, there's a thing on there. <laughs> flatulence mm. like a bathroom smell. Mm. Oh, that's, that's great. Really <laughs> safe. You okay. just put it in enough stuff. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it just covers that up. Yeah. Okay. Case, case in point. We've got right here. You've heard of ants on a log. The, right. Uh, Kindergarten favorite with celery. Here we have ants on a leg. A club That's so cute. Scoop on that, yeah, isn't it? that is really yeah. cute. Why don't you tr- take a bite of these? These are actually good. If you get a cranberry in the uh, uh, in the uh, bite, uh-huh. it's just, she's eating. You know, because then you got your mashed potatoes, and it's all in one. Oh, Kids yeah. have a lot of them. Oh. It's just convenient. Here's my favorite. The- it's a, it's uh, a it's a drumstick, a turkey drumstick that you just spread mashed potatoes on and, and cranberries and, and put, put cranberries, cranberries on, on top. It. Yeah. Oh. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She because, doesn't look like she's enjoying it. <laughs> because his theory is that if you take the turkey out of the fridge and put the mashed potatoes and cranberries on top, of yeah. it, it'll remove the flatulence <laughs> <The> smell. <laughs> <laughs> smell. <laughs> she's just buying it. The bathroom smell. From the bacteria. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she just eats it. We yeah. got to get this guy in the show somehow. Oh, yeah. This one's a little fun. You know, remember hand turkeys in kindergarten? Right. Tracing your hand. Right. Let's do that on flatbread. Let's create right. a fun turkey sandwich. So I got a marker there. We got scissors. You just I don't <laughs> love marker. Hand. Oh, cool. Yes. Okay. And okay. You're the marker on the this, bread you're eating. Inside this it's a sharpie. So and she goes, oh, cool. Can't stress enough. You don't want to ingest the, the marker. Don't. Yeah, no, yeah. We're not. We're not recommending that. And safety is important too. Like, uh, why don't you go ahead and take your scissors, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> They're cutting <laughs> cool. pita with yeah. scissors. Uh, yeah, you, you can't. I mean, I do stress. We have a motto in the Gurkey family: accidents stink. You don't want to have an accident. So True. when you're doing kids, you know, you know the motto. here, you got to be. Tr- in the family, accidents stink. <laughs> that's, that's a good family motto to have. Yeah, to, in the Gurky family. Uh, the Gurky family. Gurky. What type of coincidence would it be oh. if somebody who dedicated his life to turkey leftovers actually had the last name of Gurky? Gurky. Right. Right. Is that his, what is Gurky? He said it that just it just rhymes with turkey. turkey. Yeah, he said it's the Gurky family. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But. Oh, this is the best. She's cutting the, out her her <laughs> pita bread. Well, you know what they always say. Turkey hand. Accidents whatever. stink. Stink, right. Oh, well, it's a good family motto. <laughs> right. It's, it's very, very good. Right. And kids, you know, uh, with kids here, you got to be sure that be careful. Yeah, you, yeah, you can actually cut it for them if you want. Now, <laughs> you microwave the turkey um, to heat it up, mm-hmm. and uh, you're going to actually make two of these, so you can have a top and a bottom. Oh, it's like a sandwich. Yeah, and a lot of chefs don't like microwaves. I <gasps> think they're fine. They're a chef's best friend. You know, they they're are. Really <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah, it's a time <laughs> saver. That's <laughs> awesome. such a great fucking goop. I think they're fine. <laughs> and she's just running with it. Oh yeah, she is. She's in it, dude. She doesn't know what to do. Yeah. She's got to make it work. No, yeah. she's she's completely believing. Yeah, she's dedicated to it. That is yeah. suspicious when the chef comes on advocating for microwave. Right. Right. Some chef's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're fine. They're a chef's best friend, you know. They're <laughs> real life. It's what most of yeah, have to it's use. a time yeah. saver. Yeah. All these recipes She's work cutting out her life. turkey hand. Um, and so what you do is uh, this oh. mine's a little sloppy here this morning, but too. you'll get the idea. Okay. Um, and then what we do is uh, let's scoop on some of the turkey. Here's yeah. my hand. Okay. And then you put on your hand. 
Generally, okay. you'd want to get more marker off than that, but right, we'll do right. our best. Just for <laughs> yeah. get it. Okay. Okay. Let me show you what the finished product is, because you can really have fun with this. That's so cute. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, like some of these frilly toothpicks, two eyes. Right. I had to do this in the car, so it's not perfect. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can be real creative with this and, and just have fun and pour some gravy on it. Go, but go crazy. what a fun way, and again, instead of throwing the food away, stretching uh, uh, that food dollar and really making it that work. Food and getting your dollar. Kids excited about right. Exactly, <laughs> yes. All right, so how it's many a horrible looking sandwich. I had to do it. In the Bob car. Noble at one o'clock is going to be <laughs> signing copies of his new book. Actually, yeah, actually, I should say I just checked my email before, and I might have to cancel the signing because the books have not arrived. Oh well, okay. <laughs> never mind I, could I mention my charity real quick? Sure, absolutely. It's called the Leftovers Project. We're asking. It's like a canned food drive, but with leftovers. So you bring your leftovers, <laughs> a week old or less, yeah. down, and we reheat them as a participating WalMarts. And just we ask if you bring oh, a couple no, of containers, oh, you're losing it. Sometimes they get legs yeah, and yeah, walk yeah, away. Right, right. But um, that's a great yeah, idea. So it's uh, leftoverproject.biz. The book is called <laughs> Leftovers biz. Right Make a Winner <laughs> of Last Night's Dinner. <laughs> Dot biz. <laughs> no one has the dot biz. Why would a charity but, register a dot biz? Is she, is she even oh, listening great. at this point? He's asking people to bring their right. leftovers to Walmart. Oh. To Walmart. <laughs> participating Walmart. He's smart to say participating oh, Walmart. That's great. For his dot biz. Dot biz. <laughs> it's almost over this one. Yeah, Great idea. so it's uh, leftoverproject.biz. <laughs> the book is called Leftovers Right, Make a Winner of Last Night's Dinner. Look for that at bookstores. Thanks for being here this morning. Thanks so much for having me. We'll put more information on fox6now.com. There you have it. Rob? Yes? You would enjoy this book. He's got like 300 recipes oh on fun goodness. things for kids and what to do with leftovers. I love that ants on a leg. That is clever. Right? That's good stuff. Anything <laughs> to get the kids, especially my girls, to eat. Yeah. Eat real food. <laughs> oh, God, they're trying to, oh trying my to God. chat up the segment a little, you know? Eat, eat real food as if the oh, nutritional God. value Show in mashed potatoes in an ice cream cone. <laughs> Show Jimmy the montage because the blunder... The that, So this is great. the guy that went on five different uh, local. Right. This is my favorite line. By the way, shows. was when he goes, "I had to do this in the car." Right. <laughs> <laughs> the montage, because this is the video that's going everywhere. It's on. We're playing it off uh, Deadspin today. Yeah, it's everywhere, and it's yeah. It is funny, man. I love this. It is a few days past Thanksgiving, but chances are good you probably still have a fridge full of all those leftovers. So this morning you're in luck, Chef. Chef Keith. Gerke is here, author of Gerke. Leftovers Right, Making a Winner of Last Night's Dinner. I'm self-taught. I did not sure. go to culinary school, and I'm kind of unorthodox. Uh, people compare. Are you familiar with uh, G.G. Allen? Do you know he threw his own shit at the audience. He shoved bananas up his ass <laughs> and shit it out into the crowd. <laughs> oh, I can't get enough of the local news getting G. G. hammered. G.G. Allen. <laughs> this guy's brilliant. He's the G.G. Allen it, of leftovers. Right. In this montage uh, clip, you're going you're gonna to hear some of the stuff we just played, but it's okay because it, yeah. it moves around. Deal with it. Yeah, just deal with it, please. <laughs> what do you think about that? That's fun. All right. You put a little scoop of gravy. It can be room temperature because your hand kind of warms it up. <laughs> it's like a, a drumstick almost, you know, like one of those frozen so things. So disgusting how it would in soak the, into the There's a the, statistic uh, that, that around the, the holidays, around, around Christmas, especially between Thanksgiving and Christmas, one of the highest suicide rates, and uh, I think part of that is because of the stress of what are you going to do with these leftovers? <laughs> <laughs> I recently went vegetarian, so some of the uh, recipes in here aren't, aren't vegetarian, it's fine. Okay. For me, it's like part health reasons, but yeah. then also you read things like uh, the average person eats like a pound and a half of feces a year. <laughs> no, thank you. There's a Judas Priest song called uh, A Tur. <laughs> I love it because they're little asides. Right. Yeah. Like he says them in a way that the the anchor or the the, the news person doesn't really have to acknowledge right. them and right. and discuss it because it's just a quick aside. Right. And it's done under the guise of a legitimate right. Of course. And he's uh, oh. has so much else to tell you sure. that he, he can't stop after saying that. Right. Point. He's getting out some great lines. Right. right. And he's not rushing to get it. Like he's not filling it up with lines. No. no like he's no, just sprinkling no. them in. Sprinkling so them back to the cooking.
<laughs> you. There's a Judas Priest song called uh, A Turbo Lover. Well, I okay. call this Turbo Gravy. It's a spoof on that. And it's basically taking the gravy <laughs> soup to the next level. Why don't you give me a hand here? This is what you do. You're okay. basically just going to put it, put like some of your ham in here. Ham in the blender. In. I want you to scoop a little bit of the pumpkin pie. Try not to get the crust in too much. And I'm going to put in a little <laughs> extra oh, corn. Ham, here. Okay. green and beans, then, like, corn. Even, like, in a blender. In a blender. In a blender. Even if your mashed potatoes pie. have butter, they're okay? Yeah, it's Mashed fine. potatoes in the blender. And then add more gravy. Wow. Oh, oh my God. God. And hasn't he already said he's a vegetarian, so he probably can't drink this? Right. <laughs> and he goes, she goes, is it okay if the mashed potatoes have butter on them? And he goes, oh, it's fine. It's all going to come out in the wash. In the wash. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and then he just dumps a bunch of That's gravy in the blender with ham and green beans <laughs> and, and corn. corn. <laughs> oh and, and this is fucking disgusting. What a bad suggestion to, oh. for leftovers. Who would buy this? Uh, uh. <laughs> Oh, gravy. Of course, yes. we need more gravy. Yes. Make some gravy. I'm using um, and then uh, milk. He's putting milk in with healthy menu. Okay. Okay. Some okay. corn sprinkles here. and of course, don't forget your cranberry. You, you could use two percent for a heart I healthy always do menu. A wrap. That's kind of a uh, that's, that's easy. easy. That's yeah, like it's like guys, it's, thanks. Uh, giving all the leftovers in the blender. Like a a beatbox. <laughs> He makes well, her do a beatbox. Well, holidays are here, and it's time for cheer, but leftovers have you feeling fear. Go to the fridge, <laughs> take out the container. You can make your leftovers even greater. Wrap is great, wrap is great. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like Jamba Juice, eat your heart out, right? You just take a funnel that you get at a hardware store. Jamba Juice, eat your heart out. Eat your heart out. He's <laughs> blending fucking <laughs> meat. <laughs> leftovers. He's making ham and pumpkin pie juice. <laughs> <laughs> your heart out. <laughs> like Jamba Juice, why didn't we think of that? Yeah, oh, right. damn. <laughs> Take a funnel that you get at a hardware store, okay. put it in an old milk jug, store. and this will just put He's it in here. pouring this disgusting concoction. Or more in this milk jug. That's six a meals. Long time to drain. And this is so fun. My daughter's uh, spirit and Curtis Ann love these foods. Cur my daughter's Maybe not spirit as we'd like. and Curtis just Ann. Just try a little bit of that. <laughs> But I can show you, you have... A <laughs> he made the news anchor drink. And now it, all her daughter's, daughter's names are Spirit and Curtis and Ann. Curtis Ann. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Try a little bit of that. But I can show you, you have a finished... Uh, milk jug here. Oh and the, my! The fat does go to the top, so you gotta so you can give skim it, it a good. Off. Oh. <laughs> Come meet Chef Keith today. You are going to be at Barnes and Noble at one o'clock. He's going to be signing copies of his new book. Actually, yeah, actually, I should say I just checked my oh, email before. What a great I book cover he made! Right. It, it really looks authentic. Oh, well, okay, never mind that. My daughter won't even try this stuff without the uh, without the whipped cream. Like oh. you're going to have whipped Look cream. Look at her face. Over. Look at the anchor's face. <laughs> <laughs> He tips so the whole sorry. table over. Okay. God, um, We're going to throw things TV. out to Mark for a check of our weather. <laughs> and she goes to weather. <laughs> Please let me see. Please let me see the fucking the, the table tipping. It's so great. He's trying to get whipped cream on it, and he knocks the whole table the whole over. Table oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> she goes everything to, goes to the blender, the fucking, everything falls over. Found footage fest. This guy's and great. Look, yes. at, look, at the, look at the reporter's face, too, because she just had a drink of it. Oh, yeah, she had yeah. some? She's disgusted. Oh, disgusting. And he wants to put whipped cream on him. And he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's falling over. It's always funny. Yeah. Do you think he does that on purpose? I'm oh, not yeah, sure. That was, this one. That, oh, he definitely did that on purpose. <laughs> Let's see. He oh, might, I'm he, sorry. Absolutely. Let me say it. Without the, uh, without the whipped cream. Like, oh. you're going to have whipped cream <laughs> left over, right? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. He worked that oh leg. Of course. We're going to throw things out to Mark for a check of our weather. <laughs> Sounds like some great recipes there to try out with your leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's He's great. just trying to help her out. That's you really know. funny, man. That is uh, hilarious. We'll tweet that out. Oh. Yeah, we're tweeting that out. And then do you also want to see the Yo-Yo Master? So is this the same guy? It's the same group. I'm not, I think Same group be, of guys? It may be the same guy, but it's the same group, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen the Yo-Yo Master yet. Okay, uh, this, o and A show on Twitter. We'll tweet those uh, videos out to you yeah. right now. All these videos are going out. This is actually from 2010. We just never played it. Okay. Welcome back to Good Morning Force. And it's the same thing. It's a local news show. Yeah. And this guy is on the show. I think him. Well, I don't know if it's the same guy or not. Uh, but he's claiming to be a yo-yo master. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he's going to show the news show his yo-yo tricks. His yo-yo skills. Yeah.
States. It is finally Friday morning. Kay Strauss is back with us again from Zip Zap. We thank you for joining from us Zip this Zap. morning. You've got your hands full of yo-yos right now. You yes. got to what? Four yo-yos per hand, right? Right. And what I do is, uh, it's called uh, the Blue Flying Angel. Okay. Do you, I'm, and it's like, do, uh, I, do I need to get out of the way for this? Yeah, <laughs> you do. He has um, a yellow hat and oh, fucking you know, what suspenders. What I'll do is, the kids, I'll get into the room and the kids will be running around right. and they'll be all excited. And so I, I try to start things off on their level and, and try to hook them with something like a rap. Okay. So it's, uh, and it's kind of clever because it includes me. Okay. Um, oh. And it goes, hey, they're up in the sky. It's the uh, K Strauss, the yo yo guy. And then I do the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I get them going, and I get them into it. Okay. And so when once I do oh, no, that, he's... they are ready to learn. Okay, so you're they ready, ready to, to learn. I'm, I'm, Absolutely. I tell you what, I'm gonna get out of the way here. All right. <laughs> go ahead and take it away. And uh, I usually have like a headpiece for right. this. No, no, uh, for effect. Okay. Because I act like I'm in a uh, blue angel. Okay. So I say uh, air traffic. Uh, control, we are ready for takeoff. <laughs> All right, 10 4 guys, He's let's not roll. Yo yoing. <laughs> so you get that one going? He's just spinning in a circle, his right hand. With the string. Oops. Lost Oops. one. And he's spinning and a bunch of them in a circle. They're not yo-yoing. <laughs> but if you just listen to it, he starts by swinging his other hand, and he drops one right away, and he just goes, oops, oops lost oops. one. <laughs> he just keeps going. And, and now he's just spinning them on a string. <laughs> right. the, the, no yo-yoing. The, yeah. the blue no angel. yo-yoing. This yeah. the blue angel. Well, he is the blue angel. Yes. Oops. Lost one. <laughs> and then uh, we're going and we get worrying and we're like, all right, everybody, let's take it down to the ground and we'll get into a Huey. <laughs> and we get going. Swinging them both over his head and <laughs> spin <laughs> he's spinning her. Everything's getting tangled. And now he's just spinning them both again watch <laughs> over his head. All right, everyone, we're going to switch it off here and let's bring it back home for a clean landing. 10 4. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he gets up. Oh, <laughs> what a terrible segment. That was horrible. What a terrible. What do you think that guy's thinking? He's got to be standing there going, Oh, this guy's oh my God, this segment is, right. is bombing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All the yo-yos are stuck together and stuck to his fingers. <laughs> he can't get them untangled. <laughs> and he whispers, What should I do? What should I do? Is that what he whispered yes, to him? What yes. should I do? Listen, he goes, Wait. What should I do? Oh, that's that? brilliant. Yes, he he listen, 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 listen. When? Listen. Listen again. What should I do? You okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I, got, I got very dizzy. Okay. <laughs> you want to continue where you're at? Or can you do that? Okay, because you've got all eight yo-yos in there. But... <laughs> Like a little kid, you want to continue where you are, and he starts aggressively shaking his head, yeah. and then he shows his fingers to the guy, and all the yo-yos are stuck together. Wait, which guy said, what do you want to do? The guy, the guy on the left, the news guy. Oh. Yeah. What do you want to do? It, yeah. But, uh, actually, we got seven now, so, uh, but... Uh, Honestly, I, I think I'm going to give up some of the yo-yo stuff, because I don't have the muscle, muscle memory. Okay. Muscle. Well, anyway, but uh, you do uh, go out to schools and uh, wow, talk a pile a little bit more about the zip zap and what they do. Like you said, uh, this is actually for uh, it's it's, it's kind a, of a, it's, it's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. <laughs> They're based in Minneapolis. Uh, I met them at the Burlington Yo Yo Championship in Wisconsin. Okay, um, <laughs> and they've just been sending me around, and I've been in schools. Uh, tomorrow, I'm all the way down in uh, Arkansas. Okay, well, again, uh, thank you for taking the time. You were in Omaha oh. yesterday, so you've been on the road quite a bit. And of course, right. we'll put the uh, information about uh, ZipZap on our uh, website, and of course, it's ZipZapLLC.com, correct? Uh, <laughs> ZipZap, yes, LLC.com. So uh, again, we'll put all that information on our website. We're gonna draw to find out who is gonna be winning uh, barbecue for Richard's Hog Wild. That's coming your way next oh, time. Good morning. This sounds awful. Uh, the, uh, and I, I that's on Deadspin wow. as well.
But yeah, we'll, we'll and tweet we're, that we're out. tweeting it out too. All right, good. Is he now? Is this guy uh, with the chef, or they just independently did this stuff? No, they're all together. Oh, they are. I mean, this happened a couple years ago. Okay, but it's all part of they all they organized God, this uh, fucking good film festival. Together. Uh, what a set of balls to no to kidding do that to carry through with just it. Just crash and burn on light TV yes, like that. Yes, oh my God. <laughs> You're just bombing. And the, the Let's get the word guy. out. I want to talk to these guys. Let's we'll see if we can find them. Yeah. The yo-yo guy looks so sad. Yeah, he definitely mm -hmm. looks sad. He's like, I He think, wants to be good. I think I'm going to give up some of the yo-yo stuff. <laughs> the Huey. He, he, lost his, we'll he, the lost, Huey. he lost his muscle memory. <laughs> muscle memory. <laughs> For yo yo oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, join the Twitter account. O and A show, please. Oh, yeah. All this visual crap, we uh, tweet out the links immediately as we yeah. talk about them. All right? Gotta love it. Yeah. And we'll uh, be back. Wait, I got a crazy travel story when we get back. Uh-oh. Fucking crazy. What happened? Welcome to Attainable Dating Solutions. Video dating for the unwashed and socially inept. Profile FAT3039. Lady Die. Hey, my name is Lady Die from the retarded Laverne Shirley. The only thing I love more than the bottle is the dick. I'm looking for a man to go on a cruise with. Okay, a very nice muscular man has to be well endowed. Okay, am I doing all right so yeah, far? Great, great. Okay, um, and uh, to have sex with on a balcony. Yeah. For the right man, I'm willing to give oral on a balcony, even though it might be against your instincts. I prefer somebody did not throw me off the balcony and bend me over and give me the old hee-ho. I'm into the following things. Water sports, ass play. I'd be willing to experiment with toys. Under the right circumstances, I would go both ways. So feel free to bring a friend. Call into the Opie and Anthony show, 866-WOW-1-WOW. That's 866-969-1969. And give me the right of my life. You think anybody's going to call back on that one? 100%. Call the Opie and Anthony show today. Lady Di does. Say what? Say what? The Opie and Anthony show is back on Sirius XM. Looks like we're going to get uh, the fake chef on the phone. He, he wrote you back, Roland? Very cool. So stick around for that. Uh, the videos we just played of the fake chef going on local news programs and bullshitting right. his way through some fine cooking segments. Anytime the media could be made to look as stupid as they are. Right. I'm in. Uh, by the way, uh, TMZ picked up our Jim Ross, um, Vince McMahon sharding story yeah, that's video. Very important. I want to thank TMZ for that. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's uh, some team bam, coverage. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Oh uh, yes, there, Sam. Jr. was happy that it made TMZ too. I got, you... an e I got an email back from him. Uh -oh. Really? He said that's some funny shit. <laughs> <laughs> how was how was his uh, his gig? It was good. I mean, it was definitely for wrestling fans, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. people really liked it. Yeah, but everybody had a blast. It got a little rowdy. Oh show. yeah. Did yeah. CM Punk show up in Chicago last night? <laughs> no. Oh wow. So that's real. Yeah. Hometown. What was it? Raw last night? I guess Monday yeah. Night Raw. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people were thinking maybe he would uh, show up. No, but they couldn't have any dead spots in the whole show because every time there was any dead spots, the fans just started screaming CM Punk. Oh name. really? Yeah. With a curse word, hopefully? I mean, they tried. Yeah. But, you know. I do like a good curse word chant when it's regular TV. Yes. You fucked up type of deal? Oh, you fucked up is you always good. You fucked up good. is a great one. She's got herpes? That's a good one. Yeah. So we, uh, you want to do this next? Wait, did oh, Jimmy has, goodness. oh, not Jimmy. Did no, don't. What? Oh, to travel? It's, you're not going to believe it if it's, I tell you. It's crazy. What? What happened? Uh, Fucking Kenny's got to back me up because he. you won't believe this is true. But I was I was traveling with... Oh, fuck, you get an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to tell what happened when we were traveling. How fucking cra I'm going through security, right? And I got my bags, and he got his. 
and we're standing there, right? And I get up to the fucking lady. Yeah. <laughs> and I hand over my fucking board and pass and, and driver's license. And she's looking at it and she's looking at me. And she goes, just nothing for a second, right? Yeah. I got my bags and stuff ready for the plane. All right. He's got his bags. We're all both ready for the try to get to the aircraft. Oh my There's going to be storms. This is the last chance we have. And she looks at the boarding pass and she goes, This isn't you. And inside, I'm like, What the fuck? I'm going through all these movies. Like, maybe this is something got switched in the hotel. <laughs> and I'm like, Ready for the plane. Holy and shit. all of a sudden. <laughs> Fucking, he handed me the wrong boarding pass. I had his. And I had to give it back to him and get mine. <laughs> back me up. <laughs> no, <laughs> back me up. That really happened. Oh. I mean, he's only telling you half the story. Oh, my God. Tell the other half. No. <laughs> well, you remember you woke up in the morning, you got dressed. Then we got in the car. Fuck yeah, and it was and a long a ride. Drive to the airport. Fuck yeah, I forgot about that. Then you got out of the car. That's right. Got I, your luggage out of the trunk. You remember I put the bags in the wrong order for a second? Yeah, that was crazy. Can't believe we made it back. It was cold. Fuck yeah. You know, we walked into the terminal. I made a mistake. Uh, I gave you my boarding pass and, and had yours. I knew you guys wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but then what about the other that. story with the luggage? <laughs> I don't know that one. No, like it didn't fit. Yes, it did. I know. Stop making stuff up. Oh. They said it wouldn't. But it did. Oh, fuck. He ain't lying. I said to the guy, will my luggage fit? And he goes, no, it won't. But I go, but did it fit on the way in? I told ah. him. And that cocksucker, it fit good. It did. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, they, fuck him then, right? They didn't want us to carry on. Why? I don't know. They wanted us to gate check. Yeah. This is great. So Fez had a meltdown last night. <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, you don't think that was a good story? Oh, God. The worst <laughs> story ever. God. It's like... Oh, just went on and on. No payoff. So Fez had a meltdown on the last run of Fez show, which was yesterday. We got a few clips that have been brought to our attention. That's uh, right. Ron and Fez, of course, noon on Raw Dog. Right. Yes, They're no longer are. with us on this here channel, but we still are very close uh, to Ron Bennington. Yes. And the gang. The Ron and Fez show. We're closer to the Ron and Fez show. Oh. And uh, Fezzy had a meltdown yesterday. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, boy. What was it about? Well, Sam I, the troublemaker. I it? have nothing to do with it. Who brought it to our why attention? Is this, why is this uh, listeners? Why is she suing her mom and dad? Is that the? She's a high school student. That's the Facebook story. Wow. No, no that's, she, that's a different one. one. She got thrown out of the house right. by her parents. I guess like two days before her birthday, they're saying she left. Yeah. she's eighteen All now, right. and they had paid her Catholic school tuition through the thirty first of December, and she's suing, saying they owe her for a new tuition. Mm -hmm. She seems like a spoiled brat. And I hear the school is not going to penalize her if mm. uh, she doesn't have the tuition. Like, they're going to let her go, like, to the school. Oh, right. But she's 18 now, so she's fucking, you're old enough to go to the military. You're old enough to get booted. Although, I don't know if your parents are responsible for tuition until you're 21 if they don't want to be. No, no, of course not. She needs a place to but stay. But under Obama, aren't they? No problem. For tuition? Hell oh, no. maybe not. Okay. Rooms available. I paid for my house. <laughs> I paid for every cent of my college. They weren't responsible oh, yeah. for anything. No, no, but I mean, there's a new oh, thing now with, with they Obama. Were. No, uh, I think what no, you're that's the, about that's is, the Obamacare. Yeah, they can still be covered under your parents' oh, you're health insurance. Right, right. As long but as not tuition. College. Oh, my God. I wish that was the case. A lot of people would be happy out there. Mm. A lot of us had to, had to pay for our own skewling. Skewling. Yeah, there was no tuition in the uh, School of Hard Knocks. Hell yeah, you're ass. not kidding. You know what? I paid blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> <laughs> did you? You bet Regular I did. Regular Joe? Yeah, you see these calluses? That's yeah. my tuition. That's your tuition Hey, carry right those there. bricks. You got it. That's my tuition. Yeah, Miss Fancy wants everything paid for. Yeah. Get yourself a ham sandwich. Get to work. <laughs> ham sandwich. Of course. So Ron and Fez. Oh, All right. milk. Fezzy had some kind of meltdown about what? Well, I guess he wasn't... What, what was this one about? Oh, shit. 
I guess he was told to stay away from a guest we had here yesterday for a town hall. Who was here yesterday? I think Seth MacFarlane. Oh, Seth MacFarlane. What time did he come? Uh, it was in the afternoon. Okay. No, oh, he's boring. I was <laughs> saying yeah, yesterday, I tweeted. We had him on the phone. He was boring. I, I, t I tweeted that uh, whoever taught him about redun uh, repetition comedy right. should literally be shot in the face. Taught who? <laughs> Seth MacFarlane. Why? Are you, you're not a fan of that? When they just what? fucking. I, I haven't heard this one yet. Oh. God, what? Right? What? what? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, that's like the time. <laughs> one time. One time. <laughs> that reminds me of the time. Oh, God, that family guy is unfucking watchable No, but they're quick with it, though. At least. Oh, all they're, right. That's just <laughs> They're it. quick with it, aren't they? There was a. Yesterday, one was on. It comes on right after I actually Seinfeld. Wa sorry. I, I actually now watch Family Guy again. I yeah. used to love Family Guy. I can't make believe I didn't. But like you, it, it got old oh, for me. Yeah. But now that you've done this bit on our show, yeah. I now watch again just waiting for that moment. It's that moment and then the one where they just repeat the same word over and over right because like there's a bit going on but then the cartoon eyes like you know they move around a oh, lot that makes God. it fun doesn't that make it fun no <laughs> i'm trying to remember what it was yesterday seinfeld comes on and then and then please Family remember so we can on. find the clip by the time i'm doing something and and then it uh mm. i look up just ready to throw something at the television because it's the same word being repeated 50 fucking times cool whip oh yeah, that was one of the famous ones. So yeah. Fezzi lost his mind yesterday. All right. Yeah. So I guess it was a Monday yesterday, right? <laughs> what, 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 what's wrong with him? What's uh, so what's so what's so hard? I, apparently, he doesn't feel like management respects him. Uh oh. They don't respect any of us. Oh, well, that's a good point, right they, there. They do not respect anyone that works here. I respect. <laughs> you want respect? I disagree. <laughs> I think they're particularly big fans oh. of our show. We've heard that they love the show. Like that. All right. Well, Why would they maybe lie? it's time to show it a little bit. Why would they lie? Mm -hmm. Oh. So Fezzi thinks management doesn't respect him or something like that. Something to that effect. He walked around as Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. At least you know Anthony respects him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, respect. Does he understand he might have brought a little this on to himself? What were some of the other things he's done in recent memory? Well, which is great for a radio show, but when you got, you know, suits walking around, it's gonna your 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 stock in respectability is right. gonna drop. It goes down a little. It could, yeah. He did walk around as Hitler. Yeah. He dyed his mustache like a rainbow. Right. He wore a wig for no particular reason for about six to eight months. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even though he had a full head of hair. This shit's great. Come on. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and he did it all off the air, as well yeah. as on the air. So, right. like, he would spend his days walking around the halls, like, like with a wig on, or yeah, yeah, with his Hitler mustache. I mean, he literally came in to the opiate and to this show, yes, right. dressed as Hitler and talking like Hitler. <laughs> It's terrible. Hitler did so many negative things. Well, and, and this bi this business is run by the jazz, so not the best thing to do. Maybe well, not. Well, a lot of jazz in this business. Jeez. So uh, do we have clips of Fez losing it yesterday? Uh, yes. Oh, what was this about? Seth MacFarlane? Yes, Does so he need a setup? I guess he couldn't. I don't really know because uh, Iraq cut the first clip. But the setup is, I, to my understanding, because I didn't hear the very beginning, he couldn't go near Seth MacFarlane yesterday because they thought... He might harass him or something. I don't and really know. This is due to some previous thing. And what what yeah. is this based on? That I guess he's gone up to guests in the past, right? Uh -huh. And some people have not liked his behavior. Why isn't he just trying to book him for Ron's show? Yeah, I think that's what he's trying to do, right? But I don't think that they like they like things done by protocol, right? So they don't want just random uh, personnel here they approaching think, guests. And, they think he's crazy, right? Well, okay. We were talking about the uh, way for no coding this. And the... I think they think he's crazy, and and they're a little worried about his approach. Yeah, they probably don't. Yeah, they they definitely wouldn't trust Fez to be in the talent department because the talent department specializes in dealing with talent. You think he eats babies, Fez? Mm -hmm. Oh wow! I've never seen him eat, so I don't know for sure one way or the other. He doesn't eat in front of people. Not in front of me, so oh, he could okay. be eating babies. All right, so why don't we uh, play this clip here? Why are you mad? Is it 
Let me guess. Is it Shelby? Is it Chris? Is it Vito? Who's mad? made you mad today, Fez? Oh, it's people down the hallway again. I was asked not to mention any names, but got an email from Don Wicklin. Well, then you just mentioned the name. <laughs> oh, no, this is uh, who passed it along to me. Got an email from Wiki, got a phone call from Wiki, and I'm more than a little upset that I have been told to stay away from the fishbowl later on today. Uh, keep away. Don't go down there, I guess, doing my lurking thing. <laughs> well, I think that that's nice that you heard that from Wiki in advance this time. No, it just means someone else is talking about me down the hallway again. Chris? Do you think it's Chris? No, I know it's not Chris. I Shelby, know. Vito? Who is it? No, it's not any of them. I'm not going to mention this person's name. but uh, Is it me? Apparently, I'm <laughs> such a plague in this building. That uh, I, the certain areas need to be Fez quarantined. Mm. You see, this is anti-gay. I totally see it as anti-gay. What? Yeah. Don't don't let the gay guy go near the fishbowl later on today. He might put it on his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Why joke. does everything have to be gay? <laughs> I've asked myself the same yeah. question in the mirror many times. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it a gay thing? <laughs> to get us anything oh, to do God, it. enough. No, I don't think so. No, I would say that the odds of it being an anti-gay thing are zero. Right. They just don't want him near big A-list guests. Yeah, I guess he lingers. I don't know. He I've never seen him do makes, it. Maybe some would say he makes uh, guests uncomfortable. Has he made a guest uncomfortable? I don't know. I don't work in a department, but Don doesn't just send out emails willy-nilly. Why else would he say that? Oh. Unless that person is making someone uncomfortable. Have Why you else heard to tell him to stay away? Well, it could just be the talent department, though. It might not be, uh, might not be a guest, per se. That's true. I don't think... Uh, I think the talent department doesn't want radio personalities approaching the guests. Which makes because, sense. Because there are a lot of them in this, in this building, right. and it would be a little overwhelming. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. Imagine if every host just went up to right, the guests and right. said, "Why don't there you my show?" There yeah. has to be a protocol. Like imagine if every show just opened the door when they saw a guest and said, "Yo," and, and said their name with some kind of familiarity. Oh, uh, it'd be crazy. Yeah. Look who we've gotten in over the years oh. because of oh. that <laughs> little tactic. That's <laughs> true. All right, uh, does this continue? Because this is boring so far. You don't like it? <laughs> it's boring. This, <laughs> this clip is going to turn you around. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Email and a phone call because the email wasn't enough. That somebody's down the hallway going to Wiki, uh, running their cake horn, tooting that uh, right at Wiki, so that I have, so that I'm told right, to stay on. away from the fishbowl. All right, I just want to get one. Drives thing. me fucking nuts. Well, well, rather than fucking talk over me, can we stop for a second? Oh. Yes, I'm upset. I'm sorry. Yeah. How does someone run their cake horn? <laughs> Is that fucking impossible? Cake That's horn. not real. <laughs> Is it cake horn? But by that you mean their mouth? Yes, I mean their. Of course, That's I a, mean their mouth. That's a fucking cake hole, <laughs> not a cake horn. <laughs> you either say to someone, "Fucking shut your horn," <laughs> or "Shut your cake hole," but there's no such thing as a cake horn. <laughs> In this case, I think it applies. It a cake goes in one side, and the noise comes out the other. <laughs> you <laughs> fucked up. Cake horn. People are talking about me. But, but look. <laughs> and out of their cake horns. <laughs> it's not about the cake horn, Chris. <laughs> it is about the fucking cake horn. <laughs> it's <laughs> not, it's crazy. <laughs> it's not about the cake horn. It's about hilarious. somebody talking oh. shit about me Here, again. Here's the... You know why it's not about Don't the... Don't focus on that. But you know why it's not about the cake horn? Because there's no fucking such thing as a cake horn. This, been, this thing's been derailed doesn't by the cake horn. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Try to forget the fact, Chris. Um, excuse me, is this the bakery? I'd like to order a cake horn. What do you mean it's not a real thing? Isn't it a horn made out of cake? Or is it? Would you think it's a horn filled with cake? I think it's a horn filled with cake. There is no such thing as a cake horn. <laughs> know that. It's cake hole. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> That's fucking funny. And then, and then those guys got cake horn trending all over the place yesterday on Twitter, right? Cake horn. Cake horn yeah. became the number one trending topic in the United States yesterday. Nice. nice. It's, 
it just completely stopped the argument, right. the, the discussion <laughs> yeah. they were having. Did you just say cake horns? That's all it takes. <laughs> all then, of a sudden, er, well, discussion over cake horns. Was that the sound not, of a cake horn you just made? Yes, cake horn. Not according to Fez. No? No. Oh. Anyway, you were saying something before everyone laughed at you for saying cake horn. <laughs> <laughs> and I really do want to get to the part that there was some gay bashing that took place by Wiki. No, Wiki was just pass, passing it along. Okay, I thought he was gay bashing. So he was. T- uh, he passed along the, I guess, gay warning of no <laughs> gays allowed near the fishbowl at four o'clock today. <laughs> That's a bit, right? Is that a bit? Well, then stay out of there. This is a fucking perfect chance for you to go. Oh, I'm gonna stop being a fucking pain in the ass and be cool. Oh, you won't see me near that place. Okay. So what's the problem? That's a good thing. Yeah. You finally fucking learned your lesson. <laughs> no, what I'll do is, if, uh, since the bathroom's right across from the fishbowl, I guess I'll just piss in a bucket in the studio <laughs> if I need to. <laughs> is this a bit? I don't know. You never the know. Thing. Is that a bit? No, he's no, gay. He's, he's no, gay. I know he's they gay. Come. He finally admitted that. But, I mean, the whole gay bashing thing, he really thinks that's happening? He seems very upset. It doesn't sound like a bit to me. Mm. He thinks that they're banning gay people from the fishbowl. Also, that he thinks people should shut their cake horns. Their cake horn. He doesn't. <laughs> and we finally have one more clip. Cake horn. One more clip from the one big uh, Fez meltdown from yesterday. Hey, Hard Rock Johnny, how you doing, buddy? Hey, happy Mardi Gras, everybody. If you get a baby in your cake horn, you gotta buy the next cake horn next year. See, you Mardi. want a baby in your mouth, you fucking sicko. Oh, Johnny! <laughs> you were so fucking mad at him. We've never gotten mad at Johnny. That's our buddy. Yeah, I'm fucking... Ba- Johnny should fucking know better. Johnny, you know, Johnny, I expect to be a friend and back me up. Chris, he's not a friend. Shelby's not a fucking friend. No! So why would I even fucking expect them to back me up on one fucking thing around here? Is this about the cake horn thing? <laughs> no, it's about what uh, what happened to me over the weekend. What happened? To, what are you smiling about, Vito? I didn't do Get anything. Get the fuck out of the room. Well, wait, Vito. Were you smiling about cake horn? I didn't know. I don't even know what's happening. Sitting just... there with a big shit-eating grin on his face. Get the fuck out of here. I didn't even do anything. I just laughed at cake horn. Everybody was laughing at cake horn. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> wait, one more thing. Were you laughing about the cake horn thing? Yeah, I thought cake horn was funny. Everybody was laughing at cake horn. I don't know why I'm getting singled out now. You're a fucking intern. You want to get singled right out the fucking door? That's like bullying. Hmm. I don't think it's bullying. I think it's uh, addressing an intern who's fucking back-talking me. I just laughed. at He asked me a question, and I answered it. Who's he, Chris? No one was saying anything to you. Ron literally said to me, what are you talking You're getting pissed, and you're sitting there with a big, giant fucking grin on your face. Like a fucking dumb-witted asshole. This is really (laughs) embarrassing, because we didn't even promote this, but Cake Horn is trending on Twitter. (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) Cake Horn. All right, right now, Cake Horn is number four in the whole country, (laughs) and we didn't even promote it on the show. (laughs) That rules. I love it. Oh, Vito is that is, fucking great? Vito is their intern. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's not like he's I crying. Know, he's like, I, I love that. I was <laughs> laughing at cake corn. Everybody was <laughs> laughing at cake corn. Sound like an extra from The Sopranos. <laughs> oh, it was fun. <laughs> and a little text update from Wiki, yeah. who we were wiki, mentioning wiki, wiki. in yes. this clip. Mm. Very proud. Number one trend yesterday. Hashtag cake horn. Cake horn. All right. Wiki's loving it. We could we could trend something right now if we had to. Uh-huh. Can we retrend cake horn? We could do that. <laughs> could have, cake horn. Could have that uh, trend again. Pop back up. Pop it back up. Wow, Fezzy. Man, glad things have uh, changed over there. Yeah. For the better. That's, uh... What happened to the big change that was happening in his head? Well, they wouldn't let him near the fishbowl. And he he said everything was good now. He was yeah, a but, new person, remember? But if they're gay bashing, they're gay bashing. What can he do about that? Gay bashing? Yeah, they're gay bashing. Huh. Why is... why? I don't... Uh, you know, I just don't understand why it's considered because, gay bashing. Because they don't want Fez to harass the guests. So it has to be because he's gay. <laughs> right. That's, that's, really, that's the logic oh, okay. in his head. All right. And we're that's trying reasonable. to figure out. Okay, Corey. <laughs> 
boy. <laughs> the worst thing is when you, when you really want to, regardless a, how valid it is or not, right. when you want to make a point, you're you're arguing your point, you say something that just blows up the argument, yeah. and turns it into something else that they're they're goofing on. Oh, how frustrating is that? Yeah, because even if he got back to his point, even if it was a valid point, K corn. It's all about K corn at that right, point. Right, because <laughs> the minute that the guy you're arguing with knows that you're winning, K-corn. he can just be like, wait, didn't you say K corn a minute ago? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And these clips were condensed. This was 45 minutes of K corn jokes. Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, they just pounded the K corn. Just kept going, jokes. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Good for them. All right. <laughs> I love it. So that happened yesterday, which is nice. Not the brown and bad shop. Raw Dog, right? Noon? Yeah, Raw Dog at noon, which is Sirius XM 99. That sucks they're at noon. I'm still driving. I don't get to listen. Yeah, why do they uh, start at noon? Probably for 9 on the West Coast, I'm guessing, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a weird time, 9 o'clock on the West Coast. I get like uh, three minutes of uh, Sam Roberts uh-huh. when I'm driving. <laughs> which is half the show. What? That's cool. Three minutes, <laughs> yeah. half the show. What, are they, what do they have on in the morning on Raw Dog? They have nothing. Ex- they just do like comedy. Comedians. Bits. So why are they throwing them on There's at clips. noon? I don't know. I mean, all they have is noon to three, and the rest of the channel is comedy bits. That's bad programming. Uh-oh. I wonder if they're trying to get the raw, if the raw dog audience they're worried won't be responsive to a, a, a regular show instead of clips. Maybe they're trying to ease into it. I don't know. The raw dog audience. I mean, maybe they were worried about in the, that in the beginning, but they've been super oh, responsive yeah. to Runner Fest. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. They move yeah, them like, down. Runner Fest could easily be doing any spot on that channel. Because there's keep only moving so them many down. Clips they, you could use. Yeah, they get a bigger right. audience the, the more you move them down. Only so many times you could listen to, you know, the old bits. Yep. Yeah. The old comic shtick. Uh, so the has, they have comedians on every day now. Yeah. Who do they got today? I don't know who's coming in today. Dan Soder on Way recently. Way to do your everybody. research. I'm not booking oh, for the Ron and Fed show. Way to do your research. You know, you should probably one. have a little uh, sheet in front of you that has a... Uh, <laughs> oh, you want Danny in here? Good to, no. To show Sam how it's done? Not really. You sure. No. Positive. <laughs> we haven't had a mom in a while. Yes, though. we have. <laughs> <laughs> Denny came to me with a suggestion. He said St. Patty's Day is right around the corner. It's mm-hmm. true. If the guys want a little St. Patrick's Day music on St. Patrick's Day, it's oh, Monday. Oh, boy. He'd be happy to come in and DJ the party. What are we going to get? <laughs> I think we have to do that. I don't think Just have him in the corner and take us some Irish. Uh, yes. And his, uh, various Irish artists with, with his stupid DJ voice. I love his DJ voice. You do? It's great. Yes. Yeah. We better, right. we better have him in, I'm thinking, to make sure this is set up proper. Seeing pot he's Right dead. now? Yeah, I think so. All right, let me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I remember the last time we did a did an appearance for St. Patty's Day. That was fun at the bar. Yeah, what bar was that? And fucking, it was oh, close to here. That was the time where um, Marissa got all drunk, and I drove her home, and she threw up all out over the, the wi- side of my Escalade. Right, right, right. Yep. She threw up out the window, and it just was this racing stripe of vomit down the side. The, of the whole Escalade. side of the Escalade. Yeah. <laughs> And then I had to listen to her drunken rambling as she sat on the sidewalk in front of my house while I hosed down my vehicle. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was great. It was a good time. Good oh, times. good times. <laughs> well, uh, Jimmy's uh, boys are infighting. Kiss. What happened? Yeah, Paul has a new book coming out, too. Hey, Paul. Well, they read the other books, and I'm sure they weren't happy about it. So now yeah. Paul Stanley's going to set the record straight on a few few things, I, I'm sure. Yeah, what did he say about Ace? He said that his, his skills threw away incredible potential is the big headline. Wow. Yeah. The bitterness between the current and former members who found a kiss will not be uh, quelled anytime soon. It's been a little over a week since the group announced that it would not perform in any lineup at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. That's just, that's just, they yeah, can't figure that out, really? I, I literally think that certain things were said that the band members find unforgivable. That's my guess. Following Ace Frehley's comment that he would not perform with current guitarist Tommy Thayer wearing uh, Frehley's sometime makeup. Yeah. Uh, now, in a new interview with Guitar World, vocalist guitarist Paul Stanley has derided, derided, derided Freely's uh, talent. What we had at the beginning was magical. Ace and I played great together, Stanley said, but in my mind, it's a crime what Ace did. He threw away incredible potential and talent. The Ace I played with uh, when, the band's, when the band first started out was a comet and not... 
And not Freely's comic, because that was his late 80s band. Oh, he wasn't see. referencing ah, Okay, right. but he was burning bright and really had the ability, and this would rub him the wrong way to be a real contender. But he stopped practicing. He got involved with a whole lot of things that really diluted and diminished his craft. I saw that comet grow dim. Yeah, but he had a great run. Yeah. Did. As far as a rock star, he had a great run. Yeah, I, th I think he's just saying that he probably thought Ace could have played a lot better for a lot longer. Right. Um, but he was there for a long time, right? No, nah, he left Kiss in, uh, it was 79 or 80. And and Peter Chris got booted in 80. And then when did those guys come back? Um, me and Jeff Ross went to see them in Philly, and I think that was 96. That was the first reunion, I think. And then they did it in like 2000. They were gone that long? Oh, yeah, at least. At least 15 years. God, you forget now. Is and Paul it? says it was a mistake to take the makeup off, too. He thinks that was a mistake. Mm. I don't know if it was a mistake, though. I don't know. I don't know, because it had kind of run its course at yeah. one point. And in hindsight, it's easy to go it was a mistake. But the band put out some... They put out some decent stuff in that era. I don't think it was a mistake. They yeah. had to what change it up a little do? bit. Yeah, yeah, to compete in the 80s or whatever. Yeah. Remember when Metallica cut their hair? Right. The, the oh, outrage, boy. like, what the hell are they doing? The haters. And I don't, uh, I don't blame Ace for not wanting to play with Tommy. Like, not to, you know, because it's like they're inducting Ke uh, Gene, Paul, Ace, and Peter. Like, yeah. that's who the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is inducting. Is acknowledging as far as the band goes, right? Yeah. When they inducted Sabbath, it was Ozzy, Tony, Geezer, and Bill. It was not Ronnie Dio or What Vinny about the other guys? Do they get something for that as well? John St. John or Vinny. Do uh, they get official? Vinny Vincent. Do they do they get something official for? I don't know being inducted into the Hall of I Fame. I think that's up to the band. Eric Carr, who who uh, died, yes. I think that's up to the band. Stanley also said that after Kiss ousted drummer Peter Chris in 1980, he decided the band needed to reinvent itself, and that's why they removed their makeup in 1983. Uh, it's a decision he now feels hurt the band. Okay, 83 yeah, that was? Yeah. Rather than saying we built these iconic figures together and we're going to continue on with what we built, we bought into the idea of we have to have a new character, he said. That wore it down. Some people may argue with me, but I feel that Batman is Batman, whether he's played by George Clooney, Christian Bale, Val Kilmer, and on and on. The problem is their music wasn't that great. If their music was great, no one would have gave a shit that they didn't have makeup on during that, that time period. You know, I, I think the thing he's looking at, but it's easy with hindsight, is he's saying the characters like Paul with the star and Gene with his and Ace and Peter, you're looking back at that and going, well, these characters that we created, and we should have just put other guys into that place. Mm. But that's that's 20 years after the fact. In that moment... You don't know that these, you don't know that like your original stuff is going to be the fucking, the, the, the stuff that people remembered the most 15 years down the road. You right. don't have the, the ability to see that. Of course. So it's an easy decision to look at in hindsight. But maybe if they had left the makeup on, people would have went like, oh, this is lame. It's different people. And then totally lost interest by what, 87. What was their best song when they didn't have makeup on? They had some big ones. Lick it up. Heaven's on Lick fire. Lick it up is get up. That was during that period. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they had some. They had a couple of big. Well, there uh, goes my theory because that was a huge song for Kiss. They had some really big, big ones. One. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I prefer the pre. I think also though, like you know, people say like the show chains, like that's the way it is with music. Like I remember my my memories from Kiss were all like mm -hmm. my fuck. They were my first idols, and my you know the first ten years I really listened to music was all Kiss. Oh, yes. Yeah, Jimmy listening to Kiss. Yes, I was, I and I cried when me and my uncle Mike argued about it. What? Because he didn't like Kiss, so I cried. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? Yes. Oh, I'm laughing Why at you. And I was in tears my entire childhood. <laughs> Why didn't he like Kiss? I don't know. He probably liked other ones. Like my aunt and Carrie and Uncle Mike liked like Pink Floyd. Like they uh, were a couple years older than me only. Yeah. So they were into, like stoners. Frampton, like that type of stuff. This is crazy kid music. Yeah. But most of these bands end up hating each other. But they get it together just to get into yeah. the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And then they move on mm. to hating each other, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why fucking ruin that moment? Yeah. You know, it's only, it's going to be this quick thing. Do it the right way and then, you know, deal with each other for the day, whatever, and then you you move on. I'm thinking that they feel like they got Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer in place for a while now, and that's the band they're touring with, and it looks like the original band as much as it can. And now maybe they're afraid if they put the real, you know, if the original Ace and Peter out there, then people are going to once again go right back to square one with the comparisons and go, what the fuck? Why is this band not touring? What do you got? Like, they deal with that enough, so right. they might just be like, why would we want to start that shitstorm all over again? I got to tell you, we've interviewed all of them, and uh, I, Ace and Peter were way cooler than Gene and Paul. Paul was kind of cool, too. Paul yeah, was and Gene, great. And yeah. Gene gave us good, really good radio. Gene gave us good radio, but, but he's a fucking dick. But Ace and Peter were just really just cool guys. <laughs>
They knew how to hang, you know what I mean? They yeah. were just here and just hanging. No real agenda. The tendency, and, and I feel this this happened with Sabbath too, is whenever there's an ousted member of the band, like a lot of the fans side immediately with that member. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, be like, you know, how the fuck could you? And at times that's right. But the more you read into it, it's like, ah, eh, there are two ways mm. to look at it. And there were some things said in, in the Aces and Peters books that might have made Gene and Paul go like fucking yeah, no fuck I mean, again, them. right. Mm -hmm. And then Ace and Peter would go, hey, we were just telling the truth. So <clears throat> Right. I would assume they were just telling the truth. Yeah. But, and, and Paul and Gene may know they were telling the truth, but just go like, fuck this. The fact that you said that was right, unnecessary. Right. I don't know. Danny, I forgot why we wanted you in here. You can leave. Hello. Oh, no. Oh. You, Be good. You, you want to do a... Uh, St. Patty's Day thing for him? I thought about it. You know, I kicked it around. <clears throat> we could maybe get, uh, you know, some uh, Irish music throughout the day, Irish artists, uh, yeah. green bagels, green beer. I'm sure uh, <laughs> no, Roland, Roland could, uh, you know, get some uh, Irish food in here. We could have correspondents at the uh, parade <laughs> giving updates about what's going on. How's the how's the crowd building? Just prepping the entire yeah, show. What do you mean? You know, building. Like, you know, well, because sure. people start coming in because it's on a Monday. Right. So that becomes a three-day weekend. And I think they have the uh, Irish pub crawl on uh, Saturday. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So and then we, the could have, we could have correspondence parade. all throughout the weekend. Is that you know? is that how you do it on regular radio? Let's well, I, I just think it's fun. Regular radio it's or not satellite fun. radio. It's we'll put the fun into it. No, no, <laughs> no. I, we'll put the I, fun. People into will it. have put the fun. People in. will have fun on St. Patty's Day, but yeah. but the radio part is not fun. I think we'll have fun. <laughs> we'll make sure we have fun. What are some of the St. Patty's Day songs you're going to play on Monday for uh, us? Well, I have a whole collection on the hard drive of hits. We have a McNamara's band. We could come in and out of the stop sets right. with uh, Irish music. Ah. And, uh, you know. I like it. Yeah. All right. I, I call myself Dennis O'Falcone that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anthony Okumia. You right. I get it. Yeah, I get, get the, it. the whole gist. So I think, you know, and, and if oh, anybody nice. happens to know anybody who has an Irish bar, we can have them call in, you know, from around the country. Hey, hey say what? <laughs> say what is uh, right. You know, what kind of, Jimmy's what? maybe they have some acts Jimmy there. Jimmy O'Norton is not some, liking this. We what are they going to say? We could get yeah, some it's crazy down here. Everybody's drinking. Yeah. Gives a shit. The green beer is a flowing. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Same break that people did in 1981. Maybe we could have some pipers come in. Oh, nothing yeah. better than bagpipes. Yeah. 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 I think that's great. Yeah. Exactly. Like a civil servant funeral. That's what we need to hear. I, I love it when I DJ a wedding of a police officer and they have the uh, pipers come in. Oh, yeah, that huh? is just, oh, yeah. Those you guys you are actually right. love it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's just great. Yeah, fun. Everybody Not gets fun. into it. Everybody what, gets into it. How do you get into, into it? it? It's fun. It's not fun. Well, everybody's Irish that day. That day. Oh, everyone's that day. Irish. Nah. Everyone's day. Irish yeah. that day. Yeah, we could play some Irish artists that day. Uh, Van Morrison oh. and uh, you too. And that's you about too. it. Okay. And there no, you no, we, we'll we'll come All up right. with some more. Sinead. Maybe no. some Pogues. <laughs> oh, Pogues. 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 Yeah. We could do there some you of go. That. Yeah. Well, that sounds yeah. like a party in the making right let's, there. Let's kick it around. Maybe after the after show yeah. meeting. I'm not sure what time you guys right. are cutting out. Yeah, we could uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to blow off the after show meeting. We could go over that. You know, go over that. Right. Yeah, kick well, that around. I think uh, I think Tim would like that. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Uh, you think Todd's gonna reinvent regular radio like he's saying to everybody? I think he's in a uh, not Todd. I don't think Todd's gonna do anything. Uh -huh. But I think uh, Scott is in a place where he belongs. He sounds uh, good yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. He does. And that's that's where he should be. He's in his element. Professional uh, assessment, right there. Sure. Yeah. I think so it's it's fun, and you guys gave him a heck of a lot of publicity. Well, we try. Yeah, yeah. and he was very appreciative. Got to help too. him out. He sounded great on the show. Oh, he did. It yeah, was really he, some fun radio. You must have been jerking off in the back. <laughs> I, I ran a couple of. And, uh, and, and, oh, no, I was going to say Jimmy, but Jimmy wasn't here that no. day. Me and Ann talking to Scott Shannon. That had to be a wet dream for that, you. That was fantastic, yeah. Yeah. You I ran some air checks on, on cassette back oh, at the office. There. Did you? Yeah. You're going to trade those? Actually, I was listening with yesterday. With the when he, radio geeks you know, the, around I was, the country. I was on the train coming in, and nobody was air checking him on the train as I was uh, riding in uh, yesterday morning. I mean, I had a little, I had a little portable cassette machine, you know, on my lap, my little Walkman, uh -huh. plugged into the radio, just you know, getting wow. that because you want that for radio history. Oh, well, you sure do. <laughs> <laughs> you sure do. You're gonna need stuff like that. Why would you record someone doing just a basic show on cassette? On cassette. It just has that warmth. The the analog just has that warmth. Ah, the, uh, the warmth. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. No, it's no different. Guys <laughs> are man married to analog. It's the most fucking overrated thing ever. Mm -hmm. I like the way it sounds on the record. It's no different. You I know, still have all my Kiss on vinyl on the albums. 
Nothing wrong. Know, and they're collecting it if you like it. But I mean, this, this, because people think they're being more real about the music when they feel about it that way. Right. Like, whenever they, like, yeah, yeah it sucks walking around with it on your iPod. Terrible. Yeah. I'd yeah. rather listen to it when I get home on a record and just sit there on the couch and look at the speaker. <laughs> and, and don't forget, you can't move or, or the, <laughs> the, right. the, no, the record will skip. Don't get yeah, up too fast. Drop a marshmallow. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember being in a shitty apartment and the floors would bounce a little bit and that would fuck up our music playing there. Dennis, you know, this is old school shit, well, right? Right. Years ago, uh, back when you would DJ and in nightclubs, used to have the twelve hundred turntables right. by Technique because they had a little bounce industry. to them. No, you used to put them on on big rubber bands or bungee cords, so they would bounce. They would have a little bounce on there. I oh, would put right. some. He- I would put some heaviness on top of that needle too. To oh, that skippage sh- that wears that away the record. I understand, but you have no choice. Some radio stations would have to put like a nickel or a quarter on the. Uh, the uh-huh. arm of the turntable, so it wouldn't yeah. skip. Uh, I want to just take one phone call here. John in Florida wants in. John? How is this piece of shit not fired from serious <laughs> Oh, my God. Come on. Oh, John. Every time I hear his voice, I just want to just bash his face in with a baseball bat. Which one of us do you mean? <laughs> I got you, Jimmy. We love you, Jimmy. Thank but, uh, you. Old, old Denny O. Retard. <laughs> oh, now. Yeah, they don't. They don't like don't you, Dennis. Think. What do you have to say to your haters? Hey, it's a it's a free world. They can think whatever they want. You know, if you're going to be in this business, you got to be able to take it both ways. You just you can't take thick uh, skin, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Hey, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, Someone's saying business. Jimmy doesn't know what he's talking about. Mark in Chicago. I know it's a, probably a guy who likes the way it sounds on record. Go oh. ahead, Mark. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got nice equipment. You probably have shit gear. For as big of a music fan as you say you are, you should go out and. There's plenty of hi-fi shops. I have zero hi-fi. desire for a, who, who you fucking who you, who you buying it from? Don Cheadle at the end of Boogie Nights? Did <laughs> 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 you join a Bucks fucking music I, store? I have no desire. I I would imagine most people that are buying that over the top hi-fi stuff that they don't yeah. even know the difference. Listen to that bass. But they're, they yeah. they just make believe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sounds yeah. hip and smart, yeah, right? And, of course, but I would I would assume a very small percentage of people really truly sure. appreciate. Can I doing that sounds shit. great. We all have the same ears, dude. That's what I'm saying. I have the same ability to judge music you do because of my ears. Some of the yeah, but you've never heard anything high quality. Sure, I have. What do you? I'm 45 years old. You think I've never heard a record never. on a good fucking system? Never. <laughs> There's no difference, dude. No, no, no. There's no difference. When I'm walking, dollar prostitute and a fifty dollar prostitute. I know the system. See, that's the bullshit. What you're saying because the system. If you have a good system, mm. that yeah. doesn't matter if you're playing digital music on. It still sounds great. Uh, no, no, a record, digital, I'm sure, would sound great. Great too. What's that? Can sound great. Analog can sound great. But enough with Our, analog. It's fucking. What? You're sitting there in your house Who listening cares? to it. Shut what? up. Put the record no, on. Wash no, it. Most, most of these hipster kids have shitty equipment and have no idea. All right. What? What? What are you actually hearing? I mean, turn us on to this because obviously we don't get it. Well, it, it's kind of like being in a recording studio. I, I used to do a lot of internships there, and records when they sound recorded, um, they sound completely different than you know what it sounds like over the radio. It's crazy. It's like having an artist perform for you in front of you when you close but, your eyes. Dude, a good system is a good system. Like, if I'm listening to my iPod and I have a really good system, it's going to sound great. If you have a record on a really good system, it's going to sound great. True. But and I'm not a, talking a about taking a shitty system and comparing it to a good system. I'm saying I'm sick of records and this fucking people who think that they're really in touch with the music more because they like the yeah. record. Like, wow, you really go deep, dude. You're old school. Uh, I like an occasional pop and hiss. Yeah, all right, yeah. That, that, I'll that, tell you. That's what I'm talking about. I agree with you there. Thank you. Love you, boys. All right, buddy. Bye, mister. We have one more, uh, Jimmy, that you have to deal with here. Okay. Jay in Tampa. Jay. What's going on, my boy? Hey. Uh, oh. <laughs> Hi, Jay. I, I agree with you, Jimmy, when it comes to the actual final product. Uh, between it, you know, MP3, you can obviously hear the difference, but between a CD and a record, most people will never notice the difference. Now, what I do disagree with you is when you're recording. If you record in a studio direct digital, which most studios do nowadays, you can hear a huge difference if you go to analog first before going into like Pro Tools. I don't. Um, I, I've never been in a studio and heard that, so maybe you're right. I can't say you're wrong because I don't know the difference, like for being in a studio. I mean, and most of the crap is is so over compressed nowadays anyway. 
even the hipsters listening on their damn turntables aren't going to be able to hear the difference because right. they're not hearing the full headroom of the recording anyway. And, dude, and I'm not oh. shitting on analog. I'm only saying that I would. people who are, uh, are talking so much about records like it's this much better thing than a, than a fucking listen to it. I, it sounds great when you put on those headphones and, you, and you're walking around. It sounds phenomenal. I've heard every Sabbath right. album and Kiss album in every form they've come in. I, I hear no difference. I like the ears I got. Yeah. <laughs> they hear pretty good. Yeah. Jimmy likes anal log. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, when are, you, when are you coming back to Tampa, Jimmy? Oh, it's funny you should ask. I'll oh, be in Tampa. Really? Soon. April 11th and 12th. Right around the corner. I'm sure hoping someone from Ontario, California calls uh -oh. to wonder when I'll be there again. Uh-oh. This weekend, oh. tickets available. Come on. Just a few, right? Yeah. All right, punch it out, boys. <laughs> Look at your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, little Connor in Kentucky. Little Connor. Oh, remember Little Connor. Hey, how you guys doing over there, man? Yeah, right. Hey. Uh, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, when are you coming to Nashville again? Oh, my God. Uh, Virginia Beach, March 20th through 22nd. <laughs> I'll be there. Thank you. Hey, uh, I, I just, when that guy was right, that last guy, the, 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 the issue with albums, and I 100% agree with Jimmy, but uh, when they first started making them into digital recordings, they just, when they remat, they didn't remaster them. They just recorded them straight over. And you lose a lot of the fidelity when you record digital because digital, especially the early days, was a sampling of like 72,000 pieces a second. Now it's much greater. Okay. Back then, you lost a lot of fidelity. So if you got some old albums, you, you get all the sound that you lost with digital. Okay. All the. All the good shit has been remastered since then. Like I just got the, the Black Sabbath on, on vinyl, mm. and it sounds exactly the same as the uh, as the new thirteen on, on uh, 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 digital. Yeah, that's like that's all I wanted to say. You know, if someone had a really good system, I'm sure a record sounds great, and there's a nostalgia to it too. And I know what you mean about the little pop and like the little like I mean I grew up with that too, but uh, it's just there's a, a an arrogance that people have about it. But if, like, if someone had a great system and put on a record, I wouldn't go, you know, karate kick it over and enjoy right. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Jimmy. I, I'm the exact same way. I and mean, we're the same age. And, uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago and would listen to that Pink Floyd album when it came out. But Which one? I, I didn't listen to Pink Floyd when I was growing up. Really? Nah, man. I got into them later in life. Yeah. Mm. All right, guys. Thanks, anyway. Yeah, that All was right, a little All right, little Connor. Thank you, buddy. Out there. Yeah, it I was... liked some of it, but it wasn't like a fave. No. Did you get into the Ramones growing up? I, I was I, I just got into them like in the last say six or seven years. I wish I was cool growing up, like, uh, and I'm I'm not talking like later on in high school. I started listening to you know heavier mm. music and shit like that. Yeah. But earlier on, oh, what a little fruit! What you like? listening to? I would listen to a little, little hit radio. station. Yeah, all What'd the you little like? hits, all the little hits. Aw, listen. It's all you, brother. Fucking, uh, I, was, I was there, too, because yeah, yeah. I had an older sister, and I didn't have my own music yet, so whatever she was cranking from her room yeah. as she was crying, uh, <laughs> I, would, I would enjoy. I'd be in the car, you know, with my mommy, driving to Grandma's house, listening to, you know, Philadelphia Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. You know, shit like that. Love, love, love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> what about? Yeah. Knock three. On the ceiling, if you you know, all that faggy stuff. Tony Orlando rules. You like Tony Orlando? He's the greatest. These 80s yeah. songs? Or? Uh, well, you know what? Hey, man, they had classic, like, whatever they called it, I guess, classic hits or something back oh. then. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the classic station Stop trying to trip back, us man. up. Child of the 80s, right here, motherfucker. If you say so. Ba -da! Those stations. <laughs> the, when I was growing up, the oldie stations were playing ba 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 bang. Growing up, when you were in high class. school. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like fucking Tony Orlando, Sam? Tony Orlando was the shit. I mean, I get. I, Come no, on, I, I, I would say. What are you ripping around? Yeah, no, I'll comfortably say I'm not. I Tony hated Orlando how everyone fan. on the bus cheered for my Twitter that recently. I listened to uh, the song and I hate the whole bus. The whole damn bus was cheering. Why? Right. I'll tell you why I hate it because that means that he told the whole bus. No, yeah, I'm on my way home. He's like fucking Rosie, just a fucking babbling oh, retarded person shut on the bus. Up, for you you're right. That? You hated that. Yeah, I say. Oh um... I say, um, I'm trying to find my words. Oh, because I hated it? I say, um... Get out! Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking peanut butter fingers in there. <laughs> 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 All the Tony Orlando songs. Oh, okay. <laughs>
What is that line again? And the whole day, oh, uh, uh, he pitched something and something and pitching a fit. A uh, pitching a fit. And wait, what is it? Travels here. It. <laughs> I think Fez was pitching a fit yesterday. Yeah, that was pitching a fit. Whining and crying and pitching a fit. Uh, it's terrible, it's terrible. It's about the, what's going on on TV, and I got it. And, but uh. well, Don Henley kind of liked writing about the TV, right, Dennis? Oh yeah, a little dirty laundry. Good song. Bubbleheaded bleach blonde comes on at five, nine, six, six. Mm. You like get over it? You think that's a good song? Yeah, it's good, very catchy. It's not. Oh, good, it's catchy. catchy. It's got Thank a good you. hook. Doesn't have a good hook. <laughs> Sucks. It does. People remember it. You're so always what? using People it. People remembered Hitler. He'd have a good hook. <laughs> <laughs> you got you, Dennis. Uh, uh, yeah, who uh, cares? You got me there. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> That's the same band that did Hotel California. You, you do understand why that sucks, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're trying to compare things from decade to decade. The uh, band evolved. I mean, it's There it's are tough bands to do that, that should just say, they know what right, to say when. we can't come up with any more cool songs, so let's just ride our, our, our hits. Our past songs. Well, they just don't U2 want to be known is as... A, is a rare exception, but most of these bands can't do it anymore. They don't want to be known as, as, as an uh, oldies music band. Goes. And, and they want to do new stuff. It, it's just sad. I mean, you go see any group, you know, from the 60s, 70s, or 80s, hey, here's a brand new album, that, and most people leave to go get a refreshment or something because they don't want to hear... I, I understand sad. that, too. It's, it's as an sad. artist, it sucks. People don't want to hear your new stuff, I'm it, sure. It's sad, you know? It's A refreshment? Yeah, what kind of refreshment that is a do great you get catch. At, a, at, a, at, a, at a rock Who gets show? a refreshment? Maybe they're going for a Diet Coke or something. <laughs> Which song should we go get our refreshment in? Oof. You're a fan of a good refreshment, aren't you? Uh, uh, getting your refreshments you. while you were at the show? Everything about you is just awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... <laughs> just different. It's just different from your world. That's all. Right. A refreshment. Something to drink. I don't even like saying the word. A <laughs> refreshment. <laughs> Go to the snack bar. Honey, can I get you a refreshment? Yeah. And she and she says yeah. And pulls out a gun, shoots her. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what, they, that's what Oscar Pistorius was saying. Oh was boy, <laughs> boy, is he in Dutch? Oh boy, he fucked up. I think he's done. Oh, he's guilty. As I don't shit. know about their legal system. Are they tough over there? Are they going to like? It's a judge. There's no jury, so oh, that and he is in fucking wow. deep trouble. How did? How did? How do you? Why, I think why she, no jury, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know here. if that's their system or if he yeah, had a choice. Yeah, that's trying to figure out. But he is fucking, because uh, she was beautiful. The eyewitness was, that heard the gunshots and the, and the screaming. screaming. And, and he still shot after the screaming. Yeah. Which uh, goes against his theory that it was an intruder and he was shooting through a door. Well, he did shoot through a door. No, but, I know, but that but yeah. that he was doing that because it was a, a... He was scared. Yeah. Well, no. that's they're saying, like, her screams were also because... Uh, could have she, been the intruder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, oh, I see what you're getting at. He's, believe me, when you when a trial first starts and you start hearing this stuff, you're like, oh boy, he's sunk. But they're going to pull out some shit. They'll pull and it's out not in front of a jury, it's in front of a judge. This is, uh, it's not a slam dunk. Let me just say that. I don't know. The ju I think a judge is worse in these cases. You think? A jury, because a jury can be swayed. Like, a judge knows the garbage that, that you're doing. I know. And the, and, the, and the legality of it, and could just see through the emotion. Well, that's what it is. Uh, yeah, you, you want it without the emotion in there. So if he's able to present a case mm -hmm. that um, is compelling enough for the judge to believe that he might have thought this That's was an true. intruder instead of the a jury going oh this poor girl oh this uh, oh i know guys like that okay. take all that shit out of it you know if he's able to present a good case a solid case then he's got a better chance with a judge I think. she was texting with a guy i think the day it was valentine's day i don't know if she was cheating on him or not uh -huh. but it was just one of those fucking he was watching porn maybe she busted him watching porn or maybe he looked at her stuff phone and saw her not, texting stuff might not even be admissible no, no i'm just speculating right. yeah, yeah. i'm just i'm just saying that it was one of those things where she was so beautiful oh, what? oh i'm i'm saying he fucking killed her yeah but i'm just saying this isn't the slam dunk everyone thinks it in it is he could he could well, get off. He almost said walked in. <laughs> <laughs> he and could Jimmy, walk off. Uh, I mean, you were saying off mic that you understand his anger. Yeah, like not. I'm not saying he should have shot this girl. Of course, but of that's course. why I don't own a gun because in those moments where you're in a power-driven, furious argument, I have absolutely been angry enough to kill the person I was arguing with. Wow! Holy, holy shit! It's, and I'm not saying that for any reason other than the fact of. 
th- th- there's reason. That's why I've never owned a firearm because in that moment you can r- end their life and uh-huh. ruin their family's lives and end and ruin your own life. And we're like good, a split second later, you'd be like, oh, the second. You uh, smell that gunpowder, whatever happens when you fire a weapon, oh you would no. go, oh my god, I've done it. I've done what, the unreversible. What goes through your head, though? I told you, I remember me and my ex were arguing one time, and uh, she wouldn't stop, and it was late, and I was trying to sleep. And I was, I was first of all, I was physically stopping my fist from just, from, from, from coming over and just punching her in the face. But I, like, I've never hit a girl in my <laughs> oh, life. It doesn't take a tough guy to hit a girl, so I, I don't do it. But uh, I could feel myself... My, my, I could feel the pull of my body wanting me to. Oh, my God. And um, I thought to myself, I want to stab her to death. Like, I really want to oh, stab oh her. Oh, my God. God. That's fantastic. Um, Guess you wanted to hear the vinyl, huh? What's that? <laughs> Guess you wanted to hear I the record. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dennis. Oh, Dennis, that's right. Oh, but you're you know, it was, you're it was, adorable. He is adorable. But he's right. I my think you're saying, story. I think you're saying something that a lot of people feel, Jimmy. In those moments, in the, but it's it's in the craziness of that box. I've that never moment. felt my fist, or f- I mean, I've I've been in some arguments, obviously, but yeah. not to the point where I'd rather just walk away and say fuck it all. Yeah, now I might be able to do that, but that was more the frustration of she wouldn't leave the house. Like I, I would want her to leave. Like let's just stop fighting because I'm feeling myself getting. And I don't want to argue, and she wouldn't go home. And uh, why didn't you just leave? It's my house. I know it's your house, but and it was late. And I had to work in the morning. When I had sh- when I had shitty stuff, I would have I would just leave. <laughs> well, that's another reason I wouldn't leave my stuff there. Yeah, like if, you you never know. St- if you have shitty stuff, it's easy to leave your house and just find another place to sleep for the night. No matter how <laughs> angry I am, and I've been angry at people, I've never thought of pulling the gun out and yeah. and, and not not even not using it, like pointing it or like that. Never crosses my mind no matter how angry i am never it's just n- never i swear to you <laughs> it's kidding. it's one of those situations where y- you know that this thing is is you have it to save your life right. or the life of somebody else but i'm like if you have one you might as well use this it's exactly. not it's like the yeah. dust <laughs> <laughs> i'm with jimmy you, you might, might as, as well, well use it. it why else would you have it it's one of the biggest responsibilities you could have and and like you said you're snuffing out two lives pretty much but if i had one mm-hmm. i may like who, who, i'm not saying i would do that because I, I but I, I told you one time i went out to the kitchen and i was just fucking grabbing that kitchen knife and fucking holding oh, it oh my god you're and, and i, I did she I was, know you were holding a knife and no, then I don't know if she did or not. I was so angry. Were you oh. fantasizing? Oh at all? my god! Yeah. I could feel it. I could literally feel my arm plunging. <laughs> oh my god! I, this is crazy. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't bring oh, the knife wow. back. I've never threatened anybody with a weapon uh-huh. or any of that crazy shit. But mm. you know, again, in in fairness to her, she was probably thinking the same thing because she wasn't some. Pussy girlfriend, right? She yeah. was a fucking. You guys know her. She was a very yeah, yeah. ballsy. Go oh, fuck uh-huh. it. Like, she was a uh, relatively, yeah. you know, in that oh, yeah. world of girlfriends, you know, she was not a fucking. She you know, knew. She knew how to hang. She would have thought. She would have thrown her fist right in my fucking fat mouth before I got off a good stab. <laughs> and I would, one night she caught me. I told you when she caught me dirty texting someone who I never fucked. I was actually. She was so mad at me. When she, when I, I accidentally printed it out on the printer because I'm so fucking dumb. Oh. And she came home. And Why she, did you print it out on the printer? I'm dumb. I hit the wrong button. You made a mistake. Oh, 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 oh. And she came home, and it was a Saturday afternoon, and she was in class that day or whatever. Oh, no. And she goes, uh, get up, Jim. I'm like, huh? Jim, get up. And I knew I was in trouble because she oh, never would have done no. that on a Saturday because I'm, I'm such a bad sleeper that I knew she would have fucking. Was, she was everything running through your head? Like, I oh, knew I know, I something happened. <laughs> and she said, uh, and by the way, I read your whole chat. Well, I know what you were talking about. And she said the girl's screen name. So I knew she had seen a conversation. I knew I was caught. So I couldn't even really lie. And I genuinely felt very bad about it. But the only thing that saved me was in that conversation. It was obvious that the girl and I had never hooked up. So she knew it was just an intrigue. It was one of those things. She knew I was a big time waster with that shit. Like I've talked, I've had so many sexual conversations about things that I, I was never going to do. And right. like she knew that. So that was uh-huh. the only thing that saved me. But that night I, w- I made her go home. I was literally, and I'm not kidding, afraid to have her stay over 
because I was scared that she was going to fucking stab me. Wow. She was so fucking hot under the collar. Wow. And she had that those eyes, and I'm like, this bitch will fucking now, kill me in my sleep. Now I understand why you don't sleep. I know. <laughs> Right, one eye open. Do you understand why she was mad, though? Oh, my God, yeah. Right, she was yeah, fucking women, betrayed, yes. All right, women she don't right. appreciate that, even if you're not uh, doing anything physical. 100% I understand. Okay. And she was a great fuck, and she would have done anything I want. It was nothing to do with her. It was my own selfishness. Oh, you know what I learned, too? If you're in the same room texting, girl might not be able to read your text, but boy, can they spot an emoji from across the room. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they can. <laughs> You know what else they can spot? When you think you're slick holding your phone at a fucking 88 degree angle. And she said that to me. And you don't think I see the way you hold your fucking phone? I'm like, yeah, I guess she did. She did notice that. Oh, Jesus. Let me say hi to Bill in California. Bill. Oh, hey. Bill. <laughs> Jimmy. Hi, Bill. You are certifiable. But so, I, you know. How, how, can you, how can you possibly say. That because you don't have a gun, that's why you haven't killed somebody. When you're on the street next to a car, you have the urge to jump in it and run somebody over if you're having an argument. You know, I, I don't understand. I'll tell you. One time I was dri there's there's because I have the car. I think that I, I I don't do it. Like that's why I'm saying maybe I wouldn't have done that in that moment. You wouldn't. Um, have. I don't know if I would have or not. But I'm saying in those instant. I remember one time I had landed an MTV pilot. Oh no, there's another time. <laughs> But this was oh, no. <laughs> this was years ago. I lived in still in Central oh, Jersey. That's okay. And I was driving home, and I had a good bit of news that day. And I'm driving my car, and I was kind of cranky behind the wheel. And I remember, I was, all I wanted to do was gun it and kill a pedestrian. I could Whoa. feel myself wanting to do that. Yeah. And of course, I didn't do it. So, so dude, what, well, I don't know what you're saying. Like, I'm saying what my mind was saying in that moment. I'm not saying it's rational or I would have done it. Yeah, it's certainly not rational, but you know, it's there's a line, and it seems to me that he's got the line because he hasn't done it. I gotta, I gotta defend Jimmy a little bit here. I love his honesty because I think we all have these crazy ass thoughts in our head, but we don't, we we don't act on it. Like the feeling of just jumping when you're when you're in a yes. tall building on a ledge or something, or huh? Or like uh, my my thing. Hold on, hold on, God. Forget it. What are you saying? It's so frustrating. What were you going to say? That's so important. I need to know now, Bill. Okay. Sorry, Oak. Didn't mean to walk on you there. What, what I'm saying is it's not just that he's had these fantasies or that he's thought about it. I thought Jimmy said the reason he has not killed somebody is because he doesn't have a gun. I don't... I Totally different. No, Bill, I, the point I'm making is like, I understand, I, I can't say for sure I would have. I mean, I'm not a sociopath, but, but when I hear Oscar, when I read what happened between him and his girlfriend that night, like, I get it. Not I justify it, but in that moment, I know I've been angry enough to do that. Whether or not I would have, I don't know. I think, and also people picked up on the fact that you're, this par party is joking too. No, uh, not really, no. I mean, I'm being really? serious. Like, in those moments, I felt that way, that what? anger. And uh, it frightens so me. So you're not joking when you, when you say that if I had a gun, I would use it. I, but I'm not saying that definitively because I had a knife. I didn't use that. I right, think the guy said I have yeah. a car. That's I've never run anybody over. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not. But yeah, that's no, no. why I think you're joking a little bit. Not joking. I, I am. It's like in moments where you're that angry and in a nanosecond, and I know you can with a knife, but a gun is just something so final about a gun. It frightens me. <laughs> And I would never, ever own one. I've never tried to own one, and that's why. I never trusted myself with it. Hmm. But it not, well, I, I bet you'd be surprised, Jimmy. I, 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 bet you, I bet you had a gun, and you were in that situation. There's no way you'd kill somebody. You might be right, dude. No you honestly you might be right. And I think it goes back to my original point that that's why I like you're saying this, because I'll, I'll, we all have those True. thoughts. And those but moments. We don't, we don't act out on them in the end. But like, look, like in your case, it sounds like you got pretty damn close, but you still didn't act out. Right. It seems like you could have justified it in your head if you really wanted to go down that road. And maybe this Oscar guy, if he did it, maybe he's truly crazy. But let's just say that he's not crazy. Let's just say that he's kind of like most of us. And whatever factors went into it, where I stopped at the eight, what made him go to uh -huh. nine or ten? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not blaming her, but like, was his jealousy just a little bit more than mine? Had he had a couple of drinks, or had they argued right. before? Did he? What was that fucking final tipping point that made him fire? Because it's almost like she's flipping the eggs with his feet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the last straw. Maybe that was it. <laughs> yeah, she might have pointed out the fact that. Uh, yeah. yeah, go wax your toes. <laughs> and he has a lot of calluses on his palms. <laughs> oh, oh.
You know. But what uh, pushed him? I don't know. Yeah. I, what, what in his mind sent him like that? Because this is an Olympic athlete who's very disciplined. He trains. He has a lot to live for. Yeah. He's a fucking truly worshipped icon in that country. Oh, yeah. He's one of the few black and white heroes like from, from the whole country. Mm-hmm. Someone was saying in South Africa, they they have this shoot first, ask questions later thing. Too. Oh, really? You know, so that might help them. They look at it slightly different. Did he even mean to kill her? Because he fired angrily through the door, which is almost less personal. He might, yeah, have been like, you know, hey, take her. that with you. you well, know? maybe he and was then, assuming that, oh, sorry. Maybe she, he was assuming she was on the other. Right, right. Where he knows he could shoot through the door like, and she's hey, going to scare the crap hey, out bitch, of her. bitch, yeah, look yeah, what I did. Knows? And then, uh, uh-oh, she was, uh, uh, whoops. <laughs> hey, Bill. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I yelled at you. I was wrong. Oh, oh. Right. Jesus! Hey, Good thing he, you weren't here. Fuck would have killed you. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had fun, something fun for the show when you were oh, stomping man. on me. Why don't you tell us now? <clears throat> no, it's just thoughts we all have, and one of mine was when I used to go to live tapings of shows. I had the urge to to run from the audience and tackle the host. Oh uh, yeah, that yeah. Was one I of just my... punched the host in the face. No, I didn't want to do even really? do that. I remember, I remember when Bill Morris first started his... I've told the story in the air, and I think it was the t- one of the times me and you there. had to go to L.A. Yeah. We went to a Bill Maher taping when it was on Comedy Central, right? Back yeah. then? And I had this urge that I just wanted to jump over that little barrier, because I think we we're in the front row, if yeah, I remember. Just run right up And there. I wanted to run and just tackle him. Be all over the I didn't news. want to hurt him or anything. Just to do something ob- ob- crazy, obnoxious. Yeah, I get that. So the, I, I, I think we all have these, but we hold, we hold oh, back yeah. from actually doing it. Absolutely, but something in other people that tick goes off, and you're yeah. like, and then you do do it. Yeah. Someone says that's why they call it a fit of passion. I think what you mean is a crime of passion, sir. The guy on yeah. Twitter, but that that is why it's in it's those moments. A fit of passion. Yeah, yeah. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're so tall, you can only shoot at her clit. Get over. <laughs> so you get stumps. <laughs> right. We got we got uh, the chef that was on. Uh, oh, good. Cool. But we're gonna have to do it after the break. So could someone you know talk to him? I was like a McWee. Uh, but first, Rob in Boston. Rob. Hey, guys. Hey, that- Jimmy, I love the honesty, brother. I mean, you know, I think <clears throat> I think you're just saying that some things that go on in all of our heads. I remember uh, a girl that I dated uh, back in high school for a long time. I had I'd knew, known she was fucking around on me behind my back. She didn't know I knew it. I didn't have any proof that I know that, that she was doing it, but I knew it was going on. Right. And I, I remember leaving my house one afternoon with her, driving down the street, and you know I'm looking at her. I'm like, "You're fucking cheating! I know you're fucking cheating!" I was in a absolute rage, and she she was yapping at me, yapping at me, yapping at me. And in in order to control myself, calm myself down, I literally opened the fucking door and jumped out of the car because I knew. The rage that I had inside me, I just had to get away from her. It was all I could do to just, you know, control myself and, and, and get away from her. Tuck and so, roll. Yeah. Right, I, right out of that but vehicle. I, I, but I know, I know. I mean, Jimmy, I, I totally crazy. feel you, buddy. I, I, wait, wait, wait. How fast was the car going? Yeah. Yeah. We were on a back road. It wasn't crazy. Uh, okay. But, <laughs> I, but at the same time, I, yeah. I, 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 feel what, I feel what Jimmy's saying because, like Chris Rock says, you know, it's, I'm not saying it's okay to kill somebody. But I understand. You know what I mean? Well, you look at the O.J. murder, as brutal as it was, I don't know if he went there to do it, if he did whatever, but uh, the the barbaric, crazy, violent, like, that's an explosion. Mm. It's not a pre-planned thing. You don't do it that sloppy if you're pre-planning it. That's like an explosive thing that I think most of us have the ability to have happen under the, if, if everything lines up right, we all have that ability to have that happen. I mean, I, I didn't do, I've never even yeah. shoved a girl. Like, I've had zero uh, violent behavior in my life towards anybody. Oh, you yeah, should I mean, shove you know, a girl. Not, they I'm go not, down easy, I'm man. Not, <laughs> I'm, not violent. I'm not violent at all. I'm a very peaceful person. But anyway, I just wanted to share what a guy. Boys. All right. Uh, I want to acknowledge Hungarian uh, lover today on Twitter. Oh. He tweets, Opie Radio. Take your own advice and stick to your Hotel California. <laughs> Hashtag 50-gallon drum challenge. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm not on Twitter as much. It's just, it's gotten <laughs> so ridiculous and what stupid. Is, what is that guy's complaint? I don't know. He, oh, boy. That's a good I, one. I, I, I don't... I don't think we're in the get over it phase of our careers, yeah, I wouldn't, you uh, idiot. You gotta love him. Oh boy. 
Brother Get Joe over. wants in on this. Get over it. Uh, Brother Joe. Hello, fellas. Yeah. Um, Jim, I just wanted to I, I just wanted to throw in my two cents. I don't want to make it a gun issue, but by virtue of owning a weapon and firing them often, it makes you less likely to uh, to to actually use it in a fit of anger. I, that that's 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 my opinion. That's the way I feel about it. I mean, it just, it it makes you much less likely. You understand? I mean, how many times? How many times have you actually fired a handgun, Jimmy? I I don't think I ever. To be honest with you, I don't think I've ever fired a handgun. Just like a like a rifle when I was in camp when I was a boy. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's, oh a different, boy. it's a different thing. I might have been that might have been like a BB gun or a twenty two. But yeah. it's a different thing when you fire off a few rounds out of a nine millimeter on on a regular basis. I think when you're crazy, I think those crazy guys that you know uh, like like the fucking kids that shoot up schools or something. They shoot and they're thinking about it and stuff. So, but they're insane. They're feeling I, the power. I of think it, if yeah. you're a regular person. The normal emotions and, and mental capacity, mm. and you just buy a gun and throw it in your night table drawer and forget about it, you probably are a little more apt to think about grabbing it in anger Wait, than you would dangerous. if you're Wait, going dangerous. to the range and you're understanding right. what a weapon can do, all the safety uh, that, that it takes and responsibility that it takes. Mm. I think you're right as far as that goes there, Joe. All right. Yeah. No, all right. That's it. You might be right. I mean, I, I, that's why I'm saying if I own one, I may feel differently. Yeah. But I just didn't. I, I've never made that leap because I don't trust myself. I would not advocate uh, no, you no. having a weapon of any sort, <laughs> no. Jimmy. No. Uh, you have Kenny. That's a, a good shotgun. Weapon. I would feel more comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'll tell you why. Because I, I would never. First of all, I would never shoot myself. But if, if I was going to, it would never be with a shotgun. Because too many people live through that because they do it. Oh, wrong. you see that guy's picture? Yeah. Wow. On the web yeah. Your whole nose and I mean, my breathing would be terrible. That if my uh, nose got shot uh, off. Oh God. <laughs> you, know, you know the custom mask you'd need for your apnea? Oh my God. Uh, you've you've thought about something that looks like a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> you've thought about shooting yourself? Oh, yeah, of course. Can I, can I do a really quick plug for uh, sure. Ulysses this Oh, Saturday of course. Night? Yes. Saturday night, Ulysses, two years. We're doing all the new stuff. We're going to be doing uh, Invisible, Ordinary Love, and probably that Aslan cover as well. Nice. Good for you, all right. Joe. All right, all right there, Joe. You, One more. Uh, right. Rob in Jersey. Rob. First time, long time. Hi. Oh, whack, whack. Wow. Amazing. I think uh, Jimmy's using his cake horn to tell us he's crazier than Fed. <laughs> oh, no. Jimmy, uh, some crazy stuff coming out of his cake horn. <laughs> cake horn. You're not uh, a fish ball either. Yeah. There's some comedy in that word, cake horn. I love cake horn. I should have realized at that cake point. Cake horn is great. Uh, Dennis, just an amazing appearance. I really appreciate it. So we're good for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, we are. Do you have any songs uh, that you would go to right now after this discussion? How about Bang Bang by Cher? Bang Bang, My Baby Shot Me Down. That's a good song. Yeah, is that a... Shotgun, Shoot Him Before He Run Now, Junior Walker and the All-Stars. Oh. A Motown song. Oh, there you go. I Shot the Sheriff. Or is I that... Shot the Sheriff. Uh, okay, we can go there. Well, How about Little good. Runaway? As in, uh, as in, please. <laughs> <laughs> Opie and Anthony have been excelling at this for 20 years. Need proof? Listen to this 20th anniversary Opie and Anthony radio gem. Hey, Chris, what was your um, what was your story of the year? Uh, it's the end of the year here. What's the one story that made you go, this was a good year? Two I girls, was, one cup. Two, two girls, girls, one cup, cup. is have a great one. It? Two girls oh, cup. oh we Jesus. We just don't have wish, time, unfortunately. We added here. Wow. I'm surprised you don't know It's that. a video uh, that's just gone completely viral on YouTube, okay. and, and it's two girls, right. um, one cup, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one girl uh, and, fills and, the cup and with a lovely um, uh, thick treat. <laughs> Yeah, she could have got it from Baggage Claim in India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Two girls, oh, one cup, yeah. in India. Just and put they, those all together. <laughs> they both share it. It's hard to find the actual video. You just have, if you type it up, it's just people watching it. Yeah. And not you not seeing it. Yeah, now it, it's, it's people's people. reaction to watching it that people are watching. Two girls, one cup. I'll try to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy. It's, it's Two girls, one. one cup dot com. I, 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 I just never, you know. Tell, do you do you yeah. troll around looking at videos? I troll around in the internet. Yeah. I never press, you know, S H I T. Yeah, just kind of end up in that. I never well, been that. Oh, oh, Chris, for well, reviewing pleasure. Well, just here it is. Off the air. If, if you want to take, it starts a, off a with a nice look. scene, girl okay. and girl action, and then you get. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no! 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 No!
<laughs> oh, they do. They have a step it up. Oh, look, 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 look. Come on, oh, they step it up. They Come step on. it up. Don't be a rookie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what the hell? Look at that. Look at that. Stop. They really step it up. God, they step it up. Look at that. <laughs> That's our favorite part. Come on, look. There you go. There it is. Uh, we just want to make sure you don't forget why? your time on the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> Two girls, oh, one girls. cup. Oh, why, indeed? Why? You're not going to forget us, right, Chris? Uh, why? Uh, that was wonderful. Where, <laughs> where do you get those girls? That makes me breathe better you know, when I see I that video. I, I think I found a new opening act. <laughs> <laughs> the Opie and Anthony show is back on Sirius XM. I think that's pretty cool. We turned Chris Rock on to Two Girls, One Cup. I forgot about that right. clip. Oh, uh, yeah. Chris Rock and Patrice O'Neill in studio at the same time. Yeah, there's no K Rock. Unbelievable. Oh. Yeah, get up! I remember when I was growing up, uh, when this song was out, my friend Tyler, his mother was talking about Paul Stanley, and she didn't know who Kiss was. And she said, He's pretty. She thought he was a pretty really? white guy. Oh, yeah, she's black. Yeah. Pretty. Lick it up. Yeah. So we got uh, we got Chef Keith on the line. Yes. Uh, a little earlier in the show. Oh, I wanted to hear the rest of that song, but I guess we. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we could do that. I forgot. All right, well, we got to move on. Yeah. Two hours listening to Kiss. I don't know. Maybe a little more though. Just a little more. Just uh, thank you. It's no get over it, but it'll do. So you got this, uh, dare I say, prankster, Chef Keith. Yes. Uh, he, he's got a couple of videos that are going viral today. and uh, Hilarious. Basically, he went on uh, the local news programs mm -hmm. and uh, kind of made believe he was a real chef with some clever, clever ideas. And these just... Oops. It was ridiculous. If you watch it, it's a ridiculous segment where right. uh, anybody in their right mind would go, this guy's like he's screwing up our news show. <laughs> right. Uh, so our Twitter account, O and A Show, uh, tweeted the videos. But we want to talk to him, and we got him, man. Chef Keith. What's up, Keith? Hey, good morning. You got the exclusive. This is huge. This is just amazing. <laughs> I can't believe we got this one. He's, uh -huh. <laughs> he's calling uh, from Kiev. Yeah, right. <laughs> we uh, we love the videos, sir, because we we love making fun of the local news. We think uh, they're all just completely ridiculous. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, well, I we uh, do a show called the Found Footage Festival, my buddy Joe Pickett and I, and we often do these local morning news shows in, like, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and things like that. And, you know, nobody ever really listens to what you're saying. It's, it's <laughs> like, 6 a.m., and, I, I mean, I never know who's watching at that point, like farmers or whoever. And they always had on TV chefs, too. Um, so we were back in Wisconsin, where we are from originally over the holidays, and uh, kind of bored, and we thought it'd be fun to try to get on as as a chef. Um, <laughs> so, and so that's where Chef Keith came from. Right. How did you actually get on? Yeah, because we were trying to figure that out. I mean, we, like I said, we know they're stupid, but they can't possibly be that stupid where they're not uh, checking into it. Well, there wasn't much vetting. We wrote up a press release that had a fake book cover on it, and uh, you know, made an email from a publishing company and. Uh, and then also wrote a fake article for Good Housekeeping that I, I wrote in November. And uh, <laughs> had, had the mashed potato ice cream cone recipe on it. And uh, and so we just attached that uh, to the emails, and we sent out 10, and we got seven responses back, and they all wanted them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Uh, were you nervous the first time you went on TV to try it out? Well, I mean, I'm a sociopath. I had I lack empathy, so no. Um, uh, okay, okay. That's, no, that no. Helps. Actually, I yeah, I was uh, I was terrible because I knew I had to come over and knock over a table on on live television. So I told I, you, Jimmy. I said he absolutely did that on purpose. Oh, that you did. Yeah. That was oh, very yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we scored the leg of it beforehand, and. Uh, and kind of set it on the edge of this platform. And then, uh, yeah, there's an entire turkey and a microwave and a full <laughs> gallon of milk on there when it fell. <laughs> <laughs> and they just panicked and went to, I think it was uh, weather on that clip. Yeah, yeah, they, they just, uh, yeah, kind of called for a lifeline and threw it straight back to the news anchors at that point. 
And, and just coming up with ridiculous things. We, yeah, we played the one with the ice cream cone. With the you, have, you pour the gravy on the bottom of it, but you don't even heat up the gravy because no, your, your hand hands going to warm it well, up. Warm it up. Well, that was the grossest thing. Was that you know <laughs> all the restaurants were closed on Christmas, so uh, the only thing that was open was KFC. So <laughs> we'd go into uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken and get mashed potatoes and gravy, and then it'd sit in my rental car in freezing Wisconsin weather overnight, <laughs> right. and it'd be this cold gelatinous mass in a milk <laughs> jug. <laughs> and, uh, and then it'd be like, you know, 5.30 in the morning, and I'd be in the dark parking lot uh, in the rental car uh, with the light on, like lining up cranberries on a chicken leg, just kind of <laughs> questioning what I was doing with my life. And uh, so, But they bought it. Yeah. They bought they it right no in. Ever, yeah, no one questioned it. Everyone afterwards uh, was polite, thanked me for coming. Um, you know, wish me the best of luck on my book signing. Um, and, uh, and then I actually, one woman apologized to me for the segment, not going better. So oh, <laughs> now there's a montage clip uh, out there where you make her taste, um, uh, the blended up, uh, I think it was thanks Thanksgiving, uh, leftovers, yeah. but right. they don't, they don't show her reaction. What happened there? I just, she, she took just the littlest sip. Right. Like she went right for it, which which surprised me. <laughs> but she just took the littlest sip, and this this smoothie it doesn't really show up on on the video. But it was just I mean it was raw cranberries <laughs> and milk. There are pieces of turkey in it. And <laughs> it's, it's I didn't disgusting. have time to blend it up very much, so it was just kind of like a chunky stew uh, that just really smelled bad. And she put it up to her lips, tasted a little bit, Ugh. and then. Uh, put on a brave face. Right. She's kind of professional. Subject. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But have you thought these recipes through? Because they don't sound like they're very tasty. <laughs> uh, the answer is no. Uh, these were just basically the stupidest concepts you could come up with. Well, was, when was when you're blending up the leftovers and then you're pouring it into the milk, oh. the milk uh, container to save... Yeah. yeah. Oh there's six God. there's six meals in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's six <laughs> meals in here. And then you pour those blended up leftovers on your leftovers. Right. Oh you're, my god. You're cannibalizing your own leftovers. That's great. <laughs> well, and, and then on one of the segments, I had a pre-made uh, turbo gravy milk jug uh, with a bow on it for them as kind of a gift to the cat crew of the, <laughs> the morning show. And I uh, heard back from one of the news shows that they, uh, they that uh, after this went viral, they, they looked in their uh, break room refrigerator and it was still there with the bow on it. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> Send me a picture of it. So I guess, I guess there are no takers. When did you uh, make all these videos? Uh, it was, we were back for Thanksgiving and then again over Christmas. So we just did it like the day, a couple days after Thanksgiving and after Christmas. Oh, okay. Relatively new. I wasn't sure if they were a couple years old or whatever. Yeah, no, no we just, we just decided to post them Monday because we have this big sound footage festival, uh, national tour launching on, uh, on Thursday. So we thought oh, it'd cool. get some, some, some hits. It must, no, have, it must have been tough to hold back on those videos knowing you had gold. <laughs> It was, and, and we play like uh, you know more of the videos in, in our live uh, uh, show and tell the story, but uh, but yeah, it was hard because we knew we had something there, but uh, but we had to wait till the right time to launch it. Now, did anyone catch on at all? Did you get the inkling that somebody might have been like, hmm? Oh. I, I really didn't. Uh, you, you know, I was. You know, when Nothing. the table got knocked over, and um, it's me and the, the news anchor with a mop trying to uh, mop up all the spilled milk and everything. Uh, she didn't look happy about it, um, and I felt bad. But uh, she, at the end of it, just said. Uh, you know, I, I bet a lot of people come to your book signing today because this is a memorable TV moment. Ah, there you go. So, yeah. So even then, the veneer was not lost. She she still thought I was a an wow. author and chef. They really are amazing. But, but cutting out the pita, you know. Yeah, uh, with the marker, the sharpie, the sharpie on the bread, making oh. that turkey hand like. Yeah, I, and, I mean, and then the you only, apologize because uh, the there was a ton more ideas of of uh, recipes that we weren't able to do. So yeah, um, uh, but yeah, the uh, the hand turkey things, the uh, ants on a leg, right? Uh, <laughs> raw cranberries on a turkey leg. I mean, I, we just kept pushing it further and further as we as we realized people would try anything. Well, tell, and plus telling that one uh, woman that uh, people eat a pound and a half of fecal matter every fecal year. Fecal matter. <laughs> what a great fact. <laughs> right, that's a fun statistic at uh, six thirty a.m. Uh, what well, factoid? Well, we pointed out besides being a really brilliant idea, your delivery on your on your lines were really really fun. Oh, no, thanks. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice timing on the whole you thing. You give them just enough. Like, you'll say some little aside that's really funny and then go right back to the conversation so they can't really address what you just said. They kind of nervously <laughs> laugh and continue. It's really and, funny, man. And you brought up Gigi Allen. Yeah, Gigi Allen. <laughs> <laughs> as, well, like, what, as, what, as an influence. Yeah. What are the, what's the most inappropriate name to bring well, up? Of yeah. course. Morning show? And what, they just nod like, yeah, we know Gigi. Oh, Gigi yeah, Allen. Uh, no, I haven't heard of him. But uh, You do realize he shoved bananas up his ass and then yeah. threw it at the audience, right? <laughs> yeah, well, let me tell you more about it. I think your audience is going to love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're going to love this in the morning. <laughs> and then uh, Turbo Lover you brought up. Uh, that's well, that's yeah, for turbo the Turbo, turbo Gravy. Turbo Gravy. Yeah, but and, that's, uh, a, that's a bad boy song. Just, just the wrong audience for this kind of stuff. Of course. Yeah. She was a priest song called Turbo Lover. It's like, what's that got to do with anything? <laughs> right. And now your last name is not Gerke. <laughs> it, it is not. Um, my, la my full name's Nick Pruer, but uh, when I was growing up in Madison, Wisconsin, they had a, uh, a thing called Madison's Most Wanted that would air on, on local TV. It was all the most wanted criminals in the area. Yeah. And, and we would uh, sit around and watch this show at 2 in the morning on public access TV and record it and and pick out our favorite criminals. And my favorite guy was this guy named Keith Gerke, Keith R. Gerke. And uh, he, he was just kind of this mulleted man with a thin uh, a mustache, I think was in for battery or something, but he had such a great look. So we thought, uh, let's pay tribute to him with the, uh, as, as a chef here. Nice. Uh, you have any other videos that you're holding back, or is, or is that it? I don't. We have some, some ideas. I kind of got to wait till this blows over and uh, and do the other one. You may have seen, though, a few years ago uh, with our friend Mark Brooks, we did a, a prank uh, news show called uh, Kenny Stresser, the Yo-Yo Expert. Of course, we play that today as well. That oh, okay. Where he's sure. getting all tangled up in the Yo-Yo's. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're looking at other things that are on morning shows. You know, there's, like, somebody coming on telling you how to how to do fun things with a scarf, you know, and, th and, and doing fashion shows and things like that. So, the, the really, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, they yeah. really are endless, man. When you watch these news shows, you see these segments, and they almost look like a goof when they're real. I was going to say, even so, when they're legit, yeah. they look, yeah. So, you could uh, yeah. get away with a lot, man. Well, congratulations. a lot of time to fill, yeah. Congratulations, man. We we loved it. Yeah, I thought it. it was great. We absolutely loved it. Um, Thanks, guys. I'll let you know when the, the next thing hits. Cool. So, so what are you promoting? The the Found Footage Festival. What is that a, about? Yeah, we find old VHS tapes, like uh, exercise videos, training videos, other people's home movies. Uh, we find them at like Salvation Armies and Goodwills, and uh, we watch them all, pick out you know the funny parts, and uh, edit them into digestible chunks. And then it's sort of like a live guided tour of our video collection. Uh, so we tra track down the people in the videos, and uh, uh, yeah, we're, we tour all over the country. With it. It's our, our 10th anniversary with the show. Wait, you, were you the guys that did Winnebago Man? Yeah, well, we didn't direct it, but we were in the movie. No, that's what I mean. You, yeah. where you brought them around? Yeah, Jack Rebney. Uh, mm. Holy uh, shit, that's you guys. Guy. Yeah, yeah. That was a career highlight for sure, meeting the angry <laughs> RV guy. I didn't, I didn't make the connection. So, yeah, you guys found Winnebago Man, and then you you, you toured with the guy a little bit and showed yeah. uh, uh, the... Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, well, what, when we when he found out we were showing his videos all across the country, he was he was uh, upset by it, <laughs> and that's I guess we should have known. He's you know he's called the angriest RV salesman in the world. Very so. angry, yeah, really. But when he when he came to the show in San Francisco, like his arms were folded, he was very you know sort of cross with us. But when he saw how much joy uh, <laughs> this brought to people and how much people were laughing. You know, we we describe him as like the Grinch, where his heart grew three times the size that day. <laughs> yeah, you know, he yeah. just we, we hugged him at the end, and you know, this is a guy who called a fly a goddamn jackass. So right. <laughs> he, he's a poet, really. Wow, I didn't make the connection. That's very cool. Yeah, I thought what you guys were doing was very clever and very unique. So, uh, yeah, thanks. It's, it's it's fun. We we're continually surprised that people dig it. So, and you've been so. and you've been touring with these uh, these uh, tapes for a while now, huh? Yeah, this is our tenth anniversary. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. So this is a brand new show. We just launched all new new stuff we found over the last year on tour. All right, turn us on to one one really good one you found. Uh oh wow yeah there's one uh, we found on Long Island at a thrift store. Oh god, uh, I hope it's not one of my old air checks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's called uh, it's called uh, Special Delivery. Pretty okay. innocuous title. Okay. Um and uh, but the subtitle is a Practical Guide to Welping. And uh, you know what whelping is? We didn't know what it was. No, welting. 
Welping yeah, is, with a P. Welping? A, oh. <laughs> this is a puppy giving birth. It's oh, okay. Welping. Um, so this is uh, a video for uh, dog breeders about whelping. And uh, so there's a sort of um, uh, a woman who looks like a dog breeder, basically, hosting the show. Mm. And she comes out, and it's pretty, pretty normal. And then she says, well, by now you should know that your bitch is pregnant. And then, you, you know, they don't realize it, but they continue saying it. Like, she interviews a, a veterinarian, and he's like, when you have an overweight bitch. Now, the problem <laughs> with a fat bitch is that it can affect the birthing process. Yeah, they don't realize and, how entertaining it is to watch somebody saying that. They, they just think it's, you know, normal. Hey, we're talking about a dog. Right. Yeah. Right, and it's like, you know, the, I think like, they don't realize that the word has been reclaimed to mean something else. So they're yeah. continuing on and, and, you know, like talking to dog breeders, like, how do you handle your bitches, Jeremy? And uh, so we cut together all, I think it's 68 bitches from the video uh, in a row, and uh, it, it's pretty incredible. And it's on the site? Uh, it's not on the site, but it's, it, it opens up the live show. We'll post a clip from it uh, uh, soon on our website. Oh, you son of a bitch, because we're going to play it right now. <laughs> and now if, we you give, if you give away the milk, you're not going to want to buy the cow. That's that's our. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, but but no, yeah. Foundfootagefest.com has a bunch of different videos, exercise videos, and the Jack Rebney video, of course. Okay, very good. Really, really good stuff, Keith. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. Take it easy. All right. See you guys. All right. Uh, there you go. I didn't know it was the same guy. You yeah. saw Winnebago Man, right? Oh yeah. That guy's. Uh, he's a hoot. He really is. <laughs> A pleasure. What a joy. <laughs> Can we find the original video? The Winnebago Man video? No, no, no. Whelping. Whelping? No, I, I, we probably would have a tough time finding it. Mm. Puppy whelping. Oh. What, what? Little, poor little things. Yeah. Uh. Hey, sometimes you gotta break a pup in. <laughs> yeah, you gotta teach you how to whelp. <laughs> Yeah, see, the puppies give birth when they're young. That's when the older dog shows the young puppy how to make an older dog happy. It's, uh, Sometimes it's you got to lick your paws. It's alarming. Get the back really <laughs> wet. just alarming. Lick your paws and get it wet. Yeah. They teach you how to whelp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah don't you go crying. This is part of nature. Mm. Yeah, show you how to... Show you how to give birth. Everyone gets creeped out in the room. <laughs> it's not fun. You know how to react it's to it. It's not fun or anything. No, it's, it's like, just creepy. Uh, hey, what to do? That's what the puppies, you show them the movie. Look how happy the puppies are when they're whelping. Oh, mm. well, as long as they're happy. I'm going to teach you how to whelp where the poo comes out. Ah, uh, jeez. Oh, Can you find another video from that uh. guy's site? <laughs> After it's the break, got to get worse and you know, worse. I think he's a creep. Oh, it's oh. so creepy to to listen to. <laughs> Just go back in time, and, and you think to yourself, "Did that happen to me?" Yeah, I don't even know. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm kidding. oh I'm yeah, kidding. Jesus. that's oh, understandable. Boy. Your memories are a little washed away. <laughs> get your back kissed. Remember that <laughs> <laughs> on Long Island. Uh, found footage festival uh, footage fest found. Footagefest.com. Okay, for more of those type of videos. Imagine your mind just like, like snaps in. You're like, oh my god! You all of a sudden remember this horrific oh abuse god. That, that you had. It's like, what? Holy shit! What the fuck happened? That would be pretty goddamn bad. Yeah, but you gotta remember your part in it. <laughs> <laughs> Crawling around like that. Oh, look at my legs. <laughs> you know, he's blaming the adult. That must be the problem. Uh, Sitting there drinking some sardine, Earl. You know what you was doing. Sardine, Earl. Sure. Of course. You'd put it on your fingers. I'd suck it off your fingers. Yeah, I hear you. You'd dip your hand in the sardine, Earl. Here, Uncle Paul. <laughs> 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 I know most people have seen this, but can we play the trailer for Winnebago Man? You want the trailer or the original Winnebago Man video? Well, that, it's a long video. A coutrement. Yeah, play play the trailer. Because this really was a, a terrific little uh, film. Would you do me a friendly? Please. Here we go. The Winnebago Concepts and Engineering Departments have developed a multifunctional bathroom. Privacy, I don't even know what the f*** I'm reading. I'm going to slate this you big dumb son. He's angry. What happened? Oh, it's uh. Wait. 
I don't want any more bull from anyone. That includes me. I love this clip. I watch it like every time I'm in a bad mood. Oh, I've seen this like hundreds of times. This guy's a legend. Yeah. Make my mind work. <laughs> Chad Rebney would be the holy grail of stars to meet from these videos. We could never find him, so we just assumed he was gone. I went and you found start the to guy. Think, well, who is this guy? What happened to him? That's weird. There's no property. There's no cars. There's no voter registration. What does that mean? You don't want anybody to really know who you are and what you're about. This is Jack Repney. It's inconceivable to me that you would have any interest in this. But if you want to talk, I'm interested. Very I'm in the middle of nowhere. Hello, I'm Jack Repney. I'm known as the angriest man on earth. Kutrama that you will need. A Kutrama? What is that? Yeah. It's always wanted an audience. I just don't think that you're taking advantage of this group of people that you can talk to. I have no relationship with YouTube. The only thing it will come to is... Oh, this guy's been crazy all his life. I'll give you a couple of diatribes. Action Jack. How's your audio? Is everything all right there? Security guard right there. Call the police now. Get to the Gestapo. <laughs> Want to talk about me? Yeah. I'm very old. I'm very crotchety. What else is new? If you don't like it, pack up. Get the f out. Here we go. Buckle up. Yeah. Do you believe any of that? Sh Get out of here, you flies. That's a trailer. <laughs> it's amazing, though. I, I love that movie, though. Guy goes away. Right. Just fucking disappears. Mm -hmm. And then years later, it's like, hey, that thing you did. You're a big star now. <laughs> How do you know? And they just showed uh, Chef Keith. I recognize yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was in uh, that one little uh, clip there. So I didn't know that I didn't know that guy was connected to Winnebago. Man. Oh, That's it's a cool. small world. Kind of cool. And yeah. Winnebago, man, when they found him in the middle of nowhere in the mountains or whatever, he was blind. Remember? What year was that documentary? Oh, right. I would say about five years okay. old by now, right? It's 2010, so about... Okay, four or five years. And um, he remember he had all the string and rope so he could walk around his oh, place. So oh, is that what yeah, that was yeah. for? Oh. Yeah, yeah he, couldn't, he couldn't see anymore, really. Yeah. And then they brought him on tour because these guys, like like you said, they find all these weird tapes and they just tour with him. What a smart idea. Yeah. And one of them was Winnebago Man, and then, you know, the rest is history. They brought him out on tour and filmed the whole thing. All right. Mm. So that's that. And that's that. And now this is this. Opie and Anthony's phone slam with Club Soda Kenny. Hello? Is Ray there? Speaking. Who's this? I'm calling from work. I was just getting ready to leave. Don't bother. You're fired. Are you serious? As a heart attack. Who is this? Go to unemployment instead. Who is this? You've just been phone slammed. Why do you keep calling me? A uh, goodbye. Next week on a very special Opie and Anthony show. The guys learn old habits die hard. Jimmy, you okay, man? You feel all right? Yeah. You, you seem sick or something. I'm just. You fucking guys don't appreciate me, man. When Jimmy shows up late, questions arise. You all right? You sure you're I'm fine? I'm late, fucking one fucking time. Jimmy, I'm gonna ask you something very. It might be sensitive what? here. Yeah, I don't fucking. Do you... What the fuck do I care? Have Have you been drinking? Who fucking care? What? What? Do you fucking care all of a sudden? You don't give a fuck. Listen as friends and listeners come together to solve a problem. Well, Mongo the trucker, he wants to know how you feel about E Rock. Fuck Mongo. What are you part of the fucking show? Well, now it's the Opie and Anthony and Mongo show. <laughs> Get fucked, Mongo. But at least he still thinks Gary sucks. I think we've proven we care. Ha yeah, fucking. Where's Gary? Fuck him. <laughs> Laugh, love, and learn. You're not gonna drink today, right? I'm just fucking doing what I do, man. You do what you do, I'm fucking just doing what I do. Fair enough. Next week on a very special Opie and Anthony show. Fuck you, I'm fine. The Opie and Anthony show is back. On Sirius XM. I smell sandwiches. I, 
I got to tell you. Oh. I'll wait for Jimmy. I got to tell you. I Jimmy. I got to tell you. I want to wait for you. Hi, buddy. You, you do know that the listeners love when we oh. eat. On oh, the yeah, air. they're happy for this? us. Like, ah, the guy's got some good chow. Good, good, here Apparently. comes the. I can't believe we uh, didn't promote the fact that we would be eating sandwiches today on the show. <laughs> we, it was a surprise. I apologize to the listeners. To the listeners. I do apologize. We know that they like uh, budgeting their time. Yes. So they're not like going into work or something. Yeah. Maybe they could call in and take the day off because right. they know we're going to be eating food. Exactly. They don't want to miss that. No. Yeah, what? Yeah. What are prosciutto balls? Oh, I don't know, but prosciutto's really mad. <laughs> See? <laughs> he says. <laughs> he goes, um, Roland, how's the diet? <laughs> well, today is a celebratory day because of Eric's birthday. Oh, so oh that's a celebratory that's day. Should we have that a, why we're eating? Cake? Should we have a surprise uh, weigh-in? Oh, uh, <laughs> surprise weigh-in? Anyone? What a coincidence. It's uh, also Fat Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also got a text that Sunday was a celebratory, which he texts. Celebratory, text, yeah. He texts the same way he says. Celebratory day because celebratory. of the Oscars. So that means he's not fucking. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, celebratory. This sandwich is so damn good. Oh, God, well, yeah. the I, went, I the, went for the healthy option. Yeah, the mm. onis is the best. Oh, my God. What is that? You go Leonis, you get a happy sandwich. Where, where are we at? Leonis. What's in the box? <laughs> the Leonis guys, they've come by before. Oh, yes, yeah. a few times. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It's hard to not eat this stuff. They have a. Uh, What's that? They said it was Ali. No, they just they just like it because they think it's cool. Oh, that's a happy birthday, Rock Cake. Oh. This is one of those classic segments that we'll have to save. Yeah, this yep. will make the yeah. podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that smells very good. Oh, it was today Iraq's e birthday? Well, it was it was Sunday, but well, was how come we're not celebrating with a big ago. song? I've never wanted to push a phone into a cake. Iraq e is holding his phone <laughs> over his cake. <laughs> Just smack it down onto it. Yeah, should we sing? How old are you, E? Yeah, how old a how old a fucking lad are you? Get 40. up to that mic and, and torture it. Yeah. You're forty? Congrats. Yeah, he's forty today. Wow. No, wrong employee. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Forty on Sunday. No. Oh. Still wrong employee. Mm -hmm. I am uh, thirty six. Wow. Yeah. Over the hump. Right. Yep. On that highway down to 40. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is that the expression? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right over the hill. You know when you're driving in uh, maybe the desert, somewhere where you see that long stretch of road, and there's a hill? Right. And you come over the top, and you just see, after you, you, you crest the top of the hill, you see all that land spread out? Right. That's the rest of your life. Oh. And you can pretty much see it. Oh. So, like in the end? Like yeah, yeah. The end of the road is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the lights of L.A. You know what that means, it's right? over. Mm -hmm. Not seeing the light. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Once you get past the desert, that's the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Well, no. The light is the end. Yeah. And you see in the distance. Happy birthday, Eric. Thank you. I guess. All right, how we actually we don't know it's his birthday. He got those Simpson gifts. We went over his gifts. Yeah. Right. We know it was his birthday. I well, we, wanted, uh, we didn't want to say anything that Roland was going to... Do this big food thing, but I think Iraq knew, right? Yeah. Yeah, he knew. Iraq, you can't have that stuff because of the diet, right? What oh diet? boy, he's maintaining. I mean, he's maintaining. Yeah, he's in the maintenance. He's just maintaining. I'll take off the. I'll take it off from the bread. And dip into it. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds good. Are you staying on some kind of diet? Yeah, I had my uh, <laughs> smoothie this morning, Ooh. And, a, and a tea. Oh, okay, and if you had a it. smoothie oh. and a tea, you might as well have a sub. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be rude not to. They came all this way. Well, yeah. You had your meal replacement for the morning, so you might as well have a nice sandwich at 10 a.m., right? Yeah, that'll be... Uh, they, that'll played be your, they played your song during the Oscars. Which song? Let It Go. Oof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's a good celebration. Wow. Hey, you're going to have a sandwich? This oh, this segment is not a home run. Uh -uh. No, it is, Jimmy, I'm telling you. People love it. They really do. We don't even have to put a lot of effort in it. Iraq, tell them, you only get one birthday yeah. and one two days after your birthday. Right. So, you know, help According yourself. to Roland, What did you and the wife do? Uh, Anything? Dinner? We had, um, we had some family over on Saturday. Ooh. And had barbecue. It was delicious. Barbecue? That's healthy. It is. Oh, you sent out you, for like barbecue. We had it catered. Yes. Oh, okay. Whoa. I was gonna say it's a little cold. Brisket. 
ribs. Mm. Did you have a special yummy. treat on your birthday? Um, on your actual birthday. On the actual birthday, she made my favorite dinner. That's good. At least she's helping you. Yeah. So this is your third big celebratory meal? This would be it. What was, wait, you what was your favorite it. dinner? Yeah, might I, I need to know your favorite meal. My favorite meal is German goulash. <laughs> Ooh, that's not, that's delicious. It's, what a fucking shitty favorite meal that is. Uh, uh, of course. Really? Wait, Are you yes. having hot soup? What? Goulash is amazing. Yeah, I know. My goulash is amazing, but why is German goulash amazing? What, what's it, the difference? It's a thick, uh, thick brown uh, sauce where the beef stews in it all day in a crock pot. That's goulash. And then you have uh, noodles with Jarlsberg cheese melted on it. He <laughs> rocked. <laughs> <laughs> and sour cream and cucumber. Can we do it? Can we do a surprise weigh-in, Sam? No. Please. I think fair You've is fair. You've had three birthday meals. I need to know. Good. Your fly's open. I, it's Whoa. always open, you faggot. Oh. Yeah, That's so Opie will show Stop his looking. big delicious cock. No, I, I, it's hard not to look over. That's just meal number four. <laughs> screaming out for a kiss. <laughs> Speaking of... <laughs> yeah, it's dessert. <laughs> we'll eat cake. You can eat that. <laughs> Speaking of meat. Mmm. Look what's hanging out of Opie's pants. Yeah, exactly. Speaking Hello. of prosciutto. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, right. quick weigh in. Have a couple bites. Jump on the scale. Mm. Yeah, why not? <laughs> no. What sandwich is that? Roast beef? Uh, roast yeah. Beef, yeah. Roast beef. American. Yeah, this shit's mm. pretty righteous. Um, mm. Prosciutto. Yep. That's the Onions. one I'm having. Am I going to get in trouble for saying faggot? Maybe. See, see what happens now? You got to think about this uh -huh. stuff. Uh huh. Well, it's not like you meant it in a get. Oh. <laughs> Is that the problem? <laughs> no, it's fine, dude. You're just fucking with your coworker. Jesus. Yeah, I think we're all right. You never know. Mm. What are you eating, Anthony? Same thing. Roast beef. What did you have, Ob? That looked good. It was amazing. Turkey and some kind of cheese. Is there any more turkey? I no mayo or anything, though. A little, little, uh, little, little vinegar and oil. And I took oh, mayonnaise. The, and I took half the bread off. The pepper brought it all together nicely. Oh, I don't have anything. It's turkey with eggplant, though. Oh! <laughs> Egg, you ah. fucking eggplant. And I only had one little sliver. How's the birthday boy sandwich? <laughs> Delicious. We get, to get a scale. That's we what I'm a, talking uh, about. No, he said no. No, he didn't. I did say no. Yeah, oh, Adrian, I'm bring the scale in. <laughs> I did in. say no. <laughs> Adrian, will bring the scale in. Okay. No. Did you uh, have any uh, intimate time for your birthday? Yeah, it's always it's nice. Out. Get your it's big prick nice. sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Get that is. big hefty prick sucked. Think he's got a heavy one. Oh yeah, you must get a big hefty prick. Because <laughs> it probably sticks to his ball. So like when he when he pulls it out and yanks it, his prick and balls are all one unit. <laughs> fucking sweat holding his balls. Like he had a hard on and his balls are still gripping the underside of his prick. <laughs> God. Is that the case, birthday boy? He's gonna peel it off like a fruit roll up. Mm. It was fun. Nice. Can I try yes. the icy on this? Go ahead. You, think, you guys working on a baby? Oh, me and Iraq? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I keep practicing in his mouth. <laughs> that work that way. <laughs> uh, oh. Um, yeah. We're waiting. You're dipping it in, right? We're waiting to see. No bag, right? No bag. You're just fucking so, um, let, let fly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Release the hounds. <laughs> Unleash hell. Wow. I just had a bit of frosting. I, I You know, guys... Yeah, I kidding. love frosting. Oh, oh God, who doesn't? I think, I'm, I think I'm in trouble for saying faggot. No. With who? I don't know. Those e imaginary people that You'll get people right. in trouble. You forgive Opie, e rock <laughs> Those imaginary oh, yeah, people. Oh. e rocks cool with it. Don't even worry about it. Because he, he's, you know, from that era. He used to just say the word. You didn't mean anything by it like that. Say the word. You're talking about the 80s? 80s, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. What kind of sandwich is that? Well, that's pretty good. I'm good. <laughs> what, what kind you have, man? I had that roast beefy thing. Here, have the rest of it. These sandwiches are massive. Oh my God, huge! I took one sliver and look at how much I got left. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is at least another two pounds of food. Here. That is a good goddamn roast beef. I'm having Kenny get me two pretzels instead. Oh, oh Jimmy, you're what's, being a good boy. What's the big plug? And do they bring envelopes? Oh, they um, do these guys bring the envelopes? They wanted the, the plug for these guys is the sandwiches. Uh, yes, is April twenty fourth through twenty seventh at Caroline's. They'll be bringing sandwiches <laughs> for the audience for my show. They probably would. <laughs> no, I've... they probably would do just that for you. They're called. Um, uh, let's see, Instagram. I don't know if you're gonna follow them on Instagram. Why would Leone you Heroes. L i o n i Heroes is one word. Mm -hmm. And uh, their food is really, and on Facebook, Leone Heroes. But I don't follow food places on Twitter and stuff like that. But no, you can probably get information much. about where they, 
where they're located. <clears throat> hey, <laughs> Sam, are you letting your jizz fly? I what? let my jizz fly. Yeah. Wow. You sticking, uh, yeah, sticking that unclipped prick in her? It's, oh, it's clipped. We've been over this. Just imagine that. E-Rock has a baby and Sam and... But, uh, wow. What are you going to do? That'd be pretty amazing. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're old now. I True. Know. They're not youngsters. That's what I mean. It's like, but it would be, you know... Sam's like 32 or so at this point. I'm 30 on the dot. Oh, man. Yeah. Not on the dot. It's not your birthday today. Well, I'm 30 in a matter of... <laughs> 30 in, 30, I'm 30 and a half. <laughs> 30 print five. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No bag all the time? Yeah. yeah. What do you pull out usually? I'll pull out from time to time. Okay. Why? Oh, just for the fun of it? Just because. Just, I mean, yeah. Yeah, just because yeah. sometimes you got to show them who's boss. you got to right. climb right, up to the right, pillow right. and aim right for that nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't all put it all in one spot all the time. Establish your dominance. That's right. You pull out and you, you quickly do that crawl up to the pillow and you aim right for the bridge of the nose. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't tried that one yet. <laughs> you aim right for the fucking hair. The oh. wacky, awkward little knee crawl. Absolutely. You got to bob backland your way up to the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they Instagrammed? A plate of meat? That's our sandwiches being made. Oh, wow. They look terrific. That's an amazing uh, Instagram account. <laughs> Why are we not... Leone Wade Heroes on Instagram. They disappeared. Well, the bosses said to get weighed. Yeah. Well, the bosses want the guys weighed. No, the man. guys get weighed. It's on you. Cause yeah. it's, let's, let's get weighed. <laughs> it's on you, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy's well. demanding this. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't mind that responsibility, do you? Could, no. Oh, look at the, the cup <laughs> Thank with, you. Two with two pretzel big sticks. pretzel sticks in it. It's my treat. That's what you do. That's a treat? Mm-hmm. See, because he didn't want to eat the sandwich. So he wants to eat something. That's very smart. Huh? Oh, I don't think, I don't think they're coming there. down to get weighed today. No, they're, so no, they're too you. busy making out with their sandwiches. They say, fuck you. Happen. What? The executive producer and the bosses say, come down, they come down. Bosses well, said, yes. Yeah. Jimmy wants this done today. If the talent wants the segment to happen, I need to make sure it's going to happen. Yeah, we want to happen. All right. You think they have totally given up on their diets? Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> God, why? They were both doing well. I literally talked. Roland, Roland was down like twenty five pounds. Yeah, but he was up and five he, the last time. And he time. already dipped back and uh, threw five five pounds back on in a week. Mm. And every day's been a celebratory day for one reason or another. <laughs> Cel celebratory. 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 Ce it's celebratory. I think. It's celebratory. 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 Can we uh, make a list of all the celebrations Roland has had since losing twenty five pounds? Yeah. Yeah. It's Groundhog Day at Puxatawney Field. Uh, it's, 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 it's Tuesday. Puxatawney. Sam's going down the hall to see. Yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> this yeah. is Jimmy's thing. Sam's little walk is hilarious. I don't, I don't feel like being blamed today. Jimmy wants this done. I want it done, too. Why All right. Not? I I'm, officially I'm don't want it done. I'm in. I want to, I want to see uh, See what they uh, gain. Oh, here's e Rock. Oh, boy. Here's the E. E-Rock. Uh -huh. Not today we didn't. I know. We don't need to keep doing this every week. Are you, are you, you losing weight? We're no. happy for you, dummy. No, you're not. Yeah, are you, I, are you, no, are you officially not. giving up on the diet? No. No. I'm still doing smoothies and portion control. And German goulash. That was my birthday. That sounds awesome. German. It was great. Of course it is. It's baked noodles and Jarlsberg cheese. <laughs> <and> Jarls. <laughs> Him and his Jarlsberg what, cheese. What does that taste like? It's uh, it's a really strong Swiss cheese. Oh, Ooh, I like a good Swiss. That does good. And then you, uh, Make me a tasty you Swiss. Have a, you have a crock pot cooking all day with uh, stewed pot. meat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stewed meat, and thick gravy, some noodles, thick gravy, and Jarlsberg cheese. <laughs> and that does sound good. And sour cream and cucumbers. What? Makes, what? Yeah. Why would you do that? Sour cream and yeah. cucumbers. You and slice them really thin. And the how do you make before. the? And how do you make the brown sauce so thick? You oh, think? Yeah. That can't be healthy. Um. A lot of butter and some fucking <laughs> no, no, it's flour, uh, flour, lots of flour. I would imagine butter. I'm trying to remember the recipe. It's. Uh, has it has it's it been beef passed stock out? and and you know oh. um, 
They have that whatever that gravy thickening. Oh, <laughs> that good <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Coagulated Throw in shite. Some ox tails. <laughs> it looks like Ajax. You just dump it in. <laughs> Did you have one helping? Yes. Oh, I had, bad. I had leftovers. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine a gravy thicker. A thickener, yeah. It's or thickener. Thin. A gravy thickener is is, is healthy. Yeah. You cook it very thin, and then at the end, you uh, let it keep cooking without the lid on it, so it thickens oh, up. You put yeah. a little of the uh, Gravy thickener in <laughs> thickener. <laughs> and uh, when do you add the Jarlsberg you, cheese? Can you look That's what's a separate? Process. Can you look what's? Oh. look up what's in a gravy thickener. I need to know. Oh, give me a label. I bet it's kind of a flour, right? Mixture, uh, glucose free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Gluten free. Oh, whatever. It glucose. It, it had glucose something. Free. It had something on it that said glucose, glucose free. No, I want the nutritional corn uh, starch. That's stats. what it is. Yeah, it's all like corn it, it starches. It a lot up. of starches. A lot of starch. It's adding starch to it. Starch. Yeah, you add your starch, your gravy <laughs> thickener. Because these are your all your Jarlsberg like, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> these are German <laughs> It's the best. Yeah, because these sure are good. these are all like. Uh, Oh, this might be. Is this it? No, it's not it. A... It's a cornstarch. Yeah, it's just it's just adding cornstarch to it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Don't knock it till you try it. Well, well no, it's who's it's, knocking it? We're, it sounds we're delicious. loving it. Of course, it sounds loving delicious. the way this sounds. Right. Slice the Jarlsberg real thin. <laughs> <laughs> After you cook Stop the noodles, you put that. it on. <laughs> oh. And then you put noodles over it again, and another layer. Oh. And I, then let it. You're, you're making gravy lasagna. Yeah. And then you stir it up. <laughs> I bet you're going over there though and grabbing a slice or two of Jarlsberg just to <laughs> shove it in your mouth. Get your hand off that Jarlsberg. Stop. We don't have enough Jarlsberg. It's for awesome. the German. For the German goulash. goulash. <laughs> oh Whatever's left over, you make into little, uh, little <laughs> tidbits with some gray poutons. Tidbits. <laughs> <laughs> a little appetizer for later. Uh, oh, it's gonna go to waste. Great. Well, yeah, you're, you're not gonna, gonna throw, throw it out. It out. You got a little bit of chunk of your own. Well, it goes to waste. Even if you, <laughs> can I ask a very? Goes to waste. I gotta ask an ass. <laughs> Your wife wants you to lose weight, right? Yeah. So why is she making this? Because it was my birthday. Because <laughs> she's a very good woman, but occasionally pe birthday. people get a little. Whenever you're dealing with someone, they get a little, uh, be like a little mm. codependent sometimes. Yeah, some maybe. It's, did she yeah, ask you what you wanted for your birthday dinner? Yes, she did. And did she roll her eyes or anything when you said you wanted German goulash? No, because it's what I usually have every I'll year. I'll have German goulash so, once every again. year. So she didn't even need to ask. She knows that's your favorite, so she was testing you. Well, she was asking if I maybe would change this year, and no, it didn't. Oh. She was hoping you would say grilled chicken for yeah. well, well, a be salad. <laughs> the night before. A salad. You know what, honey? This year, maybe a salad. Because as we both know, I'm trying to do the right thing. Here. Yeah. Dressing on the side, She was. Please. She was testing you. involved. Cucumbers. Oh, well, there you go. She was <laughs> testing you, I think. Nah, she's just. Well, Jimmy, person. did you want some from him? Because if it comes yeah, I want to see I the way off. I, both of these guys, uh, I was behind 100 percent losing the weight, and I was happy for you guys. And I think you should continue doing it. Well, here's here's the memo. Mm -hmm. First, I gotta go fuck yourself from Roland. Oh. Then I gotta. Why he's Roland celebrating? Roland was in on a bit. Then I gotta. Roland acknowledge that he's celebrating. Celebratory. Then I gotta. Uh, By the way, this is his. I appreciate it, but this is his celebration, I not know. mine. Uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, but I did not sure. order the sandwiches this. for your third birthday meal. Right. Then I got a, what do I get out of it? Eric got $500. Uh, then I got a, I'll follow what Eric does. Okay. Oh. All right, come on down, Roland. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Look at Roro. <laughs> He's going down the studio with a big hero in his left oh, hand. Yeah. cheeks puffed out like a chipmunk. What's that? He does. Oh, God. There he is, my man. Roro, what uh, sandwich? Oh, that's pepperoni. It's just pepperoni and mozzarella. It's like oh, a pizza. My God. Wow, yeah. is that a big fucking thick piece of uh, a mozzarella? It's um, real pepperoni. Grilled that's imitation. pepperoni. Real. Wait. Like, Big slice of Wait, fucking cheese. It's real pepperoni. So that's healthier? Yeah. It's not, it's, 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 it's not like the, the artificial flavors or anything. It's like from the Bolognese in Italy. <laughs> and it's some fresh mozzarella they make at the Leone. So oh, they make all, it right there. And all is good, boys. And we all know cheese is healthy, so it is. you're good um, there. If it's done. Mozzarella, if, feta, and pe parmesan are It's all natural, cheese. pal. Right. It's all the natural cheese. Sam, go ahead. Well, Roland, you said uh, you were behind Eric, whatever he wants to do. 
I no, you say that. I said it might be. No, first you said, go fuck yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is fair. Right. Remember that. Yeah, no, and for me, I don't mean to everybody. Second, you said, uh, what do I get out of it? Eric got 500 bucks. Yeah. And then third, you said, I'm behind Eric, whatever Eric wants to do. I remember the last part. Eric has announced well, that he's prepared for a weigh in. I right, let Eric weigh in. Ah. It's, his, it's his birthday. I don't want to take the thunder or the pounds away. How's right. that sandwich? That looks damn good. Oh, it's mm. good. Mm. When we last left, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you were 338 down from 337. I was at 10. 237. That's right. Sorry, 237. Oh. Yeah. 237. If I have to weigh in, Dr. Egan's going to do backflips in a minute. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. All right, you were at 237, which is down 10 from the original weight. What correct? was the original weight? Uh, 247. Okay. He, at one point, he lost 11 pounds, and now he's he's down only 10 pounds. Look at 10 pounds. Well, Eric is officially in the maintaining phase. Ah, 237. Nice. Oh, maintaining, maintaining, maintaining. But he hasn't. He hasn't put any on. He hasn't put any no. on. No. Okay. And he was able to squeeze in some German goulash. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I got to think that Jarlsberg cheese is, <laughs> isn't uh, fat-free. <laughs> it's all natural. It's well, all natural. It's true. As Obi says, I'm going to sit this one out, boys. What? I'm going to sit this one out. Oh, come on. Well, you said you're doing it. You climb do it. on board. I'm not going to do it, sorry. You don't want to climb on board? No. You're no. in a bad mood I'd today. I'd be sad. Well, oh, it's, you'll but be rolling, sad. I'm not even fucking with you. It's okay to look at it and be sad and just stop what you're... Like, you're in a place uh, where you're, oh. you're kind of slipping back. And it happens. It's a really hard. It's a real hard one. You it's can't tell him this while he's got a delicious. No, nah, but I'm saying I know it's fucking really hard. I'm not saying it's Bro, easy. It's yeah. very, very hard to do, and this is where everybody trips up. Like everybody yeah. starts off okay. No matter what, guys. Uh, I'm gonna have a slice of cake. Oh, that, see, he it's wants a celebration. Have a slice of cake. Did you just birthday. burp. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You don't need it, man. I, I know I what know. you hold see? it for me, Sam. You don't need do it, it Jimmy. You're going does. out. Yeah. Pass up all this delicious it's food and have two though. shitty it's, pretzels. It's really now, hard to do. I, I believe Roland, before the way off, was 337, lost 24 down to 313, added 5 to 318. Roland is in the maintaining phase. Oh, Roland maintain. is 318. There you go. Cake. A little cake. Cake, cake time. <laughs> Are you going to celebrate? No, I'm not. Do I get celebrate Just that you're in the maintaining it. stage? Yes, sugar tits, I am. <laughs> 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 I love this. I don't know why I love this. Oh, because I got olive oil in here too. That's good. That's why is olive oil good? Because it's in Dr. Ian's book. I'm learning today. Oh, yeah. I didn't know olive oil was See, good. I'm gonna put this down. I would assume olive oil. I'm gonna take this back. Can't be, can't be good <laughs> for you unless it's a little bit. Yeah, a little's good, right? But mm. Mm. so funny. The maintaining phase is <laughs> like way too early. I know. <laughs> <laughs> After what, two weeks, whatever it was? Yeah. Eric's my sponsor. Four weeks? Eric's uh, my sponsor. <laughs> Eric is very relieved, I can tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's so relieved. He loves that he's, he's relieved. maintained. Fuck it, I'm going to run around the block. Woo. <laughs> he loves the fact that he's squeezing some German goulash with what she like. Jarlsberg. 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 But Berg. A, a good yeah. goulash is amazing. We all yeah. know that. Yeah. <laughs> we all love goulash. Gulash. That's not the debate. I bet that, <laughs> we're not debating that. I bet that meat's very tender in that crock pot for that long, right? It just falls apart. Just falls apart, right? Oh, what kind of meat? Like um, some braised beef. big beef, braised mm -hmm. beef. Yeah. Whatever they use for stews. And, right? Oh, so yeah. good. Oh. And the ninja slow cooker. <laughs> It's the best. It's just, get those juices. <laughs> it's a lot going on at that Nagel house. Oh boy, a lot of they got gadgets. all the appliances. A lot of right, gadgets are on. Sits right next to the NutriBullet. Oh. <laughs> NutriBullet, you sad. Fridge. Oh, that's you go, great. Uh, a man who knows how to eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. I bet you could whip up some good pancake batter in that NutriBullet. <laughs> nice light, <laughs> light pancakes. <laughs> oh. Right. I didn't think about that. There you go. So, what's the big plug? Lin oh, just uh, Leone's. Leone's. Oh, they okay. I was trying to remember. Yeah, where Leone's they're from. heroes. Brooklyn. They're delicious. Right. Very yeah. cool. Thanks to those guys. Mm -hmm. Big and supporters of the Open Anthony Mushrella. Show. They're, their sandwiches are ridiculous. They're mm -hmm. they're yeah, so that, they're damn, delicious. Uh, that was pretty goddamn good. And they got a good bread too, which is the key. I'm gonna go back sorry. and maintain. All right. <laughs> Keep maintaining, buddy. Yeah. As he walks out Keep with his up. pepperoni. 
mozzarella sandwich and an iced coffee that looks like it's heavy on the cream. <laughs> that is a light little iced coffee there. That's a we, milky. We got, we got to stop allowing the food in. We're, not that oh. we can make him eat better, but we're pushing Roland. We're, we're contributing he, to yeah. fucking Roland, throwing himself off a cliff. He's the one yeah. that's makes the phone call. No, no, so. he, dude, he's responsible. He's ultimately responsible. We're not ordering up sandwiches. But it's we're not all, even his birthday. Nobody even asked for it. But we're him. still allowing <laughs> them. his birthday. If we told him we won't plug these guys on the air no matter who they are from now on. Oh, it's not about plugging. In. He don't care. Dude, number one, we didn't plug the cake. And number two, Eric asked for no cake. Is the cake different? Yeah, the Leone's doesn't make cakes. I want to fart on the cake so bad. Why? Uh, ruin it for everybody? I won't. Fart Thank cake. You. Fart cakes are the worst. Mm. <laughs> I had one little taste of frosting. It was a home run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where's the cake from? Because Roland only goes to the best places in New York. It's, you want me to plug it? It's from Amy's Bread. Oh, it's not oh, pedestrian. He, lo he loves Amy's Bread. He loves it there. He's yeah, a huge fan not of Amy's pedestrian. Bread. Pedestrian. No, he doesn't, he doesn't do pedestrian. Mm, oh. How big these sandwiches are. Oh, I know. They're giant sandwiches. Mm. I don't know. I just have one little slice. Off of it. Just a little taste. That's it. A little taste. All right, let's uh, get the plugs in and get the hell out of here. Well, my big plugs are the Ontario, California Improv this Thursday through Saturday. Virginia Beach, March 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Tampa for the Cowhead Roast, April 10th. And then uh, Side Splitters, April 11 and 12. And April 24th through 27 is Caroline's here in New York. Nice. All right. All right, ladies and gents. Do I have any um, words of wisdom? No, you do not. Wow, what happened there? I wonder what Chef Keith could do with some of these <laughs> leftover sandwiches. <sighs> yeah, he was fun, man. Make sure you listen to the replay. We got the the guy on that did the, the fake cooking segments on, on the local news. Pepperoni. He, he was cool. <laughs> oh, shit. How bad would you... Oh, I would I love would eat to eat that. that. It's all I want to do. I want to eat that cake until I'm shitting cake. <laughs> <laughs> I would get like a little uh, red sauce on the side to just dip oh, that in. Right? Yes. Fuck, I would love to do oh, it. Oh, some sauce with that would be amazing. It's like you're eating a Good. pizza sandwich, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <sighs> All right, guys, we've run out of steam, obviously, so we're going to call it for today. Great show. Thanks for listening. It was fun. And we'll see you all. Tomorrow. The Opie and Anthony Show has drawn to a close. Stay tuned to reflect, reflect, relive, and get the story behind the story of the finest moments of today's show. Sam Roberts' Opie and Anthony Post Show begins in moments. Unfortunately, the Opie and Anthony Show is over. Fortunately, we have a hard time letting go. The stories behind the stories. Behind the stories. The backstage drama. Everything that made today unforgettable. Call 866-WOW-1-WOW now. And look back on another legendary day of broadcasting. This is the Opie and Anthony Post Show. Post Show with Sam Roberts. Mics are on. Mics are on. Mics are on. Mics are on. Yes, they are. Welcome to the post show. Don't worry. He's trying to make me go to dinner with someone I don't want to go to dinner with. Who is it? I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm keeping a mystery, I guess. It is. It's a mystery. I'm not going to dinner with that guy. No? No. That's too bad. I didn't know you had, had hang-ups. <laughs> I don't have hang-ups. I'm, I'm, hang I'm not going to dinner with that guy. Hang-ups. Everybody does have hang-ups here, Tim. We don't all have to get along. I think, uh, too short. I don't do crazy. I, I, I don't do crazy either. I know, I was just, I was just quoting you. <laughs> I don't do crazy. <laughs> you just said that with disdain. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was just quoting you. <laughs> well, yeah. I think we just got the first Tim Sabian appearance. What, when are you going to have your fucking oh, baby? don't ask that effing <laughs> question. Oh my God, when are you going to have this baby? When are you going to have this baby? I'm doing nine days, and if she doesn't come out soon, I'm going to cut my stomach open myself. It's your first, too, right? Yeah. You do know they go late. Oh, uh, why yeah, would you? they always go late. I'm going to kill myself. My wife went, uh, oh, I should know this. 11 days late, I think we were. <sighs> I... So you might have another. No, don't say you it. You might Obi. have another three weeks. Uh -huh. Don't. I do.
do not have another three weeks. I swear to God, you might have another three weeks. <laughs> I'll kill myself. I'm doing everything in my power. I'm, I'm trying to even bang every when, day. It's not working. <laughs> when uh, uh, when did when did it become not cool being pregnant? Like, it happened, a, like it a week happened, ago. Yeah, because it happens to every woman. Yeah, like, a week like ago. they're so into it. Around eight, eight and a half months, they start going, "Get this thing out yeah, of me." It's not cool anymore. Nicole from the morning mashup is here. Yeah, I'd go to dinner with her. With I'd Nicole. go to dinner with you. Yeah, Why we don't weren't you? talking to. But Tim wants me to go to dinner with this person. Why don't you want to go? Because mm. it's nice of him to not invite you. Because this person is not cool. <laughs> it was funny that, and, and he makes things about himself. Uh. Tim listed the participants <laughs> of going to the dinner. Nope, wasn't feeling it. And Opie listed the participants that he was willing to go to dinner with. <laughs> well, From yeah. that list, I will go with these people. Yeah. That makes sense. The list was only missing one person. Yeah, Sam, you got to put out the word. I, I I can't do this anymore with these Sudokus. Oh, I'm real. It must be really tough being a celebrity. Look. Are you addicted to Sudoku? No, no every, he no, sends it, out his stupid signed Sudokus to people on Twitter. Oh, look at all these. Really? I'm hoarding them. Look, wait, I got like, these aren't done yet. You know what you do? If and somebody's these, like, I got hey, four done here. It's really least, nerdy of you. Look yeah. at this. I'm Sudoku? hoarding Sudoku? I feel like you're years late on this. this you are. Sudoku I was doing thing. that shit when I was in college. And as we all know, that was a long time ago <laughs> at this point. It was a goof. And then one lousy person said, hey, could you sign that and send it to me? I said, yeah. All right, fine. No problem. My Twitter is... Littered with people asking wow. every day now. Opie used to do the Sudokus during the show. Okay. Uh, we don't have songs that we play during the show. Right. So there was a bit of irony in that because you shouldn't have time to do, do a Sudoku. That's true. He since stopped really doing Sudokus while the show's on mm -hmm. and is now bringing Sudokus from home <laughs> and you're, signing them. You're just feeding the haters, you idiot. These things take me minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I have, a, so I, have, I have a math brain. Do you? Yeah. You're a I, I have no business being a broadcast and I should have been a scientist. For real? So far yeah. we've learned that Opie is so famous he can't take it and he should have been a scientist. <laughs> Look at You well, learned something new on the show every day. Or a doctor, whatever else you do with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You want to say which, what what are these? You're sandwiches? eating for two. No. <laughs> it's not a funny joke. Your jokes are not funny anymore. No, been there a couple times. I I know where. What Roland? Do you want it? I have a question really quickly. I'm sorry. Are you were you really afraid to um when you had a girl to like clean her vagina? It's really strange. Matt's really afraid of that. That's like his biggest fear. He's like really afraid of uh, duty in there. Uh, yeah. Well, why well would you... duty does get in there. Yeah. And it's really strange at first, but then you just. <laughs> I don't know, then you'll, you'll do anything for your kids, so okay. what, what are you going to do? Just I, asking. I feel like, yeah, it, it seems like if it's your kid's vagina and your kid's duty, it's different. I, I just wish someone would have told me years ago that someday you'll be cleaning vaginas. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. I just assumed that would never happen. It's not yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't even think about it. Of course not. Like, it wouldn't even occur to you that it could, might or might not happen. Right. It's just a given that I would never be in a situation where I'm cleaning shit the, out of... I mean, the, Jim Norton can't say that. The thought never... <laughs> but beyond the, Jim... The thought never entered my mind. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm in there, and you yeah. got you to make sure it's clean, because, yeah. you know, you guys got some things yes, going on down do. there. Yes, we do. I know. I <laughs> you know. You got some things going on. Yeah. It's complicated. Folds. You yeah. got to get in all those uh, crevices. Mm -hmm. You don't want any bacteria in there, Sam. Okay. That sounds... Yeah. If, see, to me, it sounds gross, but I'm assuming if it were my kid. It's really strange. Okay. Even okay. if it's your but kid. But he'll be all right. All right. Now Even I, like the first time you did it for your own kid, it was still strange. It's really strange, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now okay. I really want that sandwich. I mean, nothing makes me hungrier. Than shitty vaginas? Than shitty vaginas. I get that. Yeah. I can't wait <laughs> for Nicole to experience motherhood. Dude, they are so afraid. Of what? Of the morning mashup Of all collapse. the drugs they did before they... <laughs> no, well, that too. <laughs> oh, what? I, I meant to... <laughs> so don't play a part if it's before, right? <laughs> It doesn't, oh, how long does it stay in your blood for? Because um, you no. really have nice eyes when they're not all, you know, blood glassy shot? and yeah. bloodshot. <laughs> Thank and, you, Oh. Yeah, so we, sweet of you. We've been trying we're not to, used to seeing. We're not used to seeing your eyes so clear. I know. We've been Good trying stuff, to figure right? out why pregnancy works for you so well. Yeah. And then I, I mean, it's because you're sober. So right. not partying, <laughs> right? Because you're not coming. Are you in. jonesing for a little partying? Yeah. Are you really? Bad. Really? Just I, just to feel normal again, just to socialize, you know. Are you gonna breastfeed? Yes. So, oh, now, so you can yeah. party for another. I'm aware. Almost another year. Almost. She's getting that dick Depending. again, though. Yeah. She did not get the dick for a while, but they started having sex again, correct? Yeah. Yes, we did. It's good stuff. Feeling better? Feeling better. Yeah. You didn't gain a pound in your face. Thank God. Or your arms. Let's look at the rest of you here. Yeah. Strip from behind. <laughs> From behind, the ass looks really good. Okay, good. I was Which it didn't before, so I know. let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, it actually might have added a little, uh, yeah, a little meat. A little roundness to right. it. Right, yeah. Right, a little structure. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, you did all right, man. Thank you so much, Oh. I more, feel bad. More than all right. You look great. Thank you, Oh. I feel like your whole show just got shot to shit, Sam. No, it, they didn't, because when Opie's here, they if Opie wasn't here, they would be making me play clips. And now people got to figure out the mystery. Uh, the mystery person? For the date thing. Not date. Mystery. Uh, oh, is it a guy or a girl? Thing. It's a guy. Yeah, I think people could probably figure guy. it out pretty easily. Mm, guy? Day, that makes it all about him. Yeah, I think people... Are not going to have the toughest time in the world. I want to know who it is. I don't. I can't figure it out. <laughs> He's making hand gestures. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm nervous. Make Tim's outside. Waiting to no continue on the exists, meeting. Except this one guy, <laughs> and Tim wants me to go to dinner with him. <laughs> oh wow, a lot of anger. <laughs> yeah. Tim just has the best intentions, you know. Tim's like the nicest guy ever. I yeah. like, love Tim. Say He's jolly. He's happy. He's sweet. You Nobody don't be shit on him. Don't say jolly. I think he's jolly. But that implies he's fat. No, I don't think jolly implies fat at all. You can't be jolly and thin. I just feel like he's like an overly happy person that always walks around happy. That's if I said fat. that what, 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 before you were pregnant, yeah. if I was like, yeah, Nicole's always so jolly. I wouldn't think you were calling me fat. Well, you're kind of a bimbo, though. So <laughs> most people would. Uh, let's go to Keith in New Jersey. What's up, Keith? Hey, what's up, Sam? Just wondering if you had uh, WWE tickets today to give away. What, do you want to go to Madison Square Garden on Saturday? I'd love to. All right. Well, then you're going, buddy. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. You see that? All right. I'm going to put you on hold. The phone screener can come in here and get the winner sheet to get your information. And, Nicole, the thing that people have to remember yeah. is that if you want the latest happenings in WWE or to see when WWE will be in your area, mm -hmm. you have to visit WWE.com forward slash events for tour dates. Okay. Just something to keep in mind. All right. It's there. It's in my mind now. Yeah. Thanks. John in Georgia wants some clarification. Uh, John. Yeah, uh, I need some clarification there. Uh, the greatest broadcaster ever, Sam Roberts. It's accurate. Oh, and Opie, if he's there. He's not. Um, oh, okay. Thank God. Um, yeah, all right. Um, well, we know that uh, Nicole is having sex now, as she says. Yeah. But are you having sex with your husband, or are you having the morning mashup three-way? No, 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 no. That would never happen. That's actually quite unappetizing. I love those boys, <laughs> but no, with my husband. And really only from behind, because there's no other way to do it. Doggy? Yeah. Oh. Not full doggy. I just kind of lie on my side in a fetal position. Oh. oh, okay. So you're saying that the morning mashup guys that you work with are just so repulsive, you'd never even think it ever. I didn't say that. So. You said that. Right. Well, I think you said that. Oh. Look. <laughs> They I obviously just don't translate. Se Have you heard right. the show? It does, it's not exactly exuding sexual no. energy in right. the morning. It's not sexy. Plus, they see Nicole come in before she puts her makeup on, which yeah. I've seen a couple times. It's and not so, pretty. It's a different story. A scary. So, uh, yeah, it's just in the fetal position on the okay, side. I just was exaggerating a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's I, I tried to go on top, and it was just it's that the belly's just so big, and then he has to look at it, and then he doesn't think sex when he sees the belly because that's his child, right? Or he hopes. Yes, it is his child. Yeah. So, is it him that, the, or do you not like being on top and looking down and seeing your belly? It's. I'm just trying to be nice. I don't. Th I mean, he hasn't said let's not do this. It's just, uh -huh. it's just you know, logistically, it's just easier. For You're me just trying to be accommodating. Just trying to be accommodating. Just, <laughs> yeah. trying, just trying to be a good wife. You're such a good person. Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. Um, Murray in Tallahassee. Murray. Murray. Hey, Nicole. Just to let you down a little bit. Once um, you have your baby and then all this partying, you can't wait to get out of your system. Yeah. The baby still has to get up, and it is such a rude awakening. My yeah. wife and I could not wait on our first one. And so we go out, get a babysitter, come home when we finally decide to do that. And three o'clock in the morning feeding, whatever time your baby gets up, is hurts way worse. Yeah, so what are you going to, I mean, you're going to, are you going to have hungover mornings where baby doesn't understand that mommy has her own thing going on? Listen, I don't think I can really go back to the old, old ways ever. Wow. <laughs> but, which is sad, but it's okay. We're saying goodbye. But I, I mean. It's I'm, probably healthier. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably for the best. Probably uh, won't worry about you as much. Probably not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think, I, I don't think there's going to be like no sleeping, like blacked out nights anymore. But I'm, you know, a few too many glasses of wine. I'm, you, you can know. celebrate every now and then. Right. Roland and E-Rock were just talking about that today. Roland likes to celebrate. Celebrate with a good sandwich. From I time see to that. Time. <laughs> Roland and E Rock are so funny. They've, you know, they were having this weight loss challenge for a right, while. Right. They have now uh, both. They didn't lose much weight. They okay. gained a little back. But in the last four days, they haven't lost any. They haven't gained or lost any weight. Okay. So they've both decided they're in maintaining phase That's right not now. Maintaining <laughs> until you've lost. You got to hit your goal to hit to maintain phase. E Rock. 
Yeah. You are on your diet, correct? Yes. But as so on your diet, as long as you're not gaining weight, you're good. It's successful. All right. See, that's called having Nicole. Say it with me. A positive attitude. Right. Positive attitude. Yes. Okay. And E Rock, you're going to lose weight from that positive attitude, aren't you? Oh, I sure am. Or at least maintain. At least maintain. <laughs> That's good stuff. But I thought Roland only lost like 20 pounds. I thought he has a lot more to go. Roland lost 24 pounds. Yeah. Gained five. Oh, Jesus. So he lost 15. And is now made. No, that's not Ma good sorry. math. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's very bad math. Uh, no, yeah, he's lost uh, 19 pounds. Oh, jeez. And is maintaining now, which is good. He's maintaining. And I just got a text uh, from Roland. Oh, no. It says, Nicole is fat. Yes, <laughs> yes, I am. I am fat, and I am the first to admit it, Roland. So are you. Wow. I love wow. you, though. You do. You love everybody. I want him to be healthy more than anything, and that's not healthy. No. His maintenance weight he thinks he's at is not healthy. No. He could he could be the best Roland that he can be, but he's not He's not trying. Is your husband okay with you partying less? Yeah, he loves it. He said he's, he never wants me not to be pregnant again. Right, because he doesn't have to worry about you anymore. Right. He just gets you to sit at home, and, like, there's a baby attached to you. Right. So what right. are you going to do? Exactly. Like, if you cheat on your husband while very pregnant, you're, like, the worst person ever. Ever. Like, that's that's pornography. Yeah. But, I mean, he has not changed his ways in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> no, He's he, an animal. He's still partying. Oh, and, my God. Yeah. Well, he can, right? He's he can, not pregnant. He, he doesn't have a baby attached to Is he going to breastfeed? <laughs> no. So, why not? They do have those things for men to wear. Yeah, but they are not. They don't take the milk out of the man. <laughs> like, I'm true. pretty right, sure you could still do whatever you want to do. And, that's true. You know, right. it, it just strap it on. Right. It's a strap on. <laughs> that's what it's, it is. He's going to use a strap on. It's a titty strap on. Right. Exactly. E-Rock, let's hear line of the day today. All right. Here comes. She looked hot tied up on that tree, though. <laughs> Lupita? Fucking ass. I think you missed the point of the film. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Why was that the line of the God. day? Of, you are a bad person, Eric. Why would of, you repeat that? Of all the possible lines, that's the one you picked? Well, it was funny. It, no, well, not funny at all. Jim's was he missed the point of the right. movie. Norton's was funny. No, Jim Norton saying, "I think you missed the point of the movie." I'm and disgusted. You right? know what he was talking about? Yes. Oh, you saw the film? No, I don't need to see the film to know exactly what he was talking about. I know the gist of the film. You can guess though. Would you like me to do an alternate version? Give me an alternate version <laughs> oh of Line God. of the Day because uh, you upset Nicole and she's expecting. Here, here, here comes. Little Beavis drops his cat toys on my face <laughs> at night. Yeah. He wants to Is that play what you call his balls? <laughs> yes. <laughs> his cat toys. See how much better Nicole feels now, Eric? That was amazing. Much better, right? Oh, that warmed my heart. Little tiny kitten balls on Anthony's face. I love that. Terrific. It's a great... A great visual. A lot of questions coming in. A lot of people trying to get to the bottom of stuff here on the post show. Opie was here a few minutes ago. Now Nicole, mm -hmm. the very pregnant Nicole from the morning mashup, is sitting in. Mm -hmm. And we go to Rick in New Mexico. Hello, Rick. Hey, what's going on, Sam? How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good. Hey, uh, according to the show, Nicole has very large, luscious breasts. Uh, I hope this baby doesn't plan on uh, ruining them. I think they're ruined no matter what. Yeah, are they? Yeah, but it's okay. I'll just get I'll just get new ones if I have to eventually. If so, you is that what happens after you get pregnant? Regardless, they're going to get ruined. I think they end up like tube socks. Oh no! Eventually, and it might not happen to everybody. But I'm gonna I'm trying to keep them in tip top shape. But right, so, have, so much do you, you do, do breast exercises or what do you do? Yeah, I mean, I try to exercise a little bit and and I try to wear bras to bed so it keeps them up. Oh, does that work? Oh, uh, I mean. An old wives' tale. I guess so. Yeah. But if need be, the fans need to know. Yeah. If you realize they're just not what they were, you will I'll get, get fake ones, and I will let you know when I'm getting them. Good. All right, Nicole, you're great. Yeah. You are. This is why people love you so much. Yeah. Because you're not going to disappoint your public. Never. I would never even dream of it. By the way, I do think it's funny that SiriusXM is in such a panic over you not being on the morning mashup 
that they've built a studio in your house. They have. Huh? So that you can still broadcast because in, they're like, there's no way those other three guys can carry that show. In my kitchen. I hope that's not what they think. Of course it's what they think. Why would they build a studio why in your would, house? Yeah, why would they jump into your maternity leave saying you're still going to work? Because yeah. we're a team. What? There's no, four people on the show. You don't think the three are supposed to be able to carry, but they can't. Oh God, you guys are so mean. Well, no, it's a very nice thing to say to you. It's just you know you need a little um, what's not um, not testosterone. What's the other one? Broadcast talent, estrogen. <laughs> yeah, you need a little estrogen in oh, the room. Oh, Eric had it. Okay, I yeah. Was, okay, they can't just bounce off the weather guy the whole time. <laughs> You're so going to hell. That's Eric, not me. Joe in Louisville. Hey Nicole, did you hear early last week Howard Stern was trashing you on his show? Yeah. And how you stupid? Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Well, he was just. We do a morning show too. You could listen to this one. Oh, I do. I listen to both. I have All right. both. All right. Okay. I just want to say, hey, 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 that guy Larry, he's going to end up crashing his truck on the side of the road when he finds out his own son is gay, and that would be funny, wouldn't it? All right. You do listen to both. I appreciate that, Joe. Thank you. All right. Stern was making fun of you. Yeah, Nicole versus the streets. Everyone makes fun of me. It's not just Howard. It's every person here and in life. Right. That makes fun but of that's me. the whole point of doing it. Right. I understand. I'm not. Always so bright. I say stupid things sometimes. But that's the idea. If you right. were bright, you wouldn't be doing it. Exactly. Plus, you know what? Can I tell you something that I think? Because I've done a lot of radio yeah. and watched a lot of professional wrestling. Oh, yeah. I don't think you're trying very hard to answer those <laughs> questions correctly. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. <laughs> but I don't think you're going out of your way to study. You don't think I'm giving it my all? I don't think so. Okay. No, I, I think you're okay giving it up to the streets every now and then. It's your opinion. I'm not saying you're a rocket science. No. Science. Scientist. You either. Not a rocket science. You either, Sam. Maybe not. But I, I am saying, sometimes you give the streets an easier time than you need to. Right. Snowy. Snowy. In Snowy? Like your name. Hey, Samuel, how you doing, sir? Good. The hey, question I have, is her feet looking any better? I mean, I mean, Opie said her butt better. Uh, the feet, unfortunately, they're still very long, but they've gotten very, very fat. They a have lot not of weight. Fit. Don't lie. A lot of weight has gone to her feet, and I don't know why that happens. That's a lie. But all the food that the baby's not eating <laughs> has gone straight to her feet. And it's uh, repulsive. Coke Logic texted me. He's a regular. He wants to know if you are going to record your labor for the Opie and Anthony show. Would you like me to? There could be some sounds there. Sure, why not? Good sound bites, right? We do it. You got a studio in your house now. The, you know what you should do? What? They built a studio in your house, right? Yeah. You should give birth in your bathtub like Ricky Lake oh and broadcast God. it live. Never going to happen. We will carry it. No, nope, not going to happen. I don't think Tim Sabian will allow that, number one. All right, we'll do it on Hits 1 then. <laughs> <laughs> the kids won't allow that either. We'll do a play songs in between. I will see if we can get some sound bites from from the hospital. We'll be like, okay, how 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 far are your contractions or right. whatever? And you're like, they're about thirty minutes in between each one. Right. Good. We'll play ten songs. Come back another contraction. <laughs> ten songs. <laughs> That's a little sound. And like. then go back to right. the. It'll be the greatest thing hits one has ever done. Don't, not so sure about that. I don't know. E Rock, do you have a clip of the day today? I do. I, there's me and Travis today. All right. Let me hear yours. All right. Chef Keith Gerke is here, author of Gerke. Leftovers Right, Making a Winner of Last Night's Dinner. I'm so fun. I did not sure. go to culinary school, and I'm kind of unorthodox. Uh, people compare. Are you, are you familiar with uh, G.G. Allen? <laughs> <laughs> he threw his own shit at the audience. He shoved bananas up his ass <laughs> and shit it out into the crowd. <laughs> Oh, I can't get enough of the local news getting Gigi hammered. Gigi Allen. Gigi Allen. <laughs> this guy's brilliant. He's the Gigi Allen it's, of leftovers. Right. Are you familiar with Gigi Allen? I'm not following. He's a punk artist, Okay. Gigi Allen. Kind of a do-it-yourself guy. He didn't okay. have a big label behind him. Gotcha. But he would play music for people, and while he was on stage, he would take shits and throw them at people and, and, and just really have a, the most vulgar show anybody's ever seen. Oh, that is nasty. Um, you didn't see this video then? No, not aware. It was this guy, and he went on the news pretending to be a chef. Okay. Like, he said, I have a, a chef book about what you can do with your Thanksgiving leftovers. Okay. And all these local news stations in, like, Nebraska and Wyoming and places like that uh -huh. brought him on their show. Okay. But the book didn't exist. Oh, dear. He just designed a cover. Oh, no. And then he didn't, he wasn't a chef at all. Right. One of the ideas that he had on the news, on the local news, was to put mashed potatoes in an ice cream cone 
but put gravy in first. So take the ice cream cone, pour room temperature gravy in, and then put a scoop of mashed potatoes on top and use corn like sprinkles. Is it wrong that I think that sounds amazing right now? I mean, maybe you're very pregnant. That sounds awesome. That's a great idea. I, well, you end up with a ice cream cone just with gravy in it. I know. It no, wouldn't mix. No, I like it. I like it. You would just drink gravy out of an ice cream cone? Oh my god, I just want it right now. No, you could always do that thing like you do with an ice cream cone where you like bite the bottom so you could suck out some of the gravy. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> So take some of the potatoes. Oh, that's gross. That sounds good. And then, like, he put a whole bunch of other leftovers in a blender. I mean, like try to ham. Eat it. That's disgusting. Peas. Mash up hams. That pureed ham sounds like there's nothing more violently disgusting. It was great. You should watch the video. And if you if you didn't hear, catch the replay because we got the guy who uh, who did this. Okay. We got him on the phone today. Okay. Uh, hey. And he was talking about his experiences. I'm telling you, Nicole, this Opie and Anthony show team has been batting a thousand <laughs> for several weeks now. Okay. Oh, E Rock got Scott Shannon on the phone, radio legend that wow. we've made fun of for years. Uh, e Rock pulled in Ron and Fez clips out of his ass today. Wow. And brought him on the show. Rolling got the freaking fake chef on the phone. They're on a hot streak. <sighs> this team, Nicole. This team. Spicy. Although, the thing about our team is, if one left, the others would pick up the slack. We wouldn't shut have to build up. a studio in their house. Just shut <laughs> up. Look, I'm just saying. We know who the most valuable player is. I appreciate you being here today, Nicole. Well, I love being with you, Sam. I'm glad you stayed for the whole show. Me too. Um, You're going to tweet photos of your birth, too? Nicole will be tweeting photos of the crowning. Go to <laughs> Mashup Nicole. That's a lie. On Twitter. <laughs> it's more for the Hits 1 crowd, but you'll be able to see it, too. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to Opie and Anthony and the Opie and Anthony Post Show. If you missed a minute, get it later today at SiriusXM.com slash on demand. Or stay tuned. Today's replay starts in minutes. Here on the Opie and Anthony channel. It's, it's real. real.